Hello friends. Welcome to the Muse fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see title. What if Naruto had the power of Solar Prophet and Wing God Tsubasa Kami? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Long ago in a time forgotten by the people of the world, was an era of enduring rage and unending wars. Mankind had been embroiled with each other in eternal wars, fought over petty reasons or for performing horrific crimes against one another, sometimes trying to better themselves by weakening their enemies so their military might would be greater only for a greater force to overwhelm them later on, or for no reason at all than just violence and death. Some even lived to fight on battlefields, take lives and ruin many. Humanity, had a curse, a sickening and infectious curse that all beings were infected with, a curse that only a few were able to see, one more powerful than any war. This curse is known as, hatred, a powerful force that could drive any person from the innocent bystander to a rage-fueled beast that would hunt down those who wronged them inflicting more pain and brutality, effectively spreading the curse to others. Hatred was like a chain, it will be linked to more and more people to those who are directly affected by it and others who merely beheld witness to its outbursts of rage, the chain would grow and be linked to more chains, connecting more people to the other. No one was ever safe from hatred. Hatred was genetic and would be passed down to others just as if you gave a child a toy to play with, just as hatred toys with people's lives. But what came after hatred? Well most would say healing, healing from the pain of their lives and the pain they wrought on others. Only fools would believe that healing would bring about an end to hatred, what came after hatred were either of two things. Emptiness, where a person would lose everything that was dear to them or will ever be dear to them, possibly even losing one's own self, their identities and the qualities that made them special. Emptiness was a like a snuffed flame, with nothing to fuel it. Or even more hatred, where the anger would blind those to the truth and accept that the world itself was responsible for what happened to them. Both paths were equally as punishing as the other. Among the humans and their inherited hatred was a tree. A tree of massive scale and equally massive power, a tree that was worshipped as a god and feared as a titan. This tree had a consciousness of its own, but very few would know the full extent of its intellect. This tree watched as the humans around it fought each other, murdered and cheated one another for their own gain while turning a blind eye to others who were less fortunate. The tree knew that while humanity had the capacity for both good and evil, they overwhelmingly chose the latter option, evil. The tree would sometimes look down upon humanity and be disgusted at what it saw but sometimes it would take pity on them for their short lives and weakness, however it didn't know whether or not that it liked being praised as a god or feared like a titan. But it did tolerate the level of respect the humans would show it. Even the tree with all its foresight knew that one day, wisdom would be lost, hope would diminish, fate be turned in different directions, valor shall be crushed and justice would fall. It was merely waiting for that to happen, and for humanity to be entirely consumed by hatred. One day the holy tree, bore a fruit of immeasurable power and destruction, a fruit that held its own power within it. Although the reason why hands were not supposed to lay themselves on the fruit had been lost to the ages, a princess who traveled from a faraway place, a place that had also been forgotten beheld witness to the hatred and wars conflicting in the world, took it upon herself to end the spreading wars and the hatred that followed them. She knew of one way to end the wars single-handedly and bring about an end to hatred. Consuming the fruit of the Shinju. Not knowing of the consequences or not caring for them at the time, she ate the fruit of the tree and gained its glorious power and the might that came with it. With new and unreachable power at her disposal, the princess laid siege to the world, using the power as a weapon to silence the lives of those who would spread hatred and bring about more wars. But instead of ending wars peacefully she opted for a more forceful method, one which would make anyone submit to her will and be slaves to her visual prowess. The princess's name was Kegai Otsutsuki, and for her benevolence for ending the wars and stopping the spread of hatred was she named the Usagi no Megami, rabbit goddess, because of her two horn-like protrusions which resembled rabbit ears. Like the Shinju, Kagaya was also worshipped as a living god on earth, people bowed before her in respect and reverence for her power and divine will that many considered to have no equal. However, Kagaya, had not broken the chain of hatred and instead, merely fractured it, where it could be repaired and through time her deeds were not enough for war and anger, jealousy and a lust for power, 
sprouting and boiling within the hearts of men. So she forced more and more people to submit to her iron will to stop the hatred from spreading, but her power which was once praised was now feared and instead of being called the Usagi no Megami she was instead the Oni, demon. At some point Kagaya would give birth to two sons, both of which were born with the same power as her own. These two boys would gain legendary power of their own through the use of their inherent power. However, the tree from which its fruit was consumed had also fallen under humanity's curse. Angered and outraged at the arrogant theft of its power the tree's surfacing fiery hatred had appeared before Kaguya's own magnificent eyes before she even knew the consequences of her actions. The tree underwent a metamorphosis of its own, transforming into a vile creature whose image mirrored that of its rage. A beast that was christened, the Jubi. Ten tails. For its ten massive tails which could split the land in half. The beast rampaged across the land hoping to retrieve its lost power, and to seek vengeance upon Kagaya for her arrogant acts. All the world felt the might of its hatred and its howl seeped into the very souls of those who lived in the world, both men and beasts cowered before it, pleading for mercy where they would receive none. The two sons of Kagaya, in an attempt to repent for their mother's sins, faced the beast in combat. The two brothers fought in a cataclysmic battle that scarred the earth forever, the two sons with all their power had fought to the near end of their will to defeat the beast and bring about forgiveness for their mother. But eventually the two struck down the beast in a mighty fashion. However, the Jubi, was connected to the world, just as the world was connected to it, it was basically immortal, so if they couldn't kill the beast, then the creature must be sealed within a person's body so to not bring about even more catastrophe. The older son by the name of Hagoromo, became the beast's jail and housed the animal within him. And like his mother before him, his own power soured to new heights upon becoming the jailer of the Jubi, he like his mother became a god, one even more worshipped than his mother, wielding the the greatest weapon in the world, Chakra. Hagoromo would later call this mysterious power, Chakra, and unlike his mother who weaponized Chakra, Hagoromo wished to use his inherent chakra to bring about a more peaceful solution to the world. Hagoromo who was a monk, later became known as a savior and would later be universally called the sage of the six paths. Created a religion, one which people would aspire to and believe in, give them hope and bring about a peace. This was religion was named Ninshu, Shinobi sect. Hagoromo distributed his chakra to people giving them the same gifts. People would connect the chakra with their spiritual energies allowing others to understand each other and pray for each other's safety while wishing them a good life. However, this had the unintended effect of the people abusing the power they were given and weaponized it to suit their own needs, by connecting chakra with their physical energies and so many wars were started again and again, but instead using chakra to wage them. Hagoromo would later on bear two sons would also inherit his same chakra and his own gifts while his younger, fraternal, twin brother, Hamura would bear two daughters each inheriting the same powers as their father. Hagoromo named his older son, Indra, and his younger son, Asura. Hamura named his older daughter, Surya, and his younger daughter, Mitra. And as the sage and his brother noted, the older son of Hagoromo was born with his, eyes, spiritual energy and chakra along with a unique dojutsu, the devolved version of Hagoromo's own dojutsu, which would later be called the Sharingan. While the younger son was born with his body, his life force and physical energy and an amazingly powerful stamina and endurance and inherent aptitude at senjutsu. The older daughter of Hamura was born with her father's perception, his fine chakra and control along with the dojutsu known as the Byakugan. While the younger daughter was born with her father's structure, the ability to manipulate her bones to the highest defense or offense to create new and unseen ways of strength and combat. However the difference between their respective talents were extreme. Indra, born with the eyes, was hailed a genius, a prodigy who could accomplish anything with little to no effort, who would later grow up living a solitary life, believing that people would merely inhibit his growth and potential. While Asura born with the body, did not inherit any of his father's or brother's natural talents, Asura could do nothing on his own, but through his determination and will along with the ideals of relying on others, his friends, did Asura's talents bloom like a flower in spring did he eventually gain power equal to that of his brothers. While unlike Indra who lead a solitary life, believing that people would only hinder him, Asura became a capable leader, amassing many loyal followers most of whom were his childhood friends and like his father had wished, began to spread Ninshu to the world through the help of his friends. 
Upon his deathbed seeing both Indra's and Asura's accomplishments did the sage choose between the two of them, the heir of Ninshu, the candidates, the prodigious and brilliant, Indra, or the no-good, untalented Asura. Knowing of his younger son's exploits and the quality of never giving up on the good inside people, gave Hagoromo hope that the quality known as, cooperation, and love would bring about true peace, while the lust of power and dominance would only bring about a temporary peace through fear made Hagoromo choose Asura, as the heir to Ninshu. Furious over his father's choice and being denied what he felt was his, Indra challenged his father's decision, overcome with anger, jealousy and hate did Indra attack Asura, trying to claim what he felt was his birthright. This feud between the two brothers would escalate between their respective families, causing a cold war between the two families that would continue on, never ending through the generations, endless bitter hatred. Indra's descendants would take on the name of Uchiha, the flames of their hatred continuously burning. While Asura's descendants would later be called the Senju clan, inheriting their forefathers' ideals of peaceful coexistence and love, and through distant relations the Uzumaki clan would also become descendants of Asura. However, something occurred that had not been seen before in the world, something not even Hagoromo or Kagaya had foreseen, when the two brothers died their natural chakra remained even after their bodies were destroyed, causing the two brothers to reincarnate themselves into various individuals throughout history within their descendants, fueling and continuing the brothers' bloody battle. And with each transmigration, the reincarnations would grow stronger. And like the cycle of the seasons, the cycle of death, transmigration and reincarnation would continue and the sons would reincarnate themselves into their newest lives. Both brothers existing and never truly dying, like yin and yang, one cannot exist without the other. In the land of fire, a country known for its large forests and bright and warm weather, even in winter, the sun seemed to shine endlessly in the land of fire the warmth it would radiate filling every crevice of shadow within a person. The birds were chirping happily and the animals of the forests were enjoying their peaceful existence among the forests and trees. The brisk air of summer was saturating the atmosphere, creating a serene scene and utter serenity. It was almost as if nothing could ruin this moment, however. Massive black spheres expanded from nowhere, destroying everything that was caught within their presence and shaking the earth to its very core that earthquakes rocked the ground and mountains were crumbling as if they were made of pebbles. Birds were fleeing and animals were running from the devastation trying to save their own lives so they wouldn't be collateral damage. Their cries were so loud you could hear them miles away. Terror seemed to have stricken their hearts and their natural instincts were taking over. Anyone who had a mind would be rightly fleeing the area, for two gods were locked in battle and they were scarring the very land they were walking upon. These gods were two men, they grew up together, fought together, laughed together and were involved in a wide array of mischievous activities. They were brothers, best friends, they shared everything with each other. But now, they were enemies, fighting over something that was now meaningless. Their powers were beyond human comprehension, their chakra itself could shatter the ground by simply lifting a finger. Both were everything that anybody could aspire to be, gods. No they were far above gods, they were beings that could sit atop the sky and bathe themselves in their respective light. One of the individuals was a tall man with fair skin. He had onyx eyes that looked like it could swallow darkness itself, but his eyes were now blood red with Tomo in them and his left eye was unique, but for the moment he kept that eye closed. He had long, frayed black hair, with bangs that framed his face and reached down to his collarbone, his hair was windswept on the top which formed into spikes, his hair at the back also reached down near his shoulder blades. He was incredibly handsome as most women who he walked past, would become infatuated with him. He wore a purple long-sleeved coat which ended into three coattails and was ankle length and a high collar with magatama held by strings on the collar and a symbol of a red and white fan on the back of the coat. He wore bladed ninja gauntlets over the coat with armored clawed gloves and bladed shoulder pads and black armor on his chest, he wore a purple rope belt which was tied into a bow, bladed shin guards and clawed boots. The armor was also tight allowing anyone to see his muscle underneath, but this didn't prohibit his movement. He also wore large prayer beads around his neck and hung loosely over his right shoulder. His opponent was also a tall man but with slightly tanned skin. He had deep, ocean blue eyes that just seemed to flow like water, he had spiky golden hair that could make the sun jealous and envious, with streamlined bangs framing his face, 
His right bangs were longer than his left reaching his collarbone while his left bangs were chin length some of his hair was tied into a ponytail held together by bandages. He had three black whisker marks on each cheek, giving him a vulpine appearance and upon his forehead were markings of a crimson circle with a dot in the middle, reminiscent of a third eye. He wore mostly black attire, he wore black armored pants, with clawed boots and a blue rope belt that was tied into a knot hanging out in front. He had black armor on his chest and skin-tight attire underneath, the same as his black-haired opponent. He wore a black pronged shoulder pads and pronged bracers with clawed gloves, with pronged knee pads. He also was wearing a crimson-colored sleeveless coat with a frayed hemline seemingly worn out form long battles with black flame motifs also on the edges and a high collar with silver magatama held by strings, and on the back of the coat was a symbol of what appeared to be a vajra surrounded by a white circle and around his neck were red beads which sported a large wooden black medallion with a red tassel on it. He was also carrying a large white scroll with black swirling wind motifs on his back. But right now his form was mudded with grit and blood, from battling his counterpart, for who knows how long, but the blonde could only assume, that it must have been hours. However his own opponent was bloodied and covered in grime and some of their clothing were torn in places such as their torsos and legs and instead of blue eyes his eyes were now golden amber with a slit for a pupil. These two men were respectively, Sasuke Uchiha, the Getsuman Uranaishi, Lunar Diviner, and the Bagami, Fanged God, and Naruto Senju, the Taiyo Yogensha, Solar Prophet, and the Tsubasakami, Winged God. Naruto was currently embroiled in a battle with his greatest rival and his greatest friend, but why they were fighting was still unknown. Kaden. Goka Mekyaku, Fire Release, Great Fire Annihilation, yelled Sasuke, intent on killing the man that was like a brother to him. The Uchiha legend spewed out a massive wall of intense flames at the blonde, who went through hand seals to counter attack, with a jutsu, unique to the blondes. Senpo. Kinten Tetsu Bogo Cave, Sage Art. Metal release iron protective wall, said Naruto ending his seals on the dog sign, and in a second a humongous wall of silver metal made of iron that untied together with nuts and bolts erupted from the ground and shielded the blonde from any harm, although the flames did heat up the metal but other than that it stood strong against the jutsu. Naruto in a burst of speed leapt over the wall and landed in front of Sasuke where he punched him in the gut and followed up with a roundhouse kick which sent the black-haired man rolling across the ground and spitting blood. Naruto went through hand seals to restrain his friend so he could finish this fight. Senpo. Mokaton Sigen ne Torapu, Sage Art. Wood release restricting root trap, said Naruto ending his seals with the snake seal, which was commonly affiliated with the wood release. And from the ground, massive entangling roots began to surround Sasuke hoping to hold him in place so Naruto could deal the final blow but the Uchiha would have none of that and unsheathed his sword which he was hiding behind his back and channeled his lightning chakra through it cutting up the roots. The Uchiha regained his footing and jumped away from the roots and started to prepare for Naruto's next attack. The blonde, partly knowing that his enemy would do that also took out his own signature weapons. He he channeled some of his mighty chakra into wrist seals which he had transcribed into his wrists for such a purpose. And what he held in his hands were two identical short staves that were as tall from his feet to his waist, perfect for bashing an opponent in reach. The two childhood friends rushed at each other, hoping to land a blow on the other. Sasuke performed a downward slash which Naruto easily blocked the attack with one of his staves and attempted to bash Sasuke with the other staff in his hand. But Sasuke saw the attack coming with his Sharingan and was able to jump over the blonde to his unguarded backside. Sasuke then attempted to stab the renowned Senju leader in the back but Naruto countered by blocking the sword with one of his staves causing sparks to fly from the grinding of the metals. Sasuke didn't have enough time to duck before he was clobbered in the head with one of Naruto's staves, which made the Uchiha leader to stumble across the ground and become disoriented from the blow and some blood to trail from a wound on his head. If Sasuke was serious, he knew that Naruto was stronger than he was, something which infuriated the Uchiha to no end so he couldn't afford to take many hits, from taijutsu or ninjutsu, but his skills and abilities evened out the power difference. But the same thing applied for his equally legendary opponent because of the blonde's unique keki jenke, the mokaton and the kintan, wood release and the metal release. Wood release allowed Naruto to create plants, trees and general wood out of nowhere by simultaneously combing earth chakra and water chakra, a fabled ability that only the blonde's ancestor, 
the Shodem Hokage possessed. It surprised many in the Hidden Leaf Village upon discovering that Shodem's descendant also had the same Keki Genke he had. While the metal release was an entirely new one, by combining Earth Chakra with Lightning Chakra was Naruto able to create metal and rust to attack and defend himself in areas, although it was noted that it couldn't control Biju but it was able to restrain them because of the metal's certain properties. However Sasuke did know, that the Kintan was just as coveted as the Mokuton. Sasuke, even though he didn't have as much power as Naruto, his skill with his clan's techniques and his own prowess with the Sharingan and its forms were enough to even the playing field between the two combatants. Besides, skill and power were similar but vastly different. Both combatants rushed at each other in a burst of speed, and met in a clash that pushed the other away, where they had a stare down for a few minutes. Both having enough Naruto ran to the left while Sasuke ran to the right, at phenomenal speeds that not even the naked eye could perceive. They ran so far and so fast that they were in a different place altogether, mountain cliffs and slopes away from where they were, and while Thai were running they were attempting to strike each other with their respective weapons, but neither one got the advantage over the other. They both came sliding to a halt, Naruto tried to clobber Sasuke with both of his staves but the Uchiha smoothly blocked it with his sword. But Naruto wasn't finished and with a swift change in his feet tried to bash Sasuke again with a single staff but Sasuke held his sword in a reverse position and pressed his free hand against it to hold back the strength of his rival. Then Sasuke pushed against the sword, and tried to slash Naruto horizontally but it failed as the blonde staff which was still blocking the sword was overturned into a reverse position and effectively blocked Sasuke's sword. Both parties' weapons then rebounded against the other and Naruto took advantage of that to hit Sasuke some more, but with the Uchiha's powerful eyes he was able to dodge them efficiently and jumped in the air tried to slash Naruto with his sword in a reverse position but the blondness slid and ducked under the attack easily because of the blonde's increased perception from the senjutsu running through his body constantly. With his sword still in a reverse position Sasuke again attempted to stab Naruto in his unguarded back, but the Senju leader used one of his staves to redirect the sword where sparks were flying from the scraping. But this didn't stop Sasuke as he spun around to Naruto's left side and tried to slash him. But the man likened to a dragon only jumped away and landed on a cliff where he was using his chakra to keep him standing on the cliffside and away from danger. Kaden. Ryu and Hoka no jutsu, fire release, dragon flame release song technique yelled Sasuke as he brought his lips to his mouth and fired off multiple heads of dragons aimed right at Naruto who expertly dodged the dragon heads and kept running against the cliff face so to keep dodging the attack. Naruto in response went through his own seals to battle Sasuke. Senpo. Kinten Ryuzen and Iki, Sage Art, Metal Release Shrapnel Breath, yelled Naruto as he fired off small sherds of piercing metal at Sasuke who ran so to avoid the deadly technique just as Naruto was avoiding his. Sasuke jumped up to Naruto's level so to avoid the shrapnel and gain a footing for the blonde, the Uchiha leader when though hand seals for a fire jutsu of epic level. A jutsu Sasuke invented himself so to kill his rival for whom he had been fighting for years on end. Kaden. Hano Tora Uda, fire release, flame tiger song, yelled Sasuke as he blew out a stream of fire that took the shape of a tiger's head which flew at Naruto with frightening speed and size. Naruto in response went though hand seals for a jutsu of his own invention also. Senpo Mokuton. Ryu Chokyo Sicho, Sage Art, Wood Release Dragon Taming Growth. Yelled Naruto and formed the cliffside five stream-like branches adorned with dragon heads that surged towards Sasuke's flame tiger and the advanced nature transformation dispersed the flames and remained relatively intact, the dragon heads then flew at Sasuke ready to bite add shred him apart, however with Sasuke's right sharingan he was able to predict the dragon's movements and dodge them with moves that looked akin to water. Sasuke then prepared his sword for a killing blow by channeling lightning through it increasing its piercing attack through vibrations. Naruto readied one of his staves and channeled wind chakra through it increasing its blunt force damage. Both met in a clash of metal and a small shockwave rocked the area, Sasuke using his innate agility kicked Naruto in the back and sent him flying away, however the blonde was a tough individual and the kick didn't hurt that much. The blonde regained himself in midair and sealed away his staves readying himself for a fist fight. He jumped on a wrecked bridge that was nearby that had rocks decorating it most likely backlash from the gods' attacks. Naruto ducked in time to save himself from a horizontal attack from Sasuke, 
From Sasuke's viewpoint it was a vertical attack, and Sasuke landed on a jutting rock just behind Naruto. In response Sasuke attacked Naruto relentlessly with his lightning enhanced attacks, but the blonde dodged them easily and without fear. Sasuke changed his tactics and tried to attack Naruto with a vertical slash that would split the man's head in two. However Naruto caught the attack with his palms and with ease and precision tossed Sasuke head over heels to his right which made the Uchiha lose his balance and roll across the ground in scraping his clothing. He regained his footing with enough time to dodge Naruto who was right in his face. Sasuke dodged Naruto and slashed him across the back, only to realize that the clone poofed away in a puff of smoke. Sasuke widened his lone opened eye and looked back to see his Senju rival about to punch him in the face to which the Uchiha head didn't have enough time to dodge and took the full brunt of the attack, which was a fist impacting against his face making his whole skull shake. The force of the punch was so great that it launched Sasuke backwards and onto the torn ground of the cliffside which was breaking itself from the two gods attacks. Sasuke landed on the ground in a heap but picked himself up with barely enough time to dodge flying spinning blossoms which were, were flying fast enough that they literally caught on fire, creating sharp piercing damage from the petals and burns from the flames. Sasuke kept dodging them efficiently. He knew that Naruto was resorting to his Keki Jenke because Sasuke could copy his other elemental jutsu with his Sharingan. He knew the blonde's jutsu very well, from all the times they fought against each other. That jutsu was Senpo. Mokaton Boseki Hai Hana, Sage Art, Wood Release Spinning Fire Blossom. No wonder they were called advanced natures since they were stronger than normal natures for sure. Senpo. Kintan Habiki Gongu Shaku, Sage Art, Metal Release Resounding Gong Shock. Yelled Naruto as he appeared over the bridge forming seals which ended on the dog seal which was commonly affiliated with Kintan. And tiny silver globs came pouring out of his skin. Another part of Kintan is that it can manipulate the iron in a person's blood. The globs began forming into massive gongs twice the size of men with square holes in them and they began falling on Sasuke who jumped away to avoid the metal gongs, but he had to be careful as the gongs could create shockwaves that could disorient him. Raiden. Tora Bunseki, lightning release. Tiger censure, yelled Sasuke as barreling lightning came shooting out of his hands and aimed at Naruto who couldn't dodge the lightning in time and in the air was hit in the chest by the thunderbolt, and came falling to the ground with his chest sizzling like a burnt cake. Naruto not one to be outdone by his enemy, went through hand seals for another Kintan Jutsu. Senpo. Kintan Kyodaina Kane Nami, Sage Art, Metal Release Mighty Bell Wave, yelled Naruto as a massive, Asian bell came falling down on top of Sasuke and we would have most likely crushed him if he didn't move away. Naruto then raced to the bell and punched it which caused a shockwave to resound and hit Sasuke in the chest and after the shockwave the bell itself followed after and again hit Sasuke in the with all its might nearly breaking the Uchiha's bones. Sasuke was getting annoyed at how he was being made into a punching bag, so he had little choice. The man that was likened to a tiger stood up to his full might and faced his opponent. He channeled lightning chakra into his left hand, however instead of being its usual blue color it was a deep black color akin to lacquer. It sparkled around his hand as if it was a fragile doll ready to break and it made a chirping sound akin to birds in response. Naruto also stared at him but closed his eyes and started forming chakra into a sphere in the right palm of his hand. The chakra started wispily, dancing around his form which was strong enough to create gusting winds around him, the sphere was as large as a basketball. But the sphere looked unstable and was fluctuating wildly instead of keeping a solid form, and it looked ready to burst in a moment's notice. The sphere was a bright white color that rivaled snow. The two gods then rushed at each other, ready to end the other. Sasuke brought up his black, chirping hand. Naruto heaved his hand holding the unstable, wispy ball of chakra. Inten, Yin release, Chidori, Yotan, Yang release, Rasengan. Both attacks met in a violent clash and the area around them ruptured and splintered and winds heaved the dust around them. The attacks formed a black and purple dome around them, produced from the conflicting energies, soon the dome exploded like shattered glass from the different chakra and both leaders of the most powerful clans were sent hurtling backwards and crashed into the ground leaving deep skid marks in the ground. Sasuke was lying on his back while Naruto was laying on his stomach. Both men got up with scratches over their forms but both were relatively unaffected. However Sasuke gritted his teeth at his rival, 
he could have easily killed him just but refused, he had seen the more powerful levels of the Rasengan alone and Naruto wasn't even using his strongest version, did he think Sasuke is weak compared to the Uchiha? Sasuke wouldn't stand for it, it felt like he was weak, and he hated that feeling. In order for Sasuke to secure his victory over his Senju rival, he would resort to full power to kill the God of Shinobi. Slowly but surely Sasuke opened his left eye revealing, not a Sharingan underneath but a red Rinnegan, the fabled eye of the Sage of the Six Paths, but Sasuke's was unique, since it had the concentric rings but also had six tomo along those rings, giving it a dazzling but yet bloodthirsty appearance. With the powers of the Rinnegan, maybe Sasuke could win. Naruto seeing his opponent revealing his trump card. Is this what you truly want? Sasuke. Questioned Naruto as he stared into the Rinnegan in his friend's left eye. Nothing would please me more. Spoke Sasuke as his eyes was literally piercing into Naruto's head. Then, I have little choice. Spoke Naruto as his head became downcast with sorrow. And soon yellow flames started flickering off Naruto's form. His clan symbol on the back of his cloak changed and now became a black pattern of the Rinnegan with nine tomo arranged in three rows beneath it. His entire body was was wrapped in black and yellow flames before stabilizing into physical clothing, the blue rope became a bright yellow color, and a yellow circular seal appeared on his stomach, his sleeveless coat which was black in color became the same magnificent yellow and on his pronged shoulder pads black circular seals appeared with the pieces of his armor becoming yellow also. His entire body underneath the cloak, save for his boots and his fingers, became black, resembling a bodysuit and his skin remained the same. His hair became a lighter shade of gold and was now floating up, along with his bangs which formed two distinctive horn-like tufts. Magatama markings wrapped around his collar giving him a sage-like appearance. His thin whiskers opened up into bars on his cheeks and his pupils remained the same, giving him a slight feral appearance. And behind him, black balls made of chakra floated behind him in a halo-like formation. Naruto then unsealed his two staves becoming ready for combat. Today we end this said Sasuke as he used one of his clan's signature jutsus. Kaden. Gokaku no jutsu. Fire release. Great fireball technique, said Sasuke as he molded chakra within his stomach and spewed out a massive ball of flames towards the golden man who merely stood his ground against the oncoming fireball, his eyes focused and ready to attack his opponent. Judd as the fireball was about to hit him Naruto quickly used one of his most powerful jutsu and disappeared within a lens flare, making the attack strafe past him. Sasuke seeing something in the corner of his eyes brought up his arm to protect himself from the punch the blonde man dealt him. He saw Naruto staring at him with his yellow eyes, unwavering, did the senju leader use his space-time ninjutsu to evade Sasuke's attack. Sasuke sending chakra into his own eye retreated from the blonde by suddenly disappearing without any form of indication did the Uchiha retreat from the Jinchuriki to a place that would better serve his needs. So Sasuke ran, falling back to a safer location. Naruto soon gave chase by levitating his body off the ground and soon he was flying after the Uchiha who kept his speed at a steady pace, ignoring the advancing Hokage. Jumping across the mountains and using his left eye to his advantage did Sasuke narrowly escape the falling rocks that were plummeting towards him, courtesy of his old friend who was intent on crushing him, it lasted only for a few minutes did Sasuke make it to an advantageous location that would give him suitable high ground and attack positions, being unable to fly himself. He then landed on a rock spire just as two large rocks were about to smash against him. Using his great strength his was able to redirect the rocks with some effort away from him where they smashed into other rock spires. However he then felt his body grappled suddenly, pounding against him where he looked down to see the flying Naruto holding onto intending to pummel him against one of the spires. However Sasuke also grabbed his opponent's body and threw him over his body where Naruto lost control of his flight and then smashed into a rock spire making the ground shake a little as Sasuke then landed on another spire staring into the spire. He then saw Naruto scraping down the side of the spire unharmed only with a bit of dust on him. Naruto then jumped off the spire landing on another and jumped onto a spire and using his flight abilities again, spun around the spire and using his immense strength lifted the top part of the spire and threw it at Sasuke he channeled some of his chakra to defend himself from the house sized piece of rock that he was unable to defend against properly. Shinra Tensai, Heavenly Subjugation of the Omnipresent God 
yelled Sasuke as he created an invisible gravitational force that completely shattered the boulder only allowing some pieces of rubble to strike him. However Sasuke fell into Naruto's trap as the blonde created two enormous chakra arms that gripped two of the spires together and an attempted to slam the two of them in between Sasuke, however the Uchiha channeled chakra into his Rinnegan and used his own space-time technique. Kamiyumi. Sasuke then shifted himself atop another rock spire higher than the last one escaping the two pillar this would have crushed him otherwise. But Naruto wasn't done, turning his two larger chakra arms into five smaller ones did he grab several pieces of falling rock out of the air and then made a single hand seal, which phased changed the rock into molten boulders of lava. Senpo. Shikugaryugan no jutsu, sage art. Lava release scorching stream rock technique. And with that Naruto hurled the massive molten boulders towards Sasuke whose Rinnegan was still recharging Kamiyumi and so was forced to evade the rocks as he jumped around the pillars trying not to be melted that the pillars fell to the ground because their structure was quite literally melted. As Sasuke was retreating from the Hokage's assault, Naruto took to the air once again and flew after his Uchiha counterpart. Naruto seeing the jumping form of the Uchiha swiftly flew down towards the ground and made a single seal. Senpo. Kaden Nekohabachi, Sage Art, Fire Release Cat Fire Bowl. Yelled Naruto as his fingers were encased in blue flames where he clawed at the air releasing multiple blue fireballs with whips of black within them, heading straight for Sasuke. Sasuke using his chakra to suspend himself on the side of a cliff away from the rock spires where he turned around and channeled chakra into his right eye, where his eternal Mengakyo Sharingan appeared in his right eye and performed the other ability of his exclusive dojutsu. Kamiyumi. Said Sasuke as before him the blue fireballs stopped in midair just as they were about to hit him, and suddenly they disappeared from sight where instead Naruto found himself surrounded by his own blue fireballs where he didn't have enough time to defend himself before he was bombarded from every corner with fire dazzling the sky and Sasuke IWTH his cold eyes watching from his position as the multiple blue explosions rocked the sky. He then saw a shadow move out of the explosion allowing Sasuke to view it as the shadow was rolling across the ground across the cliffs and it was battered against the hard ground. It was of course Naruto whose entire body was singed from head to toe from the heat of his own attack and the tips of his golden spiky hair were singed fro being burnt from his own attack and some of his armor was also burnt but otherwise he would be fine. Getting back onto his feet, Naruto glared at Sasuke, guess the attack didn't give him a blow to his pride. If it wasn't for Naruto shielding himself with his Gududama, truth seeking ball, at the last minute, he would have suffered far more serious injuries. Of course, he couldn't protect himself completely from his own attack, since the Senjutsu enhanced attack disrupted the ball's form. But luckily, the Hokage was durable enough to survive the attack. However, Naruto also knew that Sasuke was near open to attack, so creating a hand seal. Naruto flew up in the air again and with him came a large rock the size of a house and threw it down on Sasuke who had to release his chakra holding him up on the cliff. Naruto then landed on the ground, into a small streaming waterfall, where he made three hand seals while his legs were in the water. Senpo. Ninja Kanbo 2. Sansango Kuryudageki, Sage Art. Ninja Kanbo Art Acid Coral Torrent Shock. And as Naruto ducked his hands into the water, Infusing acid bubbles together with coral with a water shell surrounding it did he hurl large torrents of water with the acidic coral towards Sasuke who stopped his fall and began dodging the blasts of corrosive water and coral, he knew that if he tried to absorb the technique he would be left wide open for Naruto to attack him with taijutsu, so his best option was to dodge the Rokudime's attacks. However, even Sasuke had a limit as Naruto kept hurling the waves of acidic water and coral. He soon was hit in the leg by a blast where the coral started growing on his leg, restricting his movement and because of the acid burning his armor to his leg. Naruto seeing his chance began boiling his very own chakra to inhuman levels where copious amounts of steam was simmering off his form, launching himself forward Naruto attempted to punch Sasuke to which the Uchiha knew if he was struck by the punch, he just might end up dead. As he was falling Sasuke held out his hand gritting his teeth from the burning coral and just as Naruto was about to strike Sasuke used the powers of his Rinnegan. Shinra Tensai. Said Sasuke just in time to repel Naruto's attack. But the Jinchuriki has experience with the technique and knew that if struck with equal or opposing force then the technique can be countered and so Naruto boiled even more of his chakra increasing the temperature and plowing his way through Sasuke's attack where he struck the Uchiha leader in the chest 
and the cliff they were facing was completely shattered from Naruto's punch as the Uchiha was pulverized through the mountain from Naruto's steam-enhanced taijutsu. The punch was so strong that Sasuke was smashed all the way through the mountain and ended up on the other side with Naruto flying after him. When Sasuke finally came to a halt from the punch, he coughed up blood at the feeling of his ribs being shattered from the punch, he could feel his body lying upon what felt like grain, he opened his eyes to see the sun shining in his red eyes, did the sun have a shadow? He widened his eyes seeing Naruto ready to punch him again with his steam enhanced strength which would kill Sasuke if he was struck by the punch, as his body couldn't withstand such tremendous force again. Quickly sending chakra into his Rinnegan eye Sasuke used his exclusive Mangekyo technique. Kamiyumi, said Sasuke just as Naruto was about to shatter his entire body. Instead Naruto smashed his fist against empty space and the ground of layered sand with Sasuke some distance away. As the Uchiha was looking around himself he couldn't help but groan at his location, a sea of sand, which was the worst place for him. But he also saw the amount of steam radiating off Naruto decrease, he could only boil his chakra at that level for a short amount of time. Quickly breaking the burning coral off his leg with his fist, Sasuke frowned at seeing that half of his left leg was covered in burns that was still hot toddy touch, the coral had grown at a faster rate than he expected but the acid burned slower, fortunately for him. Senpo. Tsunamuho Noroihaji, Sage Art, Sand Witch Curse Hold. Spoke Naruto as he slammed his hands on the ground where dark blue cursed seal patterns appeared and were rushing towards Sasuke at such an extreme speed that the Uchiha had little time to counter before the cursed seal covered half of his body, binding his movements. Sasuke knowing that he couldn't remove the seal from his body knew that he would have to fight in such a state. However he would have to leave the desert quickly as it was the worst place to be if he was fighting the leader of the Senju clan. His fears came true as sand all around him began spiraling around him, sinking him into the ground. He looked up just as half of his legs were swallowed by the sand to see the Hokage's hand outstretched towards him and he was slowly clenching his hand slowly, Sasuke knew that if he didn't think of something soon, he would be crushed to death by the Senju leader. He couldn't use couldn't use Kamiyumi in his left eye since it was still recharging and he couldn't use the Kamiyumi in his right eye since the sand obeyed Naruto's will and he wouldn't kill himself. Sasuke thinking of such an idea, raised his right hand towards the Hokage. Sasuke would use the basics of his abilities. Bansho Tenin, heavenly attraction of all of creation, yelled Sasuke as Naruto was soon swept off his feet though with some resistance. Even though Sasuke knew it might be a deadly move, if it meant victory over his opponent and his superior power, then Sasuke was all for it. It was only because of his mastery of the Rinnegan that Sasuke was even able to hold his own against Naruto. With Naruto swept off his feet the sand stopped spiraling in on Sasuke as he reached to his waist, then Sasuke charged lightning chakra into his left hand with great effort because of the cursed seal binding his body, as Naruto came flying towards him. Chidori. Spoke Sasuke as he rammed his left hand into Naruto as the lightning surged around. Soon he pierced Naruto in the chest, However instead of being met with blood, he was instead met with sand, as Sasuke had pierced a sand clone of his opponent. But the Gudotama was behind him, however he soon saw the nine black balls of chakra fly in from behind and started floating around the real Naruto who was staring at him from behind. He then looked back at the sand clone who latched onto his arm and began covering Sasuke's entire body. Soon Sasuke was being covered by the sand, and the sinkhole was swallowing him up again. Naruto seeing that his rival was utterly trapped, went through seals for one of his most powerful keki geknai jutsu. Senpo. Kinten Tetsunohoshi, Sage Art, Metal Release Iron Star. Said Naruto and within an instant, a black jagged, spiked ball appeared from behind him out of the ground, it was twice the size house and with rectangular holes in it with roaring flames on the inside where the flames escaped through the rectangular holes. Without warning the black spiked metal ball of death rolled towards Sasuke, and if the ground wasn't sand, it would demolish anything within its path as it sped towards its target. Finally reaching Sasuke it sunk into the sinkhole along with the Uchiha where it exploded in a shower of orange flame where sand was upheaved and flew everywhere. However sensing something was wrong, Naruto saw a shadow fly out of the sand and flames. 
And he beheld Sasuke as he stood upon a mountainous hawk that easily dwarfed trees, buildings and large rock structures, it didn't take a genius to figure out that Sasuke obviously summoned the hawk and escaped the effects of his Tetsunohoshi. Naruto could also seeing Sasuke's right arm was bleeding heavily, the armor upon it was gone, showing the skin underneath, it had several burns across it and jagged black metal shards within it also and some of his hair was singed and his face was burnt but other than that his wounds would be superficial. However he had a massive disadvantage because Naruto's cursed seal was still clinging to half of Sasuke's body, almost binding his movements completely. So Naruto knowing that the hawk was faster than him in the air, would never be able to catch it with his sheer speed alone. So this was going to be a test of speed versus strength. Bringing his thumb to his mouth, Naruto bit on his thumb drawing blood and slammed his hand on the ground. Kachiyose no Jutsu, Summoning Technique yelled naruto as he was surrounded by a huge plume of smoke sasuke atop his widened his eyes at the sound of trumpeting could be heard from the plume of smoke as the smoke settled sasuke could see naruto standing on an equally colossal being possibly even larger and from the smoke sasuke could see the gray leathery skin of a massive elephant with large ears and a long trunk that looked like it could smash mountains sasuke sama this will be difficult Zohoko's skin is almost as strong as titanium and his attacks will kill me within only a few hits, we'll have to be cautious. Spoke the hawk to its summoner to which Sasuke nodded. The chief of the elephant tribe was not an opponent anyone should take lightly and both Sasuke and the hawk knew this well. Takahane, stay at this altitude while I devise a strategy, but be prepared to move for if they attack. Commanded Sasuke to which the hawk named Takahane nodded at his master. I'll need to create an opening and trap Naruto and Zohoko. Wait that can work. Thought Sasuke as the thought came to him. Takahane, on my signal get me as close as you can without getting hit, I'll be expending a lot of chakra so this has to work. Yes, Sasuke-sama, said the hawk, while down below upon the desert Naruto and his elephant summoning Zohoko were having their own conversation. I'm sorry Zohoko-san, I hope I wasn't interrupting something back at your home, spoke Naruto politely. Not at all Naruto-sama, so what can I help you with?" said the elephant chief with a smile on his face, but Naruto merely pointed towards Sasuke and Takahane. Oh! Him! I wondered when he would make his move. He's always been devious. Spoke the elephant to which Naruto nodded. I assume you have a plan. Let him make the first move. Until then, stand your ground and prepare your attacks, said Naruto as Zohoko prepared himself. Naruto then went through handseal where the snad on the ground began shifting. While Sasuke narrowed his eyes in suspicion at what the gold and black clothed man was thinking. Senpo. Mokatan Hanayayo, Sage Art, would release flower arrow hail, said Naruto as he thrusted his arms out toward Sasuke as numerous purple flowers with six long purple petals, long stalks as twice the height of a man with long barbs sticking out from their centers. I thought we were going to wait for him to attack? thought Zohoko. T-A-K-A-H-A-N-E move! yelled Sasuke as the hawk took evasive action as the multitude of plants started shooting out barbs towards Sasuke and Takahane who who doing their best to not get hit by the literal hail of arrows from the flowers, as one nearly penetrated Sasuke's head the Uchiha for a split second sniffed the tip of the barb and deduced that the barbs were coated with poison. Sasuke knew that if he was even scratched with that poison it was death, no escape, if it wasn't senjutsu enhanced you would be paralyzed rather than die. But still Sasuke had to be careful. Having Takahane fly downward towards Naruto and Zohoko did Sasuke channel chakra into his Rinnegan eye. Rinbo. Hengoku, wheel grave. Border jail, said Sasuke as he focused his left red eye intently on Naruto who sensed a disturbance. Creating a hand seal to combat Sasuke, Naruto simply told his elephant summon to stay still. Zohoko hold still, and don't move, commanded Naruto to which the massive elephant nodded. Senpo. Ryubi no Jomen. Sage art. Gate of the dragon tail, said Naruto as he clapped his hands together as two rows of twenty white pillars as tall as Zohoko fell from the sky and dug themselves into the sandy ground all around the elephant and his master on each corner, and Naruto could sense their presence, the shadows battering themselves against the gates cracking the incredibly strong wood. However what the blonde didn't know that this was Sasuke's plan. Sasuke then brought up his right arm and with great effort lifted his left arm, 
because the cursed seal is hampering his movement. Clapped his hands together as he stood upon his mountainous hawk. Shibaku Tensai, heavenly body bursting from the earth, yelled Sasuke as he created a small black orb in between his hands which only grew in shape and soon was twice as large as his hand in doing the unthinkable and using his good arm. Sasuke threw the black sphere towards Naruto and his summon it then smacked Naruto right in the chest where it stuck to the blonde man to which Sasuke clapped his hands together again as Naruto was thrusted up in the air again as the black sphere upon his chest acted like a gravitational center where rocks all around him began being uplifted towards the black ball even Zohoko wasn't immune from its effects as the elephant was also lifted up in the air trumpeting in annoyance. Soon rocks and mountains began pelting the two of them as they couldn't defend themselves entirely from the onslaught. And in enough time the summoner and his master were devoured by rocks as the black sphere was surrounded by earth forming a perfect sphere with Naruto and his elephant trapped in the center. Sasuke then raised his right arm where it instinctively formed a mechanical cannon raised directly at the Chibaku Tensai and Sasuke of course fired a chakra blast that was aimed for the core of the satellite and when it met its mark the core exploded violently send NG all the mountains and debris flying everywhere and to see the bodies of Naruto and Zohoko smashed to the ground and when they impacted it sounded as if thunder rang throughout the land. Sasuke could see that his attack was devastating as that his tactic worked, if he had created the black sphere without trapping it to Naruto then the Hokage could have destroyed the Chibaku Tensai even more easily than Sasuke did and the blonde couldn't destroy it while he was so close to the core otherwise he would have damaged himself more than Sasuke did. As Sasuke looked down into the large dust clouds where the two landed he couldn't help but smirk at getting the upper hand over his stronger opponent. Tactics and planning of his skills is what Sasuke needed to defeat Naruto otherwise he would never be able to defeat the Senju leader with just sheer power. And just for added insurance, using the Asura path, Sasuke manifested four more arms out of his body, shoulder to shoulder, where the new arms performed their own individual hand seals and Sasuke with his real arms also did a hand seal, although with effort because of his cursed body. Tengai Shinsei, Heavenly Obstacle Quaking Star said Sasuke as he summoned a massive meteorite out of the sky as it fell through the clouds and descended upon Naruto who opened his eyes to see the sun's light clouded by the meteorite. His form was now covered in dirt and part of his armor was destroyed on the left side and he had a few bleeding wounds on his body. Instantly he raised his right arm to combat the meteorite as chakra arms burst forth and grappled onto the giant rock stopping it in its halt just as it was about to crush him in his summon but he didn't have enough strength to halt the second meteorite that dispersed the clouds and collided with the first asteroid which pummeled Naruto and his elephant where a great dust cloud was seen from the attack. This only caused Sasuke to smirk in victory, believing his opponent to be defeated. He then ordered Takahane to descend to the ground level to which he landed on the sand surrounded by rock and plants from their previous engagements. His new arms then disappeared as he dragged himself across the sand looking amongst the rubble for his prize. He soon found it, with even more of his clothes torn and some more wounds on his body with his nine Gudadama. Lying around him, motionless just like Naruto. Just as Sasuke was about to turn Naruto over, the wounded blonde snapped his eyes open and exuded a fine dust from his mouth that combusted into fine luminous dust that blinded Sasuke with just enough time for Naruto to kick him away and create a handsu. Sasuke now knew that he saw something else amongst the rubble. A large metal no mask some distance away from his and Naruto's position, he saw it just before he was blinded, the elephant had also survived because of Naruto. Senpo. Sansan, sage art. Acid scattering, said Naruto as he spewed acid towards Sasuke who was still blinded by Naruto's previous technique, the attack is Sasuke in the left arm and his left torso that instantly burned through his clothes and armor. Feeling the burning Sasuke instantly tore off the armor and clothing with his non-sealed arm ripping it straight off even though his right hand was also burned because of it. Now Sasuke was left nearly bare chested with his armor on his chest barely hanging on and his eft arm was now armor less and sleeveless but still covered in Naruto's cursed seal. Just as Takahane was about to help his master, he felt a rumbling in the ground where Zohoko came bursting out from a dust cloud with a jutsu prepared to stop the hawk from taking flight. Sweden. Zomizurapa, water release, elephant water trumpet said the mighty beast as it brought its trunk up as it sprayed copious amounts of water on Takahane, pummeling it to the ground because of the force of the water, without wasting any time. Zohoko smashed its two front feet on top of the hawk making it scream in pain at its hollow bones being crushed by the substantial weight. 
Takahane, having no chance, disappeared in a plume of smoke back to its home where the elephant followed soon after, leaving Naruto and Sasuke alone. Sasuke getting his eyesight back, knew of Takahane's disappearance and knew that he would need his last support to deal with Naruto. Slamming his hand on the ground, Sasuke summoned the only help that could contribute to the battle. Naruto seeing Sasuke's action took to the air and began flying into the clouds, where he held out his hand before the clouds. Kachiyose no jutsu, yelled Naruto and Sasuke at the same time and two plumes of smoke appeared on the ground and in the clouds. And from the smoke came creatures that the two of them have raised ever since they were children, animals that found them, they raised them, they weren't summonings, Tehi were familiars. From the smoke on the ground, came a large black whipping tail, long sharp claws that could cut mountains to shreds, rows of sharp teeth as if it could bite through trees, a muscular body perfect for combat with cuts and scars all over its form, it was predominantly grey, with black stripes, a white underbelly and red eyes. It was literally snarling and hissing, roaring a little, almost as if eager for battle just as Sasuke was who was standing on its forehead. It was a giant female tiger, the size of a biju. Sasuke had raised the creature ever since he was a young boy and the tiger rarely left his side. The black shadow, Yochi the tiger. From the smoke high in the clouds, came a serpentine form twirling around the clouds. Its long body sported snow-white scales across its form. A pair of massive wings that could disperse every cloud in the sky, with semi-long limbs and claws that could scar the ground, two long black horns that could heft boulders the size of its head, tufts of fur around its face and chin giving it a sort of regal appearance, black teeth with two protruding black fangs on the sides of its mouth that could devour any human, black spikes running along its back, two barbels on each side of its nostrils. Its size was tremendous as it was bigger than the tiger and just as big as the Hokage mountain. It was the legendary dragon that Naruto had nurtured ever since it hatched from its egg and said Hokage was riding on its forehead, looking down upon Sasuke from his altitude. The white light, Tento the dragon. Tento without needing to be told, flew away from the battle with Naruto atop his head, while the Senju kept his eyes trained on Sasuke as the Uchiha ordered his biju-sized tiger to give chase to the dragon and its master. As Naruto was leading the battle away from the plant, rubble-covered desert he knew of a place where he would be offered Eve more advantages than the desert. Quickly ordering Tento, his dragon, to descend towards cliffs that harbored caves, did the dragon land on the ground just as Sasuke and his tiger. Yochi arrived where the biju-sized tiger latched onto Tento using her great claws to tear into the dragon's scales and her teeth to bite on his flesh while Tento merely roared as it fought back against the tiger while on the cliffs using his long body to his advantage to wrap around the tiger so to drain it of all life. Naruto meanwhile was tackled by Sasuke, into the caves as they fell on rock and mineral. Once they tumbled onto stable ground, Naruto kicked Sasuke off him who disappeared into the darkness with Naruto scanning his eyes all around the cave, while unsealing his two staves and combining them into a single weapon. Sasuke in the darkness merely unsheathed his sword. The cave was dark, too dark that it was near impossible to see without a sufficient source of life, the only light coming from green crystals that dotted the cave, offering minimal luminance. I don't need eyes to find you Sasuke. I can hear you breath, smell your pride and feel your presence. The thing is, can you find me without your eyes? Spoke Naruto speaking into the darkness. And he raised his staff multiple times to block weapon attacks coming from Sasuke such as large shuriken, Kanai and Sasuke strafing by with his sword and fading away into the darkness. Naruto made a single hand seal and just as he blocked Sasuke's weapon attack he spat ink into the Uchiha's causing him to yell in slight pain at his now blinded eyes. Naruto followed up his assault on the Uchiha by creating chakra arms that pummeled the Rinnegan wielder into the ground. Sasuke then lifted himself off the ground and rubbed the ink out of his eyes he then channeled chakra into his left Rinnegan eye and from his vision black flames sprouting from his field of vision, filling the entire cave with black flame, s burning anything and everything within a crisp. Naruto taking evasive action used one of his gudodana to shield himself from the flames, quickly taking a chance to escape. Naruto flew to the roof of the cave where a dar hole was visible. Sasuke not content with his prey getting away jumped all the way up to the hole trying to catch up to the flying blonde. When Naruto reached the exit he could see Sasuke running at him, jumping through the cave where he destroyed the exit and landed outside, staring up at Naruto who remained levitating in the air. 
Time to take the kitty gloves off, spoke Sasuke as he sent chakra into both of his eyes where a purple skeletal ribcage surrounded him. So he's getting serious, if he's using, that, thought Naruto as he frowned at Sasuke below, Suzano. The Suzano and around Sasuke came a purple skeletal ribcage made entirely from the Uchiha's chakra. Sasuke advanced his Suzano further and skipped all the necessary forms to reach its final state and most powerful state. Sasuke's final stabilized Suzano was an enormous winged construct which was perfectly capable of flight. In this state Sasuke's Suzano was clad in armor akin to that of a samurai, its helmet had a long Tengu-like nose and accentuated eye holes, two spikes over the eyes, a slit stretching across its mouth and three gaps on each of its cheeks and one on its chin, it had fiery hair and upon its forehead was a pentagonal prism where Sasuke was floating inside its wings also had small finger where it would hold the Suzano's katana. But Naruto was not intimidated by the chakra construct that dwarfed even tailed beasts. Naruto responded to Sasuke's ethereal warrior with his own ethereal warrior. Naruto could also sense that his dragon Tento was still in battle with Sasuke's tiger Yochi. Varuna, thought Naruto as he was also Inkas in chakra, but unlike Sasuke it appeared like yellow flames with black markings acting as a ribcage. And around him the yellow flames started taking on a corporeal form, with black markings across the body. And finally, Varuna was complete. Varuna was like Suzano as it encased the user in chakra protecting them from harm. But the Varuna took the form of a three-headed, six-armed battle avatar, with monk beads wrapped around its neck with three black tassels on the beads. It also sported a uniquely shaped hat with spikes facing to the right and two black lines on each side between the curves of the hat with artificial ponytail on the hat. It also sported circular seals on its shoulders and stomach and bar-like markings on the form's hands and feet and had three black lines on its torso resembling a ribcage with a cloak of yellow chakra which swayed behind it with nine black lines running down and black balls of chakra which were Naruto's Gudadama also floated behind the Varuna in a halo-like fashion and its form was constantly flickering yellow flames. Its height was enormous as it easily equaled the Suzano in height. Asura's battle avatar, if you were wondering, Sasuke's Suzano readied itself to attack Naruto, by unsheathing its twin katana. Naruto's Varuna responded by manifesting a short staff in each one of its six hands by applying shape transformation to the Gudadama. Both heavenly beings and their respective masters charged at each other. Sasuke's Suzano raised its sword and performed a downward slash on the Varuna but the battle avatar raised two of its staves to block it, and with its other four arms it attacked the Suzano's chest with multiple barrages from the staves, but given that the Suzano is mostly used for defense with considerable offense, the staves were able to cause harm to it, but not much. The Suzano using its free katana attempted to slash the Senju's avatar, but Naruto sensing the attack coming, was able to have his Varuna dodge it, but the resulting slash tore apart any mountains that were in the area, cutting them in half with little to no effort. Naruto seeing the destruction was unafraid of it, it did nothing to break his fighting spirit. Naruto from within his Varuna commanded the warrior to jump in the air. Sasuke with his Sharingan saw Naruto coming down from the sky, with his avatar's staves ready to strike him him in a stabbing motion. Sasuke readied his Suzano's wings and was able to drift away from Naruto's avatar that was just about to hit him, the result, from the force of the impact was enough to completely shatter the entire earth they were battling on, causing it to be crushed into pieces of rock that were the size of specks of salt. Even the mountains Sasuke had cut in half were punished even more as their entire form came crashing down becoming nothing more than dust, the trees and lakes that were nearby were uprooted and their shape was distorted. Total destruction was what remained and the mountains they were battling in was nothing more than a rocky, splintered and grey area. Sasuke's Suzano was able to escape the immediate danger, but still, the sight was still in Sasuke's mind. Just how could his greatest enemy? someone who was born with utterly no talent or genius, able to match a prodigy such as himself, he hated feeling weak, as it proved that his opponent was stronger. Sasuke's Suzano flew down at Naruto ready to battle him once again. I'm not going to lose to you, thought Sasuke as he was nearing his opponent. I will protect my village, my friends, and those who I love more than anything, if it means killing you, then I will force my hand. Thought Naruto as he prepared himself for Sasuke. Both beings then met in a clash that created massive gusts of wind that blew away any dust and debris. 
then both constructs jumped away from the other and fell into defensive stances where they attacked each other again with violent clashes that shook that shook the earth to its core. Naruto and Sasuke kept attacking one another, hoping to gain an upper hand. Naruto with a tactic in mind, had his Varuna prepare the Gudadama by clutching one in each hand where it charged towards Sasuke's smashed the black balls into Sasuke's Suzano where it disintegrated on touch. Almost as if the warrior was screaming in pain from the attack, much of the ethereal warrior was damaged and hurt where it lost a leg, an arm and about half of its body because of the raw power of Naruto's attacks, however Sasuke reformed the warrior and healing all damage done to its body by feeding off Sasuke's chakra. Sasuke then threw its two swords at Naruto's Varuna where they cut the three-headed avatar in the side and on its shoulder but it didn't deter it when it grabbed swords out of the air and threw them back at the Suzano where it stabbed the warrior in the chest. Sasuke's Suzano then jumped away hoping to avoid the dangerous attacks that would surely kill Sasuke. Sasuke then whistled where his massive tiger came running towards him, interrupting the cat's battle with its dragon counterpart. Naruto also did the same and Tento flapped his wings intent on getting to Naruto's location. Both legends then deactivated their guardian deities and landed on the respective heads of their familiars. Suzano, Varuna, spoke Naruto and Sasuke at the same time, except instead they were shaping their deities around their familiars. Yochi was covered from head to toe to tail in purple protective of chakra plates and two extra rams, one over each of its shoulder holding twin katanas in each hand. Yochi's face was covered in the helmet of the Suzano gaining a long Tengu nose, two horns over its ears. Samurai-like armor also sprouted its shoulders and purple flames were flickering off its form with a hexagonal prism on her forehead where her master was floating within with his arms crossed and the cursed seal on his body disappearing because of the ethereal warrior. Tento was encased in flickering flames and translucent chakra. On its shoulders and stomach were circular seals and lines that ran up and down from the seals, on both sides of the dragon's face were two identical copies of the dragon's face, mirroring Naruto's singular Varuna, upon its three heads were circular hats with an artificial ponytail with two black lines and a dot on each hat, its scales along its body disappeared being replaced with the chakra of the Varuna, it also gained two extra pair of arms with lines running down each arm. Black lines were also running along the entire length of his body ending at the tail and it also gained black lines on its torso looking like a ribcage and prayer beads with the tassels around its long neck and finally gained extra pair of wings with three black lines on the wings and Naruto sitting within the hat of Tento staring at Sasuke. Come Naruto! yelled Sasuke as he and his Suzano enhanced tiger pet charged at Naruto. Be prepared Sasuke! Responded Naruto as he and his Varuna enhanced pet dragon flew at Sasuke with both animals roaring at the, the other. Sasuke's tiger opened its purple clad mouth and what appeared to be a massive rotating wind ball formed where Sasuke stabbed it with his two Suzano swords before launching it at Naruto as he and Tento landed on the where Naruto channeling his chakra through the Varuna slammed one of its hand on the ground. Kuchiyose. Senpo Goju Rashomon. Summoning. Sage Art Quintuple Rashomon yelled Naruto as five Rashomon gates appeared that were larger than Tento appeared, blocking Sasuke's attack. Naruto had Tento fly up where the blonde man made a hansu. Flea Tento seemed to be sucking in its gut. And everywhere leaves from all around gathered around Naruto and Tento where the two of them, fired of water jets from Tento's nose with razor sharp leaves the blonde had gathered where the leaves and the water mixed together where the pressure from the water enhanced the leaves cutting power where they pierced into Sasuke's Suzano enhanced tiger. But the tiger was fine as its defenses were vastly increased. Then the two parties charged at each other in a blinding light. Later, their battle was coming to an end. Both opponents were pushed to their absolute limits and power, their clothes were burnt and were hanging limply just barely clinging to their bodies. They had oozing wounds from the attacks they dealt to each other, their hair was caked with blood and their bodies were covered in bruises and both were panting heavily. The environment around them was barren and grey and all life had been exterminated from the area. There was little to no colour, the trees were gone and the mountains looked like they had been filed down into ash, the scene would make anyone gasp at the hideousness, dark clouds were gathering over the area, blocking the light and darkening the sky. The ground was grey and cracked almost as if someone had literally broken it like glass, whenever someone would walk over it the tiniest dust cloud would be upturned where they stepped. It was just an ugly sight, through and through. Everything was just flat and dull, and would remain that way. Now both fighters were facing each other, 
No special powers, no flickering flames, just the two of them. For Sasuke, the powers of Senjutsu were enough to rival his visual prowess granted by the Sharingan and Rinnegan. He had to use his key abilities to keep the powers of Sage Mode at bay, such as the Gakido, Prada Path, and the Tendo, Diva Path, but he was still overwhelmed by the power of Senjutsu. For Naruto the Sage Mode's innate ability to empower all the user's abilities were enough to match the powers of Visual Jutsu, even visual prowess as strong as Sasuke's. Without their respective powers such as Rinnegan and Senjutsu they would be equal in every way. Naruto had to resort to every one of his jutsu to combat Sasuke, his Keki Genke and his space-time ninjutsu being key in the battle. Sasuke currently had his left eye closed and the Sharingan in his right eye was currently deactivated, however, he was still standing strong and had just barely enough chakra. He was currently holding his trademark sword in his hand which had droplets of blood on it. Naruto was still in his Rakudo Senjutsu form only the weaker version and without the chakra shroud, but nature energy was as much a part of him as he was to nature, although from using his special form, Rakudo Senjutsu, Six Paths Sage Technique, he was worn out and on the verge of collapse. Not even his empowered healing jutsu were enough to keep him standing, and his left arm was currently limp and unusable. Naruto only had one of his staves in his only uninjured arm. This time, the sun shall set on its final day, whispered Sasuke and then he charged at Naruto who performed the same action and both met in a clash of metal and sparks, and both fighters streaked across the ground before coming to a stop, leaving trails of grey dust behind them, however Naruto fell to the ground his face covered in dirt, while Sasuke was standing tall and proud. Finally, the moon has shadowed the sun, and this time, I am standing, victorious, while you lay there in the ground, pathetic spoke sasuke as he turned to the down from of naruto who was breathing heavily naruto tried to pick himself up off the ground with his one remaining arm but he was currently twitching his left fingers and he was still holding his staff we finally reached our dreams are you going to throw that all away just for a petty reason what about your family your children do they mean anything to you questioned naruto as he laid on the ground Sasuke closed his eyes in contemplation and immediately images of his children appeared in his mind, his two sons and his daughter. Izumi, his youngest and his only daughter, Hada, his youngest son and middle child, and Yuru his oldest son and heir to the Uchiha clan. He loved all of them equally just as much as he loved his older brother Itachi, they were the only family he had left, after Sasuke's wife died giving birth to Izumi. He raised them from that point onward as a single father, but still. They won't be safe in Konoha, no Uchiha shall be, what I am doing, I am doing for their sake, spoke Sasuke as he walked toward the still downed form of the leader of the Senju clan. Naruto was currently tightening his left fist, only subtle actions that Sasuke wouldn't pick up on. The only way to ensure their safety is to make people fear the Uchiha. Fear and power lead to peace, that is the only way to keep my family safe and fulfill what our ancestors tried to accomplish continued Sasuke as he was standing over Naruto. You speak like your ancestors, have you not learned from the mistakes of our past lives? Not truly knowing the value of people. The only way to understand how the world works and what people truly think, is to interact with them, we must experience what makes a person a person, understanding others cannot be forced, it is something someone must live with and through living it we discover that human life is precious, and I will do anything to protect it. True peace is attained through kindness, understanding and cooperation. Monologued Naruto, in an attempt to make Sasuke change his mind. Then, just as always, you are indeed a fool. Spoke Sasuke as he prepared to stab Naruto and end his life. Naruto just closed his eyes and readied himself for Sasuke's final attack. The blonde channeled a controlled amount of chakra into his one staff, making a clicking vibration, he scrunched up his left ready to attack. Just as Sasuke thrusted his sword, Naruto got onto his feet and with his left arm and senjutsu enhanced strength shattered Sasuke's sword with single strike and one of the halves of his short staff fell to the ground, revealing a blade just as long as the now missing half of the staff. And with precise aim and speed, Naruto stabbed Sasuke in the side, where his left ribcage is, making the Uchiha gasp in surprise and pain and blood to leak out of his mouth. Sasuke turned his head and stared at Naruto in shock, shocked because of what had transpired in surprise. You, 
gasped Sasuke and grunted in agony at the feeling of Naruto's hidden sword in his side. I will protect my home, my people, my friends and my family, if anyone threatens the things closest to me, I'll kill them, nor will they receive my forgiveness. Spoke Naruto as his eyes instinctively darkened. You're like water, Naruto, always changing, but whether changing for the best or worst, depends on perspective. Spoke Sasuke as his muscles turned against him and he was about to hit the ground. However he felt something catch him before he could hit the ground, and he found his face, being cradled upon Naruto's shoulder. And he could feel Naruto's right arm around his back, supporting him. Naruto, still showed compassion, even now, to his enemy. Sasuke, although he couldn't see it, he could feel, the sorrow flowing off the blonde-haired sage. And while Naruto was cradling Sasuke's body, the sage's tears were silently and slowly, flowing down his cheeks. He remembered, everything, from the time he truly met Sasuke Uchiha, to the blonde falling in love but not before having some girlfriend troubles that came with the teenage years. He remembered the birth of his first child which was also the day his arm got broken by his wife while going through labor. He remembered it all too well. Do you remember, the day we truly met for the first time? Spoke Naruto and at that moment, the grey clouds over the sky came plummeting down atop the two gods, washing away their blood, grime and the tears, almost as if the sky was trying to comfort them or condemn them, didn't it truly matter at the moment? As if it was yesterday, whispered Sasuke as he closed his eyes. You will always be my brother. Naruto's salty tears mingled with those of the rain, washing them away as if they were washing the his sins of his form. Then everything around them, started disappearing, the grey, barren wasteland vanished as if ripples fell over the world and soon they too vanished like rushing waves. And the images of Naruto and Sasuke were gone, leaving nothing but a pool of glistening water, not even a reflection was seen. From what I have perceived I anticipate that the transmigration has almost concluded and Asura and Indra, shall be reborn in new contemporary arbitrators. Spoke a floating man to nothing in particular as he removed his elaborate staff from the water. The discrepancy between their personalities, psyche and temperament likewise their capabilities, expertise and proficiency with their respective powers also differentiates itself in many ways, Naruto Senju and Sasuke Uchiha, are fascinating indeed. Spoke the man as he kept staring into the water. This man, while forgotten by time and culture, was very much a god as one can expect. He had given hope to many that thought it didn't exist, he made peace in a world consumed by war and his own power was enough to shatter the world in two. Anybody who threatened him or his family were basically begging to be killed. The old man was so powerful, his chakra, the power built up inside of every person, that he could literally transcend time and space as if he was skateboarding down a street. The old man was a tall man even in his old age, he had deep wrinkles, a long goatee reaching down to his waist, and short, grayish red shaggy hair, which spiked up at the top and a chin length braid hanging in front of his left ear. The man had pronounced eyebrow ridges with small horn like protrusions above them, as well as a red ripple like marking in the center of his forehead and also gray skin that seemed to match his ancient look. He wore a white, full length kimono with a pattern of six black magatama around his high collar, beneath which he wore a black necklace which was made of six black magatama. One the back of his kimono was a larger ripple like marking with a pattern of nine magatama arranged in three rows beneath it. This man was one of the most revered figures in history, he was literally stride out of stories and myths, the sage of the six paths Hagoromo Otsutsuki, son of Kagaya Otsutsuki. For millennium he had been watching his two sons fight their eternal struggle, one out of jiaozi and hatred and the other out of defense and love. Indra and Asura, the moon and the sun, the tiger and the dragon, yin and yang. Two opposites that cannot live without the other. Hagoromo looked up from the water and inspected the world around him for the possibly the millionth time. He was surrounded by water, not the raging oceans and storm-shattering waves of the wild seas, but the calmness and serenity of a gentle lake. He looked up into the sky, inspecting the stars above him, blending light and shining it over the darkness. He looked behind him to see a crescent moon, never moving and changing and a bit beside it was a dim sun, shining ever so brightly, but not enough to light up the realm he was in. This plane of space was unaccessible by any who didn't have a certain chakra. This was a realm for beings who were above gods. But the beauty and majesty of it almost felt like it could make any person feel like a king. Maybe this was heaven, 
Maybe it was just another dimension of Earth. Did it truly matter? Since he was alone. But sometimes he would get visits from other transmigrants every now and then, but all he needed was the peace and calm. Something which he wasn't afforded during his lifetime because of the endless wars and raising two boys, one calm, stern and focused, the other rambunctious, cheerful and exuberant. Sometimes he would give anything just to relive the times and trials of raising the two people he loved more than anything in the world. But now he was watching them again, reincarnated into two new individuals, however what he saw in the water was only a possible fate, and from what he knew of fate, was that it was changeable, like the wind. But he knew, above all else that the two boys have the capacity to end, the cycle of hatred and bring about an armistice between his two sons or their destinies will be that of bloodshed and hatred. I can only hope, that those two, will bring about an end, to everything. Spoke Hagoromo, knowing and wanting more than ever, that his sons will bring about the peace he had dreamed of for so long. Konohagakir, the village hidden in the leaves, founded during the Warring States period, by two of the world's strongest shinobi, Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha. Konohagakir, set an example across the world, with many shinobi clans imitating that same example of the Senju and Uchiha clans. Konoha was praised for ending wars in the worlds, the most prevalent wars being the Cold War of Asura and Indra's descendants. Konoha was the strongest and oldest village, no one could question that, even the other major villages that had imitated Konoha would admit that, but it didn't stop them from trying to gain the upper hand over the leaf village. An example of their strength would be their continued victories in the Shinobi World Wars. Iwa felt that they were the strongest, since Konoha was barely defending itself from their organized military. However Konoha still won the war, even though the losses were great. This is why, as the strongest village, Konoha was blossoming with trade, profit, peaceful existence and above all happy times. Madara and Hashirama's dream had finally become a reality, old rivals and bitter enemies were now friends and above all family. Old prejudices were turned away in favor of friendships and good greetings. People would wish for each other's safety and hope they would return home from their missions. But above all Asura's ideals of cooperation and love was widely accepted within the village, an ideal that Hashirama called, the will of fire, people would choose to live by it, an ideal that many believed to be an integral part of Konoha's power, the will of fire stated that the village were the people's family, and that every shinobi of Konoha would love, cherish and fight for their village to protect it just as their ancestors had done. According to the Sandame Hokage, the will of fire gives people the power to believe, to continue fighting despite the odds that they may never win, it was a testament to their willpower and strength. But now, peace was met and Konoha was prospering greatly from that peace. The Third Shinobi World War had ended and the Yandaimi Hokage had been chosen, Minato Namikaze, the main driving force in their victory against Iwa was chosen to take up the mantle of such an important role in the village. Minato was an exceptionally powerful shinobi, that many had a flea on sight order, so their lives could be spared. Minato was one of the most gifted shinobi to have ever lived, his power easily rivaling that of the previous Hokage maybe even surpassing his predecessor, Hiruzen Serutobi, a man reputed as the Shinobi no Kami, God of Shinobi, the very same title that Hashirama Senju had held during his lifetime. Although there were other candidates that some felt were more suited to be Hokage, such as Orochimaru and Jiraiya of the Sanin, student of Hiruzen, Minato quickly changed the thoughts and doubts of the people through his actions as the village was ever growing stronger and more prosperous by the day under the blonde man's care. Minato above all, was seen as one of the greatest Hokage to ever live and in a few years during his reign, he may also receive the title of Shinobi no Kami. But still, sometimes Minato would hope that something exciting would happen every now and then, since paperwork was far too troublesome. Right now, Minato was sitting in his office, with Hiruzen and his two advisors Kaharu Yutatane and Homura Maitokado. They were currently discussing a topic of heated debate, one that could make or break Konoha if it happened. I can only assume that the talks with Suna went down smoothly, spoke Hiruzen who was currently puffing on his pipe, loving the feel of tobacco filling his lungs. Konoha would benefit greatly with an alliance with Suna and the case cage would also benefit from some of Konoha's resources which their village sourly needs, such as medicinal herbs and water. I spoke with the Yandaimi case cage personally, although he was rather blunt and impatient he also wished for a compromise between our respective wants and needs. Although he did make snide remarks about Konoha, spoke Minato, 
earning a frown from Homura and Kaharu. We were able to agree to a peace and alliance treaty between our villages, one of them being that we will trade some of our resources to Suna for their benefit, just enough OS they can stabilize their situation, and the other that the respective villages would come to each other's aid, should we be attacked from other forces. Well, at least, we won't have to consider Suna our enemy for now, spoke Homura, who was a little pleased with the outcome. But given our own wealth, I suppose we won't have to demand anything in return from the ninja of the Sand Village. But also, our own military might has been rapidly growing with the introductions of the Hagormo clan, Iberi clan, and the Fuma clan. With the full devotion from the Kohaku clan, their ninja are already trying to prove themselves loyal to the village, most likely to gain power and status amongst their fellow clans. Spoke Kaharu, who was a little pleased at more ninja clans joining Konoha and therefore making it stronger. Either that or they're grateful that they now have a true home and wish to show their gratefulness by bringing in more funds for the village. But we can't deny that those clans will be essential to the power of Konoha, spoke Homura. The Fuma clan were surrounded by enemies from all sides and without a village backing them, they would have quickly been eliminated by Kumogakure, if we hadn't stepped in, one of the world's strongest clans would have joined another village, or their friends, six feet in the ground. Spoke Hiruzen and he too saw the wisdom in what Minato had done, aiding Tafuma as he was gaining their loyalty through sending Shinobi to assist them, although there were losses, they were made up for them by the Fuma clan wishing to join Konoha. The Kohaku clan were always hesitant at allowing their full might to join, Konoha, but with a little charisma and a lot of persuasion, I was able to have them join us, and according to reports, they are even happy. Spoke Minato with a large grin, just smiling at the prospect of new friends seemed to make him giddy. However, the Hagoromo clan, have always had bitter resentment towards the leaf, maybe because they weren't initially invited to join the village, during the Shodem's reign, or because their enemies the Senju clan helped found it, said Homura trying to discern the Hagoromo clan's motives in joining Konoha. We were able to snuff out any resentment that the Hagoromo clan had towards Konoha, by giving them their own compound and place within the village, a home, something which they desperately wanted in the end. That should keep them happy in the long run, but, it may be a while before we have their loyalty. Spoke Hiruzen, and even Minato knew he was right, since things such as new alliances were volatile at best, he hoped that like his previous Hokage, they could gain the Hagoromo clan's friendship. And what of the Iberi clan? Given their weak bodies and unstable but yet powerful Keki Jenke, something must have been worked out. Questioned Kaharu, over the Yandaimi's actions. Don't worry about the Iberi. I know full well of what ails them, and I have one of the best working on their problem. Reassured Minato as he turned around in his chair slightly. May I ask who? queried Homura, which made Hiruzen smile and Minato to grin slightly. Well, you know, I just asked Tsunade for a few favors and she was wiling to come back. Spoke Minato making Homura Nadkaharu gasp in surprise. She's back in the village, how? Why? I thought she would never return spoke Homura in shock at what he had just heard. She's not resuming her shinobi duties, but I was able to work out a compromise, she'll instead be taking control and working at the hospital, treating how shinobi and civilians, although she did say that she had lost faith in her medical skill. Well let's just say she took a gamble, and lost. Spoke Minato with a small grin. At the hospital, Tsunade, the greatest kunoichi in the world was currently caring to an injured child who had broken her arm when trying to rescue her pet cat from a tree. The child had come in screaming and crying, frightened for her arm which was throbbing in pain. Tsunade spent a good ten minutes trying to calm the poor girl down so she could treat her injury. She had to sing a lullaby that her father once sang to her when she was a little girl. The child was only four years old but the busty blonde could at least give it a try. And to her own surprise the child had calmed down by the time Tsunade had reached the third verse, she then applied medical ninjutsu and was able to repair the damage to the girl's arm. There you go, said Tsunade softly as she was wrapping a bandage around the small girl's arm. Tsunade then turned to the mother of the girl who had a look of relief and happiness on her face. All you have to do is change the bandages weekly for three weeks, other than that, she'll be just fine, spoke Tsunade with a small smile. Thank you Tsunade-sama, said the mother taking her daughter's hand in her own. Bye bye miss, said the little waving at Tsunade who waved back with a small smile. Things had certainly changed for Tsunade when she came back to the village, 
well it was more like Minato dragging he ass back to her home and knocking some sense into her. When Minato had first appeared to her at some gambling den where of course, she was gambling her money away and getting herself dead drunk on sake, he asked her to return to the village and to serve as its chief medic and advise the other medics and among other things. She had explained to him that she was no more less interested in going back to Konoha than to give away all her money for any reason other than gambling. But knowing Minato ever since his childhood since her former teammate Jiraiya had introduced her to Minato and his own teammates, she knew that the blonde man was as determined as you can get, so for a week he traveled with her, well more like stalked her until he got his answer. Every day she would wake up and she would see Minato waiting for her answer. If only she could flatten him like a bulldozer, but she knew that would get her in more trouble than she was worth. Eventually he came up with a compromise, well technically it was the same question he was asking her, she said right to his face, that she would never return as a shinobi of Konoha, but Minato retorted with the fact that he just asked her to be the head medic and not a shinobi on the front lines or performing missions and such. She felt so stupid, that she didn't ask for any other details on what Minato wanted. But what she didn't know was the blonde mont's ulterior motive in asking her to return. Minato, was a shrewd man, who never did anything without a clear purpose, he knew that if Tsunade would return to being a medic then maybe she could find solace and healing through the physical healing of others. Although she didn't answer him after finding out what he really wanted, he still had to drag her back to the village. So now here she was, and she had to say, that maybe returning to Konoha was actually a good idea. It gave her happiness to know that she was bringing happiness to others through simply healing cuts and bruises to saving lives and repairing mortal injuries. Sometimes she would just watch the tears of relief trail down people's faces knowing that their loved ones were still with them. This was one of the reasons to why she became a medic of renown, one to follow and be like her legendary grandfather, who was reputed to be the greatest medic in the world, capable of healing himself and others without forming seals, they just to be in his presence to be healed, and she would admit in a heartbeat that she was nowhere near his level, but she was able to replicate his abilities through various means such as her summonings and her Byakugo no in strength of a hundred seal. The other reason was to make people happy, seeing their smiles and joyous laughs. A light would warm up in her, like a small sun, a heartbeat. Life was indeed cruel, but it could also be the greatest thing in the world. But creating life, yourself, that may be one of the most perfect things in the world. When she looked back on her life, Tsunade knew that she had missed out on so many things. But the one she felt the most remorse for was, being a mother, she wanted to be one so much, she wanted to love a child and that child to love her unconditionally in return. The Senju line would die with her, the last of the mighty clan. Would her parents, her grandparents be disappointed in her for not continuing the clan of a thousand hands? But she didn't care, she was the last Senju, and she would do what she wanted. She heard a knock that snapped her out of her thoughts. Tsunade Sama, said a voice, the blonde haired Senju turned her head to see her apprentice the niece of her late lover Dan, Shizun. That was one person she took with her when Dan died, Shizun his only living relative, Dan's sister had died on a mission and Shizun's father died before she was born leaving Dan to care for her as the last of her family, but when Dan died Tsunade took it upon herself to raise Shizun, who loyally followed her as her student and attendant, even though the black haired girl would become exasperated with her master's gambling habits. Suande Sama, the Yandaimi is here to see you spoke Shizun who was currently holding several files and folders in her hand. Fine, send him in Shizun. Spoke Tsunade, a little depressed since she was broken from her thoughts. Tsunade let her thoughts travel again, but this time to Minato, she didn't know what to think of the man, but she would say that she was thankful to him for bringing her back to Konoha. She then saw Minato, her Yandaimi walk into her office, with that bright smile and his golden hair bouncing around. Tsunade. How is the progress on the Iberi's Keki Jenke? asked Minato happily as he entered the busty blonde haired woman's office. Although she was irked that he just barged into her office without a care in the world, he could at least knock, maybe if she threw a mug at him, that would teach him a lesson. The Iberi's Keki Jenke is like nothing I have seen before, it's highly unstable and uncontrollable. From research, it seems that the Keki Jenke manifests itself in the younger generations among the clan and is seemingly stronger too. It works on a similar basis to the Hazuka clan, where their shinobi can transform their bodies into water. Spoke Tsunade as she took out a clipboard that held the information on the Iberi clan. 
My research seems to suggest that the only way to stabilize the Keki Jenke is through the use of advanced and powerful Fuenjutsu, and this seal would also have the effect of returning the Iberi's dispersed form and coalesce it back into a solid form, as usually the case in the clan, is that dispersion equals death, although they wouldn't be the best opponents against wind users this Fuenjutsu must work in a way that returns the dispersed chakra back into the solid body. Well, I can probably figure out a way although I will have to utilize research of my own and with some help from Kashina," said Minato while rubbing his head nervously. Kashina? Are you talking about that cute, fiery redhead that used to scream about becoming Hokage to the entire world? questioned Tsunade as she raised her eyebrow at her Hokage. The one and the same. Spoke Minato with a forced smile and some sweat rolling down his neck, however after years of being a kunoichi and having expertise in psychology. Tsunade could immediately tell that something was bothering the Hokage, of course it was like someone shoved a neon sign in her face. What happened between you two? The last time I heard, you two were hitting it off, queried Tsunade as she took out a sake bottle from one of her drawers and two cups. Well I'd rather not say, it's a bit too personal, said Minato obviously feeling uncomfortable about the wild thing. Sit down, this is obviously going to take a while spoke Tsunade already pouring the sake into the cup. I'm really sorry, but really I can't, said Minato crouching a little and holding his hands out in front of him. Sit, ordered Sand releasing a small amount of killing intent at the Hokage. Minato deflated a little and breathed a heavy sigh before drooping down into a chair opposite Tsunade where he grasped the small cup in his hand. So what's going on with you two, really? Well, how can I say this? I proposed to Kashina said Minato whose face took a passive expression. Then, why are you moping around like you are? It's not like she said, no, said Tsunade taking a swig of her sake. However seeing Minato's solemn face only confirmed Tsunade's worst and last thoughts, she really did say, no. I even had the ring ready and everything. I proposed to her on the Hokage Tower, everything was perfect, but she said no and ran off confessed Minato as he himself took a swig of sake and then gestured for Tsunade to pour some more sake. She didn't even give me a good reason, why, she said no. I'm sorry, I don't think I can emphasize with something like that, spoke Tsunade showing genuine care for the golden blonde in front of her, which made Minato grin a little. But still, what's done is done, don't beat yourself up over it, then plenty of birds in the sky. I'm sure you may find someone else, if not just get over Kashina and focus on your Hokage duties," said Tsunade providing some advice for the young cage. May you be one of those birds in the sky? playfully questioned Minato, now a little happier at hearing Tsunade's advice. Haha, it will be a thousand years before that happens, besides as if you can get your hands on, this," said Tsunade gesturing to her whole body making Minato laugh a little. And so without saying anything. They continued to drink their troubles away, one bottle after the other, and soon without realizing it, both were completely drunk, their movements, thoughts and actions were uncontrollable. What? Was it you said? Tsunade. About. Getting my hands on you, spoke a slurred Minato as he took another swig of alcohol. I. Said. Something like that, maybe, you can try if you like. Spoke Tsunade with a hint of allure in her voice and revealing some of her ample bosom to her fellow blonde. Primal instincts and the laws of nature coming over Minato, he swiftly pinned Tsunade to her desk and quickly stripped her of her clothes and both began to experience the pleasures of their actions, and their consequences. A few hours later and for some unknown and yet magical reason, no one seemed to disturb them during their exercise. Light shone through the window of Tsunade's office, hitting her in the face making her groan in complaint. She opened her eyes wearily and was blinded by the rays of the sun. She tried to sit herself up only for a massive headache to hit her, as if running into a brick wall. She then noticed that she was bare naked, the only thing seemingly covering her modesty was her green howry that was just barely covering her, sacred, places. She searched around her room, and some of her items in her office were scrambled about and were in odd places, she then checked herself over to find that her lipstick was smudged, her hair was disheveled and all the other things you will find after a certain practice. Her brown then landed on a bare back that was sitting a bit away from her, she could tell it was a male because of the body shape and he had a coat with red flame motifs covering his own modesty and he had golden sun hair that could. Oh my god! thought Tsunade, regaining her memory over what had transpired, 
there were questions thrown back and forth, drinking and lust. She should chide herself for being so foolish and unprofessional. It all came to her, like a wave crashing down upon her. She had just slept with the Yandaimi Hokage. She did what any hormonal fangirl or fear stricken woman would do, she screamed. Ah! screamed Tsunade, probably loud enough for the entire village to hear. The high volume of her voice did the job in waking her companion who jolted from his sleep and was met with ha splitting headache and a mortified busty blonde haired woman. Tsunade! What are you doing in my house? asked Minato with squinted eyes while rubbing his blonde hair. We're not in your house, you're in my office, grunted Tsunade with flames flickering off her form. Really? The what happened after we got drunk? questioned Minato as he got off the ground while still shielding himself with his coat. You took advantage of me when I was drunk, shouted Tsunade at the top of her lungs while pointing an accusing finger at her Hokage. I resent that that accusation, shouted back Minato. But you don't deny it, replied Tsunade which made Minato stop and pause to think about what she said. We, before he could actually say anything, he saw a book flying towards his face and if it wasn't for his great speed it would have smacked him right in the face. He then saw a pencil pot also fly towards him and he ducked at that also. He then looked it up to see Tsunade standing up still shielding herself with her haori and just randomly and blindly throwing things at him while flames of female fury were licking themselves off her form. He was dodging and ducking trying not to be hit by the books, pencils, chairs and any weapons Tsunade had on her while also trying to get changed into his clothes. Two months later, nothing had really changed for Tsunade or Minato, although things were incredibly awkward between the two of them, they had told no one what had transpired, and it seems that no one would find out. They had also successfully stabilized the Iberi's Keki Jenke where they could reform even if their form was dispersed by wind, through powerful chakra-based seals. And right now, everyone was happy in the Hidden Leaf Village, it almost seemed as if nothing could go wrong. Tsunade was currently in her office, writing off reports for her patients. It had been two months since, that, incident and even Tsunade knew, that something was wrong, she had been getting dizzy, nauseous sometimes she would nearly faint. She knew of one of two things she was experiencing, and she only hoped it wasn't what she thought it was and if so, it would cause a huge scandal in the village maybe some trouble outside of it also. She was about to sign another document before a wave of nausea washed over her, quickly reacted she only had a split second before she threw up in the bin vomiting up the breakfast she ate that morning. Being a medic she knew what it was, she only hoped that she wasn't what she dreaded. A few hours later Tsunade had met with Shizune because she was the only person she trusted with such delicate knowledge. So now Tsunade was wearing a hospital gown and was having a medical checkup being performed by Shizune. This checkup was to confirm or deny what Tsunade had been fearing for the past two months. Shizune was sending medical chakra into Tsunade's navel, searching for the thing which would make sense of everything. And there Shizun found it, a small but fast beating pulse, then it was true. Shizun had first thought that Tsunade was anemic, but no, it wasn't as simple as that. Congratulations, Tsunade-sama, you're going to be a mother, spoke softly and a little happy at the prospect believing that her master can finally achieve happiness in her life by raising another. Tsunade got up into a sitting position, digesting the news she had just been given. On one hand she was unbelievably angry at Minato for knocking her up, she felt like she had to march over to the Hokage tower and make the blonde haired man into a human pretzel and would live the rest of his life eating through a tube. While on the other hand she felt like she should break down and cry, not in sadness or regret but over sheer happiness, she finally got what she wanted the entire time, although she was slightly disappointed that the father of her child wasn't her late lover, Dan. But it changed very little as it was her child, a life she helped to create. She could be a mother, maybe she could finally be happy. But this also created a certain problem, telling the father, knowing Minato he might just faint at the news. But right now, the feeling she was feeling most was most likely anger. So now she was stomping towards the Hokage Tower, intent on confronting the father of her child. Shizun was trying to calm Tsunade with Tsunade's pet pig taunt and also trying to comfort her master. However it seems as if Tsunade was on autopilot. Many civilians who were in her way started clearing the area as the woman's footsteps were shaking the ground around everyone making some seek shelter from the wrathful Senju survivor. 
one such individual being the Uchiha matriarch Makoto Uchiha who only stared in surprise seeing Senju leader stomping away through the village, and you could clearly see the large belly she had symbolizing that she was with child the same as Tsunade. However Makoto's good sense got the better of her and decided to stay out of Tsunade's way. Minato was currently in his office speaking with Hiruzen, Kaharu and Homura and were discussing their recently successful missions with the village's new clans. Homura and Kaharu especially were happy since this only made the village stronger and it seemed like something that their shadowy friend of theirs would enjoy. So Minato, have you heard the requests we have been receiving to heal the Kurama clan's new heir, Murakumo's daughter, Yakumo Kurama who had just been recently born? Yes, apparently the Kurama heiress, Yakumo, was born with a weak body that prohibits the bodily requirements of being a shinobi, however, there may be a way to fix that, if we have Tsunade to look into it spoke Minato telling his advisors of his plans. That would be acceptable, given her medical mastery, said Homura, agreeing with Minato on the subject. Minato reached for his cup of water which was by his side, but when he was about to grasp it, the cup shook ever so slightly and it shook again, the water in the cup becoming disturbed. Then he felt a sharp sting in his back, it didn't hurt but he knew that it was quite an ominous feeling and his body froze almost as if it was encased in ice. Hiruzen seeing Minato pause knew that something was coming, and that something was gunning for Minato specifically. They then felt the entire office shake, things milling about the room were crashing to the floor and shaking spontaneously. All three higher ups turned their heads to the closed doors of the Hokage office and the shaking and the giant pulses only grew in size and strength, they could hear muffled talk from a high pitched voice and some winking but the voices had little to owe effect on the miniature earthquakes shaking through the tower. And suddenly the pulsing stopped and nothing could be heard or felt through the office. But all that changed when the door to the Hokage office went flying off its hinges and straight over the heads of the people in the room who were currently gaping like fish out of water at what was happening. However Minato was sweating incredibly at the sight before his eyes. An amazingly irate Tsunade with glowing red eyes and black flames of the power known as female fury flickering off her with what appeared to be a demonic face being made from the flames whose eyes were currently boring into those of Minato who he briefly mistook for death at the moment. Shizun and Tonton meanwhile were peeking on the side of the wall only hoping that everyone would walk, mostly unscathed from this event. Regaining his pride and stoic Hokage demeanor, Minato knew that he would have to confront Tsunade, even if it might kill him. Tsunade. Can this wait, I'm currently meeting with my advisors spoke Minato ignoring everything around him and the numerous cracks and holes in the walls and corridors of his tower and the broken window along with his now missing door. I need to talk to you, said Tsunade who was currently grinding her teeth, obviously trying not to do something that would cause an insurmountable amount of trouble. Um, okay, talk, said Minato and quietly gestured to his anbu that protected him to stand down, so they probably wouldn't die or lose some limbs in the process. In private, said Tsunade crossing her arms under her bust. I am sorry Tsunade, but we are having a necessary meeting as to how the village will be adjusting to the new arrivals of the recent clans joining our village. Spoke Hiruzen as he puffed on his pipe. Well then, I guess I have to say it out loud, you knocked me up, said Tsunade bluntly to Minato whose mind failed to compute what she just said, while Kaharu and Homura's jaws dropped to the ground utterly flabbergasted at what she just said. Hiruzen gave every ounce of his willpower not to burst out laughing at the faces of Homura and Kaharu or fainting after hearing that his student was pregnant with his successor's child. However, Tsunade barely hid her anger at the expressions the three had, excluding Hiruzen, she didn't want to tell Kaharu and Homura but since they were having such an important meeting that they had to be there when she dropped the news. But, there must be a mistake, I mean how could we, said Minato completely overcome by the news. It's called sex, it's usually how babies are made, right? replied Tsunade sarcastically, right now from what Minato said, it didn't seem like he wanted to be the father of her child, he possibly didn't want anything to with it. I, I see, said Minato who was looking down at the ground, nobody could see his expression and his face was shadowed. Yandaimi? questioned Kaharu who saw the state her leader was in. Are, are you going to abort it? asked Minato with a hint of sincerity but little did he know that his words were conveying the wrong feelings to what he had. Abort it? You mean kill it before it even has a chance to live? Whispered Tsunade, 
and of course being pregnant it means she of course was susceptible to hormones and mood swings where even the smallest amount of words can turn an innocent butterfly into a raging hornet. Soon small amounts of tears began dripping off her cheeks, just the mere thought of killing her baby just seemed to fill with nothing but misery, she had been carrying the small being inside of her for two months now, and she would admit it as if she was admitting the tragedies in her life, that she loved her unborn child more than anything in the world. If you think, I'm going to kill this baby, even if you don't want it, then don't be a part of its life as I will not kill it just because it's convenient for you. Hissed Tsunade her anger growing at the blonde Hokage like a rising flame. No, whispered Minato and now Tsunade could now see tears falling down his face. I don't want you to abort, to be truthful, I'm happy, happier than I've ever been. Yes I'm shocked but, well maybe this can work out. Said Minato raising his head looking Tsunade straight into her eyes. Because I'm going to be father. And with those few words Suad's doubts and anger quickly subsided and was replaced with relief, knowing that Minato won't abandon the child. This is truly tremendous news. A senju air at last. Spoke a voice which made a cold chill run down the spine of everyone in the room. All five occupants looked behind them to see Danzo Shimura, standing in front of Shizun while the black haired girl looked uneasy. Danzo. Said Minato carefully. Yandaimi replied the bandaged man. How long have you been skulking there Danzo? questioned Hyuzen adopting a dangerous look in his eye. Just enough to understand the situation. Responded the root commander. I was on my way to the tower while I was walking through the halls I noticed that nearly all of them had large cracks and holes in it, and when I saw Tsunade's apprentice it confirmed my beliefs. Spoke Danzo more politely than what he was known for saying. However the news of such a thing, it's truly pleasing spoke danzo obviously telling the truth to what he was spouting a child of the most powerful and feared clan in the world whose father just happens to be the most powerful and feared man in the world already confirms the child's talent and potential said danzo talking about minato and tsunade's child as if it was a thing and not a person i don't see how such a thing would involve you danzo said homura wondering on what danzo's plans were as the senju clan's hopes and dreams now rest on this child since he found unlikely that Minato and Tsunade would have any more children. It already does, as I have had my root agents spread word throughout the village informing the people and shinobi that one of their two founding clans will continue to live. I think you can already hear the cries of joy from within this room. Said Danzo making Minato and Tsunade grit their teeth and rage to fuel their eyes as that certain information was incredibly personal and scandalous. Hiruzen. Hearing what Danzo had done stood up from his chair and looked the black-haired man in the eye. You had little right to do that Danzo, how dare you leak such personal news, even before the parents were comfortable enough to share them. Berated Hiruzen at his old friend. It is for the good of the village and the good of the people to know that the Shodem will have a living legacy. Spoke Danzo trying to justify his reasons for leaking the information. I have to agree with Hiruzen on this matter. The villagers would have found out eventually but this wasn't the right time for it, it may also cause an overwhelming amount of trouble for the other villages who might learn of this information, and add to the fact that Tsunade was uncomfortable even telling the father, I doubt she also wouldn't be comfortable having everyone in the village know that she is with child. Said Kaharu supporting the Senju leader and the Hokage. Also this situation is delicate, it must be handled with tact, otherwise the wild thing may be blown out of proportion. And the last thing we need is to stress Tsunade while she is carrying an important package. Also, we could have just revealed that Tsunade is pregnant and withhold the information of the Yandaimi being the father. Things may have been easier, but with you leaking this information, the other villages may take violent action, they may feel threatened by the arrival of a new Senju in the world, one with great potential, such as Kumo, or will take militaristic movements against Konoha for what Minato did during the war and the hundreds of shinobi he slaughtered. I know that Onoki the Sandame Suchikage will not take this news tenderly. Said Homura relaying the consequences of everyone's actions. Then so be it, I will have my root agents monitor Tsunade and protect her from threats of need be until the heir is born. Responded Danzo not caring for the other village's intentions but his own, he was currently plotting something devious, and I'm pretty sure you all know what he wants by now. And still Shizun has said nothing to contribute to this entire conversation. Enough! shouted Tsunade not liking how the conversation was mainly revolving around her and yet no one seems to care what she thought. First of all, I'm not helpless, I'm pregnant, it doesn't make me any more dangerous than how I was before I got knocked up. 
and I don't want your drones following me around and reporting my every move to you. I agree with Tsunade, said Minato, as he didn't like the idea of Donzo's men spying on Tsunade 24 7. Besides, I think there is someone much more suited for the job at protecting Tsunade. I don't need protection, grunted Tsunade with her arms still crossed under her bust. You will need protection when you're nine months pregnant and can't move as well as you used to. Deadpanned Minato to which Tsunade had no retort. Please come out Kakashi, said Minato where a boy no older than 13 appeared wearing the standard gear of the Anbu Black Ops and a mask that resembled a dog's face. I'm pretty sure you know of everything correct, queried Minato where the young Anbu member nodded. Do you accept this mission? Asked Minato with a slightly stern gaze as he was assigning Kakashi to protect his unborn child, to which Kakashi nodded again symbolizing his acceptance and quickly disappeared from sight. He's a talkative one, commented Tsunade. Although she was a little irked that she was being watched as if she was a fragile doll, she was relieved that it was someone Minato trusted and not any of Donzo's men. Kakashi can be trusted, he's just going through a few troubling things that's all, assured Minato easing some of Tsunade's doubts. Well given all the excitement that's happened today, I think should head back to my compound, I'm getting really tired, not sure if it's from the pregnancy or something else, said Tsunade who was walking out of the room but not before casting a suspicious eye on Danzo. Tsunade bid goodbye to her sensei and left the Hokage tower with Shizune and her pet pig Tauntan in tow. Now, all we need is to fix the damages to Hokage Tower that Tsunade made. Said Hiruzen casting a small grin which made everyone sigh at the broken glass and doors and holes in the walls that Tsunade created. It had been a month since the news of Tsunade falling pregnant was revealed to the village because of Donzo's meddling in affairs that were not his own. Through his root agents who had spread word through the village in the form of a rumor which the people spread the news to others and others until the entire village knew about Tsunade's pregnancy. What was even worse was the fact that they also knew that Minato was the father. There was great celebration in the village, with people celebrating this joyous news and the soon to be born child of the Saunde Senju and Minato Namikaze. People were throwing parties and having drinking games, with even a festival celebrating the revival of the Senju clan, the founding clan of Konoha. Tsunade was even asked to speak at the festival, which she was nervous about and a little embarrassed at how her child was conceived, although she was still uncomfortable about the wild thing. While on the other hand, it was a huge scandal in the village, many people mainly were outraged at the irresponsibility of Tsunade and Minato who were healthy role models to the village's children. Some parents were afraid that their own children might pick up the Senju parents' habits, Tsunade's drinking and gambling habits and Minato's jutsu's silly names, although they could do little to sway people's minds as most people thought that they were raging and bitching about something that didn't really matter. However, the overall response to the news was generally positive with many civilians, Shinobi and Kunoichi saying congratulations to the parents for bringing such an important life to the village. During that month Tsunade was still working at the hospital tending to the wounded ninja Tad would return from both successful and failed missions, either with relatively minor wounds or life-threatening ones that would take hours to save them. Tsunade was still quiet stubborn about working at the hospital seemingly gaining an overall moral duty to help those that needed help and bring happiness to those that wanted it. Even now Tsunade would still smile herself at the happy faces that would walk away from the hospital with their loved one in tow. If she was honest, very honest, she was excited by the prospect of walking out of the hospital with her baby in her arms, she wondered briefly what her child would be like, both in appearance and personality. Sometimes she would daydream about walking with her baby through a field of flowers while they laughed and she laughed with the. She wondered if what it would be like if it was a girl, would they have her creamy blonde hair with Minato's sapphire eyes, while the child would be more like Minato, with his calmness and collected demeanor, with some of his playfulness and maturity while also remaining humble throughout their life. Or a boy with Minato's hair and Tsunade's amber eyes, while the boy would take after her personality. Cheerful and exuberant, but always displaying a tough attitude to those around them with a little hyperactivity in there too, who would take risks from time to time. She wanted that so badly, but she wouldn't know what the baby would be like until it was born. Her relationship with Minato, which was only just friends, was still stable. She didn't want to tear his face off each moment he walked into her presence, but so long as they could stand each other's presences, everything would be fine. In fact Minato was happy when he would visit her once a week to check up on her and the baby, of course since he was Hokage he was busy doing, 
well Hokage stuff really, but he still wanted to be a part of their child's life, although there was some uproar regarding who would have parental custody of the baby. It was settled that Tsunade would have custody and the baby would take her clan name of Senju, which Minato agreed to, well the clan name of course, but he still had to butt horns with her regarding the custody. She had made it quite clear that she was the one carrying the baby, she was the one that would go through all the pain to bring it into the world, so therefore she won the argument. Minato had even gone as far to write a will should he ever die, because even today there were still people who wanted Minato's head at their feet for what he did to them and their families during the war. In the will it stated that Naruto would inherit everything that belonged to Minato, including jutsu, money, and property, and the baby would inherit all of it when they turned 16. Minato had also set up a trust fund for Tsunade and their baby so they would be able to look after themselves before, during and after the birth, to which Tsunade was thankful for. Shizun had also been helping around, she was quite happy lending a hand and making the busty blonde haired woman's life easier and more comfortable and less stress free, since that was the last thing she needed. Even Minato had stressed the fact that Tsunade should stress less and be happy which would cause Tsunade to become stressed and yelling would ensure. Her former teacher, the Sandame Hokage, Hiruzen Serutobi would visit her and make sure she was well, Hiruzen was the closest thing to a father Tsunade had since her own father died during the first shinobi world war leaving her mother a widow and pregnant with her younger brother Nawaki who would die at the beginning of the second shinobi world war and her mother died a few years after Nawaki's birth also during the first shinobi world war. Much of her clan, the Senju clan, died during that war. Their numbers and power were greatly reduced and many were eager to pounce on the void left by the Senju deaths, mainly the Hyuga clan who were very eager to claim power within the village. Tsunade wondered what would become of the other clans such as the Uchiha and Hagoromo clans who were old enemies of the Senju clan. She wondered briefly if they would be a threat to her baby and herself, but she doubted that as many of the clans were at least friendly with one another. But there was one thing she knew that was concrete evidence, was the fact that Danzo would never allow her to leave the village with the new Senju heir, she knew that old Badger was planning something, but she didn't know, as trying to understand Danzo's mind was like trying to find your way out of a twisting and tricky maze, it was near impossible. But she was still expecting Danzo's to do something shady for which he was known for. In a dark underground headquarters, where all manner of shady things would occur, was a bandaged man sitting within his office, thinking about the new developments to the village. This man was an incredibly dangerous and an amazingly deceptive individual by the name of Danzo Shimura the Shinobi no Yami. Darkness of the Shinobi. A man who had ideals that were archaic and draconian in nature and age, he merely believed that Shinobi were tools and weapons to be used and tossed aside when they lost their use. He forced those under his command to kill those who were important to them and loved above all, to which he called, training where the shinobis would suppress their emotion ensuring not to feel the slightest hesitation in ending one's life. They didn't feel any remorse, sorrow or sympathy, to them all that mattered was the mission, either complete it or die, that was the code that the organization root would use. They copied the old graduation program of Kiri, by killing others so to become strong and survive, Donzo's training and methods were unknown to many, even the Hokage to which he followed under. However Donzo's own root soldiers were loyal to him and him alone, they were puppets and he was the puppet master pulling the strings. He remembered a time when he thought he was going to be Hokage, the leader of the village, in Donzo's mind, only he was fit to be Hokage and that was it. He believed that only he had the strength and the will to lead the village and abandon the ideals of the Senju clan who installed the will of fire into the village. Danzo believed that only through dominating strength and the use of fear through power would ensure the village's safety and future while those under the thumb of the will of fire would eventually lead the village into ruin. However, Danzo knew that he himself was old, and he would not live forever, only he could change the world for the better, only he was capable in uniting the shinobi world. Well at least in his mind. However, Danzo may have found the perfect candidate to shape the world and be a, true, Hokage once he passed. The unborn child of the Yandaimi and Tsunade. Danzo was cunning. Oh so very cunning. He took advantage of the news of Tsunade being pregnant by spreading the information through the village so to limit Tsunade's movements within the village and to ensure that she would never leave the village with the child in tow. He also wanted his root agents to guard Tsunade while the child grew inside of her. Although that attempt was foiled when Minato stepped in and appointed his student, Kakashi Hitaki to care for the well-being of the Senju leader. However that was a minor bump in the road, 
when the due date for the baby was coming Danzo will arrange for midwives of his choosing to oversee the birth of the baby. And when it was born he would rip it away from its mother's arms and raise it to be a, true, shinobi. He knew of the power and influence in the village the child would have when it was older, that's why he wanted the baby under his thumb and to accept his ideals were the, right, ideals he only wants what is best for Konoha and the best way to protect Konoha was to ensure that the child was a replica of himself, where they would be cold, calculating and to never compromise for the good of Konoha. Although Hiruzen may also be a problem. The Sandame was above all smart and he was already suspecting Danzo to be planning something that would only benefit the root leader. Hiruzen above all was not afraid of putting Danzo in his place but was too soft-hearted to do anything in the long term. Minato also suspected Danzo, he would be the hardest to fool since the man was shrewd and could see through many lies and deceit, he suspected that Minato already knew of what Danzo was planning and how it involved his child, Danzo would admit that he was little match for the Yandaimi. The bandaged man would have to play his cards carefully if he was going to rip away the Senju heir. But Danzo had time on his side, in six months the baby would be born and the elder had enough time to make his plans come to fruition. But the power the child may have is what interested Danzo the most, a powerful lineage of talented shinobi were coursing through the blood of the unborn child. Danzo was both excited and threatened by its mere presence, since the baby could be a harbinger of the village's end or the, savior, the village hidden in the leaves required. The blood of the most powerful and feared clan in the world and the sum of the most powerful shinobi in the world ensured the talent and potential the child would have, the mere thought made Danzo shiver in delight which was a scary thing in itself. With the bandaged mons, help, the Senju clan would return to its former glory and power with Danzo spearheading the clan from the shadows, the legacy of the Shodem and the Yandaimi would be in the safe hands of Danzo and any other child born to that clan. To be truthful Danzo was hoping for a boy, so the boy could impregnate multiple women at once so to produce more clan members faster, and the mothers would come from his own root organization, as strong mothers would ensure strong children also. Everything would go according to plan, so long as there was little meddling. Minato was sitting in his office writing out and confirming reports and sending out missions, today however, was a little special. He received a petition from the head of the Kurama clan, Murakumo Kurama enlisting aid for his daughter, Yakumo to be healed, because of her weak and frail body that would limit her potential as a ninja, Minato already had someone in mind who could help. They were about to walk though the door any minute, and he could already sense the chakra signature outside his door with what felt like another chakra signature within that signature. When the door opened it revealed Tsunade wearing her normal attire of a green haori over a sleeveless blouse and dark pants and high heels and if one was to look closely you could see the small baby bump she had revealing the life she was carrying inside of her. Tsunade good of you to come, said Minato professionally to which his blonde significant other nodded to. Minato also noticed that Shizune had joined her, probably to help with the medical examination which would be performed on Yakumo. Minato could also sense Kakashi's presence trailing Tsunade's also. He had assigned the young Anbu member to safeguard Tsunade when he could not, since as the days passed by Tsunade would become less and less formidable because of growing child within her which would limit her mobility. Please, tell me what we're doing again, said Tsunade as when Minato told her of the Kurama medical examination it sort of went through one ear and out the other. At the time she was currently gorging herself on the some food she had a craving for, it was a common symptom of pregnancy to have a certain fetish for a food you may or may never have liked. That time it was sushi, lots of sushi. The head of the clan Murakumo Kurama has requested that we perform a medical examination on their sick daughter, Yakumo Kurama, apparently she was born with a weak and frail body that limits her potential, spoke Minato informing Tsunade of their medical subject. Why? With such a body, she may never have the chance to be a shinobi, even might die, father of might guy, who could never perform ninjutsu or genjutsu, so he trained his body to perfect physical condition and trained in mostly taijutsu. He later died when he faced the seven shinobi swordsmen of the mist trying to protect his son. But with Yakumo's body she may never have the ability to be a kunoichi as genjutsu masters could easily break free from genjutsu or someone who was adept at it would easily kill Yakumo if she was ever faced in that situation. Questioned Suande as she recounted the death of Might Dai, who was excellent at taijutsu because there was no limit to taijutsu but with genjutsu it was different. From what Murakumo told me is that his daughter, 
Yakumo has been born with their powerful Keki Genke allowing her to kill people with Genjutsu by causing the brain to believe that what is happening to them is real and not an illusion as it usually is which results in brain death. Yakumo was born with the full extent of this Keki Genke and that has given Murakumo hope that she can become a powerful shinobi with Genjutsu alone. Informed Minato which still made Tsunade doubt Yakumo's future skill. Furthermore, the Kurama clan were once a powerful clan that held great influence in the village, however their numbers and power have been greatly reduced over the years and not one of their shinobi is a janin. Their hopes and dreams lie with Yakumo who can probably bring the clan's power and influence back because of her keki Genke. Tsunade sighed heavily, although she still believed that it was pointless to do this as she believed that the still month old, Yakumo Kurama could become a formidable shinobi in her own right was preposterous because of her weak body but she would do it because she would go to the edge of the earth to help her own child. Fine, let's go and get this over with, said Tsunade crossing her arms underneath her sizable bust. Minato smiled and nodded to her where both he, Tsunade, Shizun and the hidden Kakashi traveled to the Kurama clan compound. The walk there was relatively quiet, nothing was really talked about during the walk and no one seemed to want to start a conversation. Shizun was a little nervous, since it felt like Tsunade and Minato would turn around and would start yelling at each other for no reason at all. But everything changed when Tsunade diverted from the group and made a beeline toward a ramen bar that was a little to their right, Shizuan and Minato were too focused on the walking to notice the fact that Tsunade was actually missing. When Minato finally noticed that the mother of his child was missing he became a depraved mess and started sweating profusely while his eyes were wide and white. Shizun was in a similar situation but was much more composed about it. The two spent a good five minutes looking for their traveling companion when they heard a familiar voice that sounded stuffed, ordering another bowl. They both looked to their right to see Suande sitting on a stool at a bar, with flaps. They also noticed that it was a ramen bar which seemed to sell all types of ramen. And there she was the blonde busty, pregnant, woman gulping down noodles with three empty bowls already beside her. Another shouted Tsunade with noodles stuffed in her mouth and chopsticks in her hands. Minato seemed to face fault at the woman and he wondered how long this would take, but knowing it was better to wait for Tsunade to finish or suffer her wrathful mood swings. So he sat down next to her and watched her while she gulped down the noodles with Shizun sitting next to him. Hours later Tsunade had yet to finish eating her ramen with now four stacks of empty bowls lying around her. She had seemingly demolished all the ramen that was given to her and more and she still looked like she was ready for more. She had just finished another ramen bowl, which was her 40th one, and ordered another. But the ramen cook who was a middle-aged man wearing a white robe and a chef's hat was staring at her with his arms crossed and a bewildered look on his face. I'm sorry miss but you just ate all our ingredients and we'll have to go and buy some more which will take a couple of hours, said the man with a large grin. Tsunade slurped up the last of the noodles and quickly nudged Minato to wake him up as he had fallen asleep while she was eating the ramen. Minato, you will pay the nice man, won't you? said Tsunade all too sweetly which made Minato sweat a little as he rarely saw that face and he knew that it was even dangerous to look at. You will pay the nice man, right? Right? said Tsunade with her eyes turning red and her voice becoming demonic sounding which made Minato's eyes go narrow and his lips to purse in fear. Please come back later, Ichiraku ramen is always open, yelled the ramen owner by the name of Tuchi who was currently pleased with the amount of profits he made, while Minato was silently crying over the fact that his wallet was now empty. Soon they arrived at the Kurama clan compound where they were escorted to the head of the clan Murakumo, who was waiting in a small room for the shinobi legend to arrive. When the three finally made it to the main house they found, they found Murakamo waiting, kneeling on a mat. Yandaimi, you honor me and my family for coming, greeted Murakumo who bowed in respect, and then his eyes landed on Tsunade and he was able to see her small baby bump from carrying the life inside of her. And to you, Tsunade-sama, congratulations. To which Tsunade smiled and also bowed a little, please have a seat. So tell me Murakumo-sama, first, tell me what ails your daughter, second, was she born with the illness or caught it from another? questioned Tsunade trying to understand what was afflicting Yakumo. It's a disease she was born with and it leaves her body frail and weak, my clan has stressed to me the fact that we have lost much of our power and they believe that Yakumo is the key to that success, spoke Murakumo informing Tsunade of what ailed Yakumo.
Tsunade bit her nail in thought. Tsunade sama? Questioned Shizun as whenever Tsunade bit her nail, it meant she was in deep thought and was trying to discern how to treat Yakumo. If she simply caught the disease, then I would be able to treat it easily, but since she was born with it, things have become much more difficult, I may not be able to treat it. Yes, that could work, said Tsunade, talking to herself, which helped her think on certain subjects. Have you discovered a way to treat her? questioned Murakumo while also Minato was waiting on the answer. Can you take me to her? I would like to give her a physical examination, asked Tsunade to which Murakumo agreed as it was quite reasonable and if it helped his daughter then it wouldn't hurt giving it a try. The Kurama clan head led his three guests through his humble house, towards his daughter's nursery where they found Murakumo's wife, Yuroko Kurama, sitting beside the young babe's crib. Welcome, said Yuroko bowing with respect to Tsunade and Minato, to which the two bowed back. Tsunade made her way over to the crib of the Kurama clan heiress and she found the baby sleeping peacefully, her little chest rising and falling ever so softly. It almost seemed like nothing could ruin this moment. For Tsunade, it reminded her of what she was expecting in the near future. To begin the examination, Tsunade softly hefted Yakumo from the crib, although the baby did show some annoyance it wasn't enough to wake her up to which Tsunade sighed thankfully. Tsunade then gestured for Yuroko to come over and hold her daughter while Tsunade went through hand seals for the Shosen no Jutsu, Mist Shilpam technique, so she could attain a full analysis of the baby's health. A few minutes have passed and Tsunade had learned all that she needed. Yuroko then handed over Yakumo to Tsunade who placed gently back in the crib, and the two women were happy that the baby hadn't woken and caused a fuss. For Tsunade, she wouldn't say it out loud but she would have liked to hold Yakumo some more whether it was curiosity, maternal instincts, or just because she liked it didn't really matter, since for Tsunade, she would have plenty of time to be doing that with her own baby once it's born. Well from what I learned from that, you don't have to worry, she won't be in any danger in the future unless she overexerts herself, and when she starts training to be a shinobi, I would have developed a special food pill that will boost her vitality and stamina allowing her to perform the bodily requirements of a shinobi although her taijutsu will probably be her worst field when it comes to her training. Said Tsunade smiling a little even though she was right, even with the pill Yakumo's body would still not be fit enough for taijutsu but just some training in that field and she would be alright. Thank you Tsunade-sama, said Yuroko bowing to the Senju leader along with her husband, and at that moment, Yakumo started to cry, loudly as babes usually did, causing her mother to fret and her father to sigh, as being parents was not an easy thing. Tsunade wondered whether her own child wouldn't be a handful while also being behaved and mature so they would be easier to handle. But she knew thinking like that would only make that scenario happen. Minato who had been watching Tsunade examining and holding Yakumo was truly a heart warmer for him, he could see the smile the blonde woman had. Not the smile of happiness but the smile only a mother could have, he could see that Tsunade was truly excited for the prospect of parenthood, and he was too despite not having custody over his soon-to-be-born baby. With the Kurama clan's needs and once achieved Minato, Tsunade and Shizun left the compound and the party went their separate ways. Shizun headed for the hospital so she could heal the wounded and assist with their duties. Minato went back to the Hokage Tower as he was still on duty and he wouldn't want to have Serutobi kill himself so he could escape that vile paperwork. While Tsunade headed for her home as she was feeling tired and under Minato's suggestion should get some rest as it would be good for her. In Kumogakir among the mountains and clouds the village was famous for, the people and its shinobi were milling about their days in relative peace which the other nations were also enjoying. Kumogakir was one of the more militaristic villages of the five nations, as you saw more shinobi than civilians and with two biju under their belt one being among the strongest of the tailed beasts they were easily considered the second strongest village among the elemental nations, with Konoha being stronger than they were, much to the chagrin of the rakages who govern the village. Right now the village's current rakage, the Sandame rakage by the name of Z, was currently lifting two 500 kilogram barbells, roughly 1,102 pounds. With ease as he was staring out at his village, the third was one of the most powerful shinobi in the world. Even Biju were afraid of facing him in battle and was on, of, the few to face on in battle single handedly. The others being the shinobi legends, Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha, whose might were so vast the two were recognized as the most powerful shinobis in the world that even the third, if given the chance, must just hesitate in facing them. 
Z was a tall, dark-skinned man with a large, muscular and well-defined build. He had a full head of white hair which flowed into his back along with a long beard. He had unusual eyes, which had green irides and dark sclerae and no pupils. His face had pronounced cheekbones and tear troughs beneath his eyes, and a prominent crease across his forehead with a mole just above his right eyebrow. His to lip also has a darker pigmentation than the bottom one. Upon his right shoulder he had a tattoo for the kanji of lightning, and following on of his battles with the hachibi. Eight tails. The third had a scar on his right torso of a lightning bolt. His typical attire was a kumobikure flak jacket with no other clothing underneath, a thick rope tied around his waist, with dark blue sweatpants. Rekaj Sama, we have received fascinating and shocking news, spoke the Rekaj's assistant, who was a light d kinned girl with brown hair. What's news? Question Z, the Rekaj, who was currently on his 500th representative. News has come from Konohagakure, that Tsunade Senju, one of the Densetsu no Sani, is currently with child, said the Ryokja's assistant calmly, but her words made Z stop in his workout and pause in his mind. A Senju heir, thought Z, utterly shocked at the news, the most powerful clan in the world, one feared and respected throughout the world as the Sen no Teo Matsu Ichizoku. The clan with a thousand skills, he couldn't believe it, he just couldn't. And more news has come from the village, that the Yandaimi Hokage, Minato Namikaze is the father. Continued the assistant as Z, whose brain was starting to shut down from the news, tried to just stay standing. And that moment, Z's son, a burst through his door with an equally shocked look on his face, obviously he too had just heard the news of the Senju heir. Dad! Have you heard? Shouted at his father who seemed to be gaping like a fish out of water. Rekaj Sama, what should we do? Questioned the girl as she looked at Leader. It seems almost too fictional to believe, thought Z as he kept staring out over his village. Ashisuto, is what we have heard from the village true? queried the burly man. It is, our most trusted contacts have confirmed it. Tsunade is currently three months pregnant with her child, said Ashisuto. Dad, what should we do? This child just might be the greatest threat to our village since the rampages of the Hachibi spoke with utter seriousness while also overestimating a being who had yet to be born nor will have the power to be a threat to the village for many years. There's nothing we can do, if we attack or kidnap Tsunade, Konoha will respond with violent action and we will be pulled into a war we cannot win, and I doubt Namikaze will be too forgiving regarding the fact that we would threaten his unborn child. Said Z acting as a rational leader and a wise one, he knew it would be years until the child could be any real threat, what kind of person would be afraid of a baby, a baby who had yet to be born yet, it was ludicrous. For now we wait, said Z, but dad, responded a trying to change his father's mind regarding the whole thing. Enough, eh, if you want to be rakage one day then you must have the wisdom to make the right decisions and predict the consequences of their actions. And unlike you or Kiri we don't seek war, but we do prepare for it, spoke Z berating his son while also giving him a lesson in leadership. In Sanagakure where the sun always blazed with intense heat and the winds carried the specks of dust and sand that would lash at you as if it was a whip. The Yandaimi case cage was currently sitting in his office, attending to the duties of the case cage, he had taken up office when his predecessor and teacher the Sandame case cage, disappeared without leaving even a hint of himself behind. The case cage had auburn hair, dark eyes which always depicted Widhaw stern look or a scowl. He wore a simple black jacket and pants nothing really that would make him stand out. The case cage was a stern man who was always placed the well-being of his village above his own needs and wants, even his own family, he had just been coping with the death of his wife who had only died just barely over a week ago, of course he mourned for her death for he loved her deeply even if he didn't show it. But still the village demanded that he be as stalwart and stoic as can be. He currently had a squad of his Anbu black ops, watching over his newborn son's crib, the Ichibi Jinchuriki. With the help of Chio, one of his villagers' elders, they were able to seal the beast inside his unborn son, a decision that would lead to the his son's premature birth and his wife's death. He had yet to console his own two children, his oldest child Tamari nor his oldest son Konkuro. He heard a knock at the door and ushered the person in without looking up from his paperwork, it was one of his Anbu and they were currently holding a folder which was addressed to the case cage. Kachi-sama, we received this letter addressed to you from Konoha, 
we have already decrypted its contents and it matches Konoha algorithms and codes, said the Anbu member placing the folder upon the Kachi, the case cage's desk. Kachi without saying anything opened the folder and inspected its contents, he found his eyes widening a little at the news, but still keeping up his stern facade he just placed the folder upon his desk to the side and kept on working. What did it say case cage sama? questioned the Anbu member. Tsunade of the Sanin is pregnant with the Yandaimi Hokage's child, grunted Kachi as he filed away at his papers. He wasn't at all afraid of he child, especially one that hasn't even been born yet. He and Konoha were allies now, if anything the birth of a new Senju heir may just be beneficial to Suna. Although he did have to wonder what kind of talent and potential the son of the Yandaimi and the legacy of the Shodem will bear, shall he be a almighty destroyer or a useful ally? It didn't really matter at the time. In Iwa, Onoki the Sandame Suchikage, reputed as the Ryodenban no Onoki, Onoki of both scales or the fence sitter, a man who was one of the few to live through all the three great shinobi world wars. A man both feared and respected Onoki ruled his village with utter surety and no other carried no love greater than any Suchikage for his village. Onoki is a very short man with a triangular beard and a mustache that has angular corners, a big red nose and thick eyebrows. The top of his head is completely bald a clear sign of old age, although he did have long white hair on the lower half of his head which is styled in a traditional Chanmage haircut, the back of which is tied with a yellow ribbon into a topknot. He also wore a green and yellow coat with a red collar, underneath he wears the flak jacket of his village but a light green color with mesh armor and a lapel of the side of his right leg. However Onoki was a man known for his underhanded tactics to ensure the prosperity of his village, this caused many in the shinobi in the world both ordinary ninja and cage alike to frown upon him, his village and his shinobi, who followed their leader's orders without hesitation or question, and if it meant abandoning their comrades for the success of the mission then that was divine will to them. However, Onoki was gritting his teeth and his eyes looked ready to pop out of his skull, what he had just read and heard caused rage to flow through him like a dam bursting forth from the pressure of water, his most hated enemy the one that cost him so many of his ninja's lives and the happiness of their families, was spawning his own right now. He had just discovered that, the, Tsunade Senju, granddaughter of the Shodem Hokage, the only Hokage Onoki openly respected. Tsunade was pregnant with the Yandaimi's spawn, the first thought that came to Onoki's mind upon hearing the news was to kill the child and make Namikaze suffer as everyone in Iwa had suffered from the man's crimes against his village and the war. However, Onoki didn't live this long if he was stupid, he knew that by attacking Tsunade, a clan leader of Konoha, then it would mean war between Iwa and Konoha, a war that was not needed and one they couldn't fight. Three powerful shinobi clans had joined Konoha and they also had Suna on their side and the Uchiha clan were especially feared, ever since Onoki's own encounter with their ancient leader, Madara Uchiha. Many people in his village had already heard the news and were just now, shouting for the unborn child's death along with hthe yandaimi but of course knowing the consequences forbade any in his village who were having ideas of heading to konoha and killing tsunade as he knew none of theme would survive but still he knew that the senju heir would be a danger in the future in kirigakir secrets and whispers were hidden in the mist a village governed under the iron rule of its mazukaj the yandaimi mazukaj yagura the village was known for its bloody graduations and civil wars that plagued their land and the harsh treatment of those with Keki Jenke. The village had changed little during that time and now, those with Keki Jenke were still hunted down like butchered animals some even paraded around with their bodies and limbs used as warnings to other Keki Jenke wielders. Many viewed Kirigakir and the land of water as a country full of savages and brutes, they never have compromises when it comes to government and they never engage in diplomacy. Many children where butchered form their graduation tests of in a class a few years ago was slaughtered by a single boy who wasn't even an academy student. Yagura, the Yandaimi Mizukage, was currently reading a report detailing information both important and scandalous to those who read it. Yagura was a small man with a youthful appearance with people commonly mistaking him as a child rather than a fully grown adult. He has a head of messy, light gray hair and pink, pupil-less eyes and a stitch-like scar running from under his left eye all the way down to his cheek. He wore a sleeveless, gray shirt with the Kirigakir Hite aid attached to the front and short-sleeved mesh armor underneath with a green poncho with a turquoise sash around his waist, paired with a green apron over his pants. 
He never would have guessed that someone like Tsunade Senju would fall pregnant with the child of the Yandaimi Hokage. Even the thought of Minato and Tsunade together having and raising a child was laughable and unrealistic while also unlikely, but since Tsunade was confirmed to be three months pregnant with the child and claiming Minato was the father was just proof that what happened, happened. However Yagura, was unaware of the shadow lurking behind him, also reading the report, this person was wearing a black kimono and black gloves with bandages underneath his body with a head of messy black hair. The shade of night and wore an orange mask with a flame-like pattern with a single eye hole where a red eye was visible and within the eye was three tomo circling it. Now this is an interesting development, a new senju, spoke the voice with nothing but malice and dark desires within it. In Konoha, a clan was having a meeting, one of the oldest clans in Konoha, if not one of the oldest in the world an immensely powerful clan that many feared facing in battle. A clan known for their talents in war and the prowess of their chakra which was extremely strong compared to other clans. This clan was gathering under one of their sacred shrines, a shrine that many in the Hidden Leaf Village were not aware of. Only during times of importance of war and other matters was the entire clan gathered together such as they are now, and very few knew of what secrets it truly hid. What must we do about this news? we will lose all the power in the village we have accumulated. What little we have left. The child is born from our old enemies, it may turn against us someday. But it is the child of the Hokage, it will mo likely be groomed to become Hokage in the near future. The people will rally behind it, just as they have done for that clan before. Silence. Yelled a voice that reverberated through the hall silencing the voices and dissent among them. Look at you, you the Uchiha scared and cowering under the threat of a child, an unborn one even more, have we ever feared a child? I ask you? spoke the voice which belonged to a man who was standing before a stone tablet with writing on it that was indecipherable to the naked eye. Only people with rather specific eyes could read what was on the tablet. The voice belonged to a man. This man had short black hair that reached his shoulders and onyx-colored eyes, with visible creases below them which became more pronounced when he adopted a stern look. He wore a war a standard Konoha flak jacket along with a black shirt with the Konoha military police force symbol on the shoulders, shin guards and a black, open front apron with white diamonds on the bottom. This man was Fugaku Uchiha, the current head of the Uchiha clan. Fugaku was a man who placed the needs of his clan above the needs of the village. Outwardly he looked like a strict fellow, however although he was strict, when not seen by others he was a loving man who had great love for his wife eldest son and his own soon-to-be-born child. His love for his clan was so great that he would do just about anything to ensure its well-being. However he was troubled by the news of a senju heir, one whose father was the Yandaimi Hokage. He suspected that the child would wield great influence within the village, probably more so than the Uchiha clan. Because the child's father was the Yandaimi a veteran of the Third Shinobi World War. His mother was the head of the Senju clan while also being descended of both the Shodem and the Naidame Hokage. And the child's potential was incredibly enormous given its lineage. As much as we love talking about the danger this child can warrant, our ancestors made peace with the Senju long ago and we founded this village with them. And among other things this child will of course be closely monitored by a unit of Anbu soldiers. There is nothing we can do except sit by and watch spoke Fugaku while his pregnant wife who was sitting within the crowd breathed a silent sigh of relief as if they did attack Tsunade it would lead the Uchiha to become distrusted among the village. So we do nothing as always, spoke another rude Uchiha. No we won't simply do nothing, if the child is female, then we will arrange a marriage between it and one of our own clansmen, strengthening the Uchiha, said Fuagku to reassure his clan. And if the child just so happens, to be a boy, then that plan is ed said another Uchiha and the meeting was concluded shortly after that. Time passed on, always moving forward and never backward, time almost seemed to suit Konoha, they were always moving forward, no matter what was thrown at them, they were always moving forward, maybe it was their indomitable will of fire, or they were just too stubborn to back down from a fight, but one thing that was certain was the fire in their eyes when they were protecting what was precious to them. The village was their family, their loved ones and their friends, Konoha shinobi were each other's brothers and sisters, the entire village was a large family and so the shinobi, even their hokage would fight to their last breath to protect that family and everything their village stood for. But there was one family that were enjoying themselves more than others. 
It had been three months since Tsunade had performed a medical checkup on Murakumo's baby daughter, Yakumo Kurama and things had seemed to settle down in the village regarding her package. People were milling about their days unhindered and unperturbed. Especially Tsunade, since worrying and stressing were the least amount of things she needed at the moment. The blonde woman had finally grown accustomed to the fact that a living being was growing inside of her and was nearly ready to join her when that time came. Her once small baby bump was now a large belly carrying the bundle of joy within her. She had been receiving frequent visits from her former teacher and mentor Hiruzen Serutobi and his wife Bawako Serutobi. It most likely came from the fact that Hiruzen became a father figure to her once her own father died during the First Shinobi World War, and as she remembered Serutobi and her father were rather close friends. And Bawako had been an extreme use of help and support, raising two boys herself. She knew exactly what being a mother was like, she helped her through the symptoms of the pregnancy such as the mood swings and the food cravings to which Tsunade had developed a rather unhealthy obsession for ramen as she couldn't get enough of the food now. And Bawako even told her of birth and what came after it, hoping to prepare the younger blonde-haired woman for the trials of motherhood which were difficult and arduous, but the rewards were well worth it. Even now Tsunade was already acting like an overprotective mother, caring as if her child was a fragile leaf that could break upon contact. Though one thing that Tsunade was not pleased about when it came to being a mother was her child's suitors, boyfriends and girlfriends alike. If she had a boy, she wanted the young man to find someone like her, someone who can put him in his place should he get out of hand or does something incredibly stupid, but at the same time, someone they can truly be themselves around. And if she was having a girl, she wanted a man who would look after her, as a person, her daughter could stand on her own two feet, but she there would come a time that she would need comfort from another. But if there was one thing she was dreading were her children having to be chased around by the bane of all kunoichis. Fangirls, sometimes boys. She would hate the day when her child would grow up to be quite a beautiful human being with her chasing off all the fangirls that would fawn over them. Her thoughts were broken when she heard the flapping of wings which originated from the sky and came swooping down. It was a flock of ducks which came flying at a location towards her. She was currently sitting near the edge of a small pond located in her clan's now empty compound, within her own mansion. The pond wasn't too big and it wasn't too small, it was just right and there was a small sakura tree to which she was sitting under and a small gazebo not too far to her left. Tsunade could remember the days she spent with her mother by the pond as her mother sang her lullabies and told her stories of the ventures of her father and grandfather. The pond was also a place where she could have fun with her grandfather, who spoiled her greatly as a child, something which she wouldn't do with her own child. The pond was home to many types of small life, to koi fish and small harmless crabs and nearly every week a flock of ducks would fly down and swim in the water of the pond. She was currently watching the birds play in the water and most of the ducks were only babies who were accompanied by their mother. Tsunade smiled at the sight, and she lovingly stroked her belly in delight. If only she had some bread with her so to feed the ducks and make this already beautiful even more perfect, for today was a special day for her. It was a day, special for her and only her. It was her birthday. August 2nd. Today she was 39 years of age, and she was surprised with herself, after what happened in her life she was slightly shocked that she had lived as long as she had. She wondered if anyone important seemed to have remembered her birthday, other than Shizune who gave her a nice book to read, but still, there must be someone. Minato was walking to the Senju clan compound for Tsunade's birthday, he had already chosen a gift for her, and he thought it was something that she would enjoy, he had spent a great amount of time and effort trying to decide on a present for the mother of his soon to be born child, but now he had finally decided on one. The blonde Hokage while walking to the compound saw Hiruzen just in the corner of his vision, walking with his wife and they too were holding presents. He smiled, knowing that it would bring Tsunade great comfort. But there was one thing that made his mind pause, someone who might or might not show up for Tsunade's birthday, someone who loved her unconditionally. A man who was also like a father to him. Jiraiya. He had sent a letter to his spymaster telling him of Tsunade's birthday, although he left out the information of Tsunade being pregnant. All the great nations were now aware of Minato's growing family and Jiraiya being as knowledgeable as he was, must know by now. Minato wondered what Jiraiya was feeling right now. Was he furious that Minato slept with the woman he loved most? Was he happy that his student who was like a son to him was going to be a father or was it a bit of both? There was also another person who he was concerned about, Kashina, his ex. Knowing her she would mostly be angry and when she was angry, 
she tended to get violent. Minato could only wish that Kashina would not cause trouble in the near future, hopefully. The Yandaimi had the Senju compound within his sights where Tsunade and the others were waiting for him. But there was one person who he was hoping to talk to and yet did not expect to see. Jiraiya was currently standing before the mansion holding a wrapped up, brown gift bound with twine. Minato stopped in his stride, he was a little hesitant to talk to his old master, would he be disappointed in him or would it be another feeling? Sensei. Said Minato catching Jiraiya's attention who turned his head to look at his old pupil. Minato, been a while. Said Jiraiya with a smile, although it was a warm greeting Minato hoped that things would go alright from then and onward. Sensei, I. Said Minato trying to start an awkward conversation with the toad sage. You don't have to say anything Minato, I know, said Jiraiya softly. Wait, aren't you angry at me, for I don't know, knocking up Tsunade. Said Minato genuinely surprised at how mature his sensei was being, it was really out of character for the super pervert. When I discovered Tsunade was pregnant with your child, I was angry. I wanted to march over here and beat your face into the ground, but that would cause more problems than solve them. I've loved Tsunade ever since we were genin, and I loved you as if you were my own son, and what the two of you did together, it made my blood boil. I felt betrayed. Confessed Jiraiya and every word that came out of his mouth was true, he was fueled by rage and jealousy towards Minato at first. But then I came to my senses, if I really loved Tsunade all I wanted was to make her happy, and if you gave her happiness, then I don't really have the right to whinge, don't I? Said Jiraiya grinning largely and happily. Thank you. Sensei. At least we got that down and out of the way. Said Minato sighing in relief that his sensei wasn't angry. Besides, Maybe someday I can take the little guy on a research trip, said Jiraiya giggling perversely and blushing a little. Don't let Tsunade catch you saying that, she might beat you into the ground for even thinking of corrupting our baby, and what makes you think it's a boy? questioned Minato, as he and Tsunade had decided not to discover the gender of the baby until it was born. Because she made a bet that the baby is going to be a girl, deadpanned Jiraiya. Great, I'm having a son said Minato happily and walking into the mansion. Tsunade always lost her bets. They soon found Bawako and Hiruzen waiting for them, they also invited Orochimaru but it was unlikely that he would appear. They walked around the house and found Shizune who led them to Tsunade who was still sitting by the pond rubbing her large belly. However something was wrong. Minato could see tears trailing down Tsunade's cheeks and staining her kimono which she was wearing for the occasion. Minato took the initiative and approached Tsunade. Tsunade, is everything all right? Is the baby all right? questioned Minato as he was now kneeling beside the blonde haired woman. Said woman snapped her head to the left to see Minato with a worried look on his face. Tsunade, regaining herself, wiped away her tears with the sleeve of her kimono and adopted a smile. Everything's fine. It's just, the baby is kicking. She said softly, feeling soft and tiny kicks of their baby. The little one had been kicking for a little while and threw out it. Suande had cried out of sheer happiness, just even more proof that she was going to be a mother and every day that passed she grew more excited at the prospect. Minato finding Tsunade's smile infectious, smiled with her and he placed his hands upon her tummy trying to feel the baby's kicks. And he could feel the soft kicks and he knew, that being a father, was one of the most rewarding things in the world. What's that you have there? queried Tsunade as she laid her eyes on the package Minato was holding. The blonde-haired man handed the package over to Tsunade who opened it carefully, and what she saw made her gasp. It was a photo book, and upon the front cover was the words. Family, Tsunade opened the book only to see that every page was blank. It's empty, stated the blonde-haired woman. Then we just have to fill it, said Minato sitting down next to her. Tsunade looked back down at the book and silently wept. She knew now that the book had a purpose of storing pictures of them and their child, so to remember the memories they would have. The Senju clan head, had never received such a gift before and this showed that Minato cared enough for her and their baby and that was what was making her cry. Don't forget forget us, said Hiruzen with Bawako and Jiraiya following after him. Hiruzen and Bawako gave Tsunade a small blanket with the Senju clan symbol, Konoha's symbol and the kanji for, fire, on it and Tsunade loved it every detail of it, it was the purest expression that her baby was also a child of the village and would be loved by the villagers also. 
Jiraiya gave Tsunade his bound gift, and when she opened them she was felt nothing but joy, it was two toys, one of them a fluffy bunny and the other a white, plush Asian dragon, for the baby to play with. And without asking Jiraiya responded with, every kid needs a good toy. And then came a surprise visit from Kakashi who was watching over all over them in the shadows, he was currently wearing his Anbu attire and his mask was still on his face. The young silver-haired young man didn't say anything other than pull out a pair of woolly bunny pajamas that were blue in color. Tsunade took them out of his hand and just awed them for a moment, the first picture she was going to take and but in the photo book was going to be her baby wearing these pajamas so she could embarrass any girlfriends or boyfriends, even grandchildren in the near future. Thank you Kakashi, said Tsunade to which she got up and kissed the Anbu member on the cheek well the mask's cheek but you get the idea. And thankfully for Kakashi he was wearing two masks so he could hide his blush, of course he was 13 years old so it wasn't odd and he was kissed by a beautiful woman so it was normal. Then Shizune came around the corner carrying a cake she had been baking the entire day. Time for the cake, she said happily, and everyone seemed to notice that the cake had 39 candles upon it, obviously referencing Suad's age. The cake was white and tasted like vanilla with buttercream frosting, Tsunade's favorite. A few hours of drinking later, although Tsunade wasn't allowed to have sake, much to her annoyance, the happy family went their separate ways although Jiraiya and Tsunade to have a conversation and she was a relief that Jiraiya didn't harbor any negative feelings towards her, Minato or their baby. However there was one person who came around to her mansion, someone she did not expect to see. Currently Suande was by her pond feeding the ducks that would take residence within the water and the koi fish that were swimming around joyously. Tsunade could feel a shadow, approaching, and she could feel jealousy writhe from this person, there was only one who could be here walking into her home bringing such negative emotion with them. Tsunade turned her head to the right to see Kashina Uzumaki, standing there with a stoic face and in her casual attire. Tsunade already had a good guess as to why she was here, and unlike Jiraiya who endured no matter what was thrown at him, Kashina was not so easily enduring. Kashina, how can I help you? said Tsunade trying to maintain a facade of positivity and helpfulness. I came to talk, stated the woman bluntly, as she faced the older blonde, and don't say, talk about what, as I think we both know what I'm talking about. Tsunade sighed at the redhead. She knew that the day would come when Kashina would confront her over the debacle between Tsunade and Minato. I want to know your feelings regarding Minato, asked Kashina with a steely gaze which made Tsunade raised her eyebrows at the woman but then narrowed them at the sheer contempt she was showing within her eyes. I, love him, but only as the father of my child, nothing more, said Tsunade answering Kashina's question. Are you sure about that, since you allowed him to knock you up? Deadpanned Kashina he kept glaring at Tsunade. That entire thing was an accident, it was an accident yes, but not one I regret, said Tsunade rubbing her tummy in admiration and protectiveness. And I don't see why you care. You broke up with Minato before we even discovered I was pregnant. So why are you still harboring feelings for him? Why should I tell you, it doesn't involve you? Retorted Kashina, and it was strange seeing the naturally kind and cheerful woman, this bitter and jealous. And why should I tell you what happened between Minato and myself? It doesn't involve you, snarled Tsunade, using Kashina's own words against the red head. We may not love each other nor are we married but it doesn't excuse the fact that he moved on. So as soon as Minato is done with me he moves on to you, the beautiful granddaughter of the Shodem Hokage. Of course he would go after you, said Kashina crossing her arms. You also forget that I'm just as much Uzumaki as are you. Mito was my grandmother, and you weren't the only one mourning after she died, said Tsunade, stating her clan origins with not just the Senju but Uzumaki also. Don't bring Mito-sama into this warned Kashina as it was Mito who provided her with everything she needed in Konoha and more. I can because she's my grandmother, not yours, grunted Tsunade at the red head. Things were starting to heat up between the two Kunoichi and Kashina was intentionally tapping into the Kiyubi causing Kashina's eyes to become blood red with slits for pupils. Tsunade seeing the eyes widened them in disbelief as she knew of things such as Jinchuriki and Biju and now that she thought about it, Kashina was the perfect host for the Kiyubi. Why did you even keep it, I never would have expected you to actually want a child, said Kashina rudely, however this struck the wrong chord with Tsunade as the blonde woman's eyes became immediately enraged. 
You can insult me and Minato all you like, but if you insult my baby, I will put you down. Warned Tsunade not afraid of facing Kashina. And you were the one who got Minato drunk in your own office, it almost sounded like you wanted him to you. Accused Kashina, however Tsunade was unaffected by the accusation even though it wasn't true it didn't bother her, but hearing that reaction, Tsunade knew there was an ulterior motive to what Kashina was saying. This isn't about the pregnancy or me having sex with Minato said Tsunade understanding Kashina's motives and reasons and she knew she hit jackpot when Kashina's eyes returned to their original violet color. But I, stuttered Kashina trying to form tangible words. You're angry over the fact, that I've made him happier in the last six months than you at the time when he proposed to you, said Tsunade where Kashina widened her eyes in surprise. Don't think you know what makes him happy, growled Kashina, whose eyes returned to their slitted blood red. You don't know anything about him. Tsunade feeling the air become denser and danger encroaching upon her, decided it was a good time to back down and try to calm Kashina before thing became out of hand. Kashina, I think you should calm down. Just take a deep breath and calm down, said Tsunade shielding her protruding belly and placing an arm in front of her reassuringly trying to calm Kashina. How can I keep calm, when you stole everything from me? yelled Kashina as she unleashed a torrent of the Kiyubi's chakra which arced out around her like a shockwave. Tsunade didn't have enough time to run, dodge or even move, before she was struck in the stomach by the wave of foul chakra, and the hand that was shielding her belly was burned and scarred from the mighty power. As a result Tsunade fell to the ground on her side writhing in pain and fear from the corrosive nature of the chakra. Shizun who had heard the shout ran around the corner to see her master on the ground clutching at her stomach with tears falling from her eyes. Tsunade-sama! shouted Shizun frightened for her master and her baby. Shizun reached into her robes and pulled out a three-pronged kanai with a seal formula on it where she channeled chakra into it and barely half a second passed before Minato suddenly appeared before Shizun with a worried expression on his face. And the first thing he was squirming on the ground in agony and horror and he saw Kashina with red slitted, red eyes and it didn't take him long to piece together what had transpired. Rushing over to Tsunade at top speeds he hefted the wounded blonde woman carefully in a bridal position. Tihi, tee the baby! whimpered Tsunade who was crying freely at the thought of losing her child. Kashina seeing Tsunade's tears and worried expression knew what had happened. She had lost control for only a split second and it was enough to nearly kill Tsunade. I it was an accident, I swear I. She never got to finish her question as Minato didn't even look at her and instead teleported Shizun and Tsunade away from the Senju compound and to the hospital where they could treat her as soon as possible. Kashina was left alone in the small park in the compound by the pond and even the ducks that had nestled by the water were flying away from her, even the birds were disappointed in her. When Minato and Shizun with a wounded Tsunade in tow, teleported to the hospital they were immediately shouting for Bawako Serutobi to assist them. When Bawako heard the shouting she rushed around the corners of the hospital to find Minato in a frenzied state and Tsunade crying and panting in pain and terror. Without hesitation or stupid comments Bawako found a room where they could treat Tsunade and possibly save the baby, although Minato was forced to leave the room because he would be a distraction, something he agreed with. So he waited for hours on end, outside the hospital room waiting for any news of Tsunade to come, but things were quiet, and the quiet put the hokage on edge, he didn't know if his CHLD was still alive at this point, he was so disgusted with how Kashina acted and how she put people in danger, the Kiyubi looks for any negative emotion to feed on so it could escape its confines and destroy the village which had imprisoned it. It would most likely kill Tsunade, Kashina and the Uchiha clan for their relations to the founders. Hashirama Senju, Mito Uzumaki and Madara Uchiha, the ones who specifically jailed and contained it. He knew those three people were among the many that the Kiyubi hated most. But Kashina lost control, even for a second the demon fox could have taken out its rage upon the village, the volatile power of the fox that even the Shodem Hokage, who was unable to kill the fox as its power was far too fearsome. However, the seal wasn't broken, only weakened, it may pose a problem in the future but right now the situation could be handled. Three hours had passed and Minato was still waiting outside the hospital room for any news. By his side was Hiruzen who had heard what happened and dashed his way to the hospital. The third was also worried about Tsunade and the baby, it was troubling news and apparently from what Minato told him, the Kiyubi's poisonous chakra had struck Tsunade's womb and may have killed the child inside of her. 
And if that did happen, Hiruzen could foresee Tsunade falling into an even greater depression, worse than her sorrow for the losses of Dan and Nawaki. A depression she would never heal from and would inadvertently drink herself to death from the heartbreak, something which Serutobi never wanted for Suande. He could only hope for the best now and trust in his wife and Shizun's medical prowess. And finally what seemed like forever the door to the room opened and out came Bawako who was currently rubbing the sweat off her forehead from the stress of the operation. Minato seeing Bawako leave the room jumped out of his seat followed by Hiruzen. Bawako, is everything all right? Is the baby all right? asked Minato desperately. Hiruzen also wished to know as he had to force himself to not bite his nails. Everything is fine. She stated with a smile which also made Hiruzen and Minato smile in relief. We were quite lucky, if she hadn't had arrived at the hospital any later the baby would have surely died. Said Bawako which almost made Minato faint, but it seems his moniker of the Kiroi Senko, Yellow Flash, pulled through after all. So what exactly happened? Questioned Hiruzen. The backlash from the Kiyubi's chakra was poisonous. The worst amount of damage came in the form of Suad's hand where she was cradling her stomach. It suffered multiple burns which, with enough healing, will disappear in time, although a small amount hit her stomach where it infected the baby, because of its weak body and undeveloped chakra the horrendous power of the Kiyubi nearly overwhelmed it and would have destroyed its cells quickly had we not intervened. However we were able to heal the damage, the severity done to the cells and the constant creation of new cells have shortened its natural lifespan said Bawako sadly. How much has it been shortened? questioned Minato. Unkown, but given the fact that the child is of Uzumaki and Senju descent means it would have a great life force and longevity, said Bawako trying to ease the Hokage's nerves. She is right, Mito Uzumaki, Tsunade's grandmother lived well before the founding of the hidden villages and lived through most of my reign as Sandame Hokage and she still looked like she was 60, she didn't have a single white hair on her head either said Hiruzen. If the child has inherited any of its ancestors' famous longevity then I doubt not much of its life has been shortened. Like I said before, only a small amount of the Kiyubi's chakra harmed the child, retorted Bawako. Minato seemed to sigh in relief at the news, he didn't care if his child's life was shortened so long as it was still alive. And how is Tsunade? queried Minato. She's currently resting. The stress of this whole ordeal has taken a great toll on her and her body needs rest and healing so to recover from the Kiyubi's chakra, but other than that, she will be fine. Women are stronger than men after all. Said Bawako with a sly wink. And that's something I'd admit in a heartbeat and also not something I can contest to either. Thought Hiruzen with a small sweat drop. So with all that drama done and over with, everything settled down, although Minato would have a talk with Kashina later on regarding her actions and her jealousy. Later Tsunade was released from the hospital after her recovery and was subjected to enormous doting from Minato who worried for her every action, much to her chagrin. And the events surrounding what happened were kept secret so to not allow the village to become head over heels in panic and turmoil at the knowledge of a Jinshuriki in their midst. And the fake story as to why Tsunade was in at the hospital in critical condition was, she fell. Although when Danzo and the other elders heard of the news they were less than pleased to hear of the near loss of the Senju heir and the escape of the Kiyubi. But still after the incident, Bawako classified the rest of Tsunade's pregnancy as a high-risk pregnancy as there may be some adverse side effects to the baby being exposed to the Kiyubi's chakra and she was under constant guard and watch by a team of Anbu members and the reason Kakashi wasn't there to protect her because his childhood friend Guy who had somehow found him challenged him to one of his challenges and was continuing to bother him while the silver-haired Anbu was officially on duty and had to protect Tsunade as per his mission. Needless to say, Guy also received a ton lashing from his self-appointed rival. So for the next few months things were peaceful, however, no one in the village could predict the dark motives of a dark individual hiding in the shadows. This figure was moving the pieces on the board and disaster was going to follow in his wake with great loss following after him like a loyal dog. Would anyone be safe from the lingering cycle of hatred? It had been been a month since Tsunade was hospitalized by Kashina's chakra outburst. Strong action was taken against Kashina, with her shinobi duties being suspended for a short amount of time. Tsunade begrudgingly forgave the Uzumaki but still had a bit of a grudge against her. Kashina was remorseful over what happened, she was ashamed of herself for acting up that way and disregarding Mito's teachings, that a vessel must be filled with love to tame the hatred of the beast. 
She was even more ashamed of the fact that because of her she harmed Mito's only living family. Minato had forgiven Kashina, although it took some time for him to actually accept Kashina's apology and let bygones be bygones. At least his child was still alive and Suande would recover from the experience. Hiruzen was meanwhile was able to settle things between the two women and calm the people who were worrying over Tsunade's health and safety. But he also had much planning that needed to be done. Tsunade was inching closer to her due date, when the baby would be born, and Bawako, his wife, had classified the blonde-haired woman's pregnancy as high-risk pregnancy, so things must be handled carefully, and because the unborn child was exposed to the Kiyubi's chakra unseen circumstances may occur that could potentially spiral down to disaster. Hiruzen wanted the child to be born, so they could make their mother and father happy, even more so that the child very presence within their mother. He also made a silent promise to both parents that he would protect the child should anything happen, the baby may even have the power that Kinkaku and Ginkaku commanded, the two Kumo shinobi who killed the Naidame Rakage and almost killed the child's ancestor, the Naidame Hokage. So right now he and Bawako were going to meet with Tsunade and Minato to discuss the birth and what precautions must be taken to ensure the baby's life and safety. Hiruzen couldn't shake this feeling, it almost as if he was standing next to a black sun, burning hot and full of shadow. He could feel this malicious will in the air, it almost felt like it had a purpose, to take something away, and bring loss and grief to all. There were very few times Hiruzen had this feeling. The first time was when he and his team were surrounded by the Kinkuku unit during the first Shinobi World War, that time he and Danzo were going to volunteer themselves to be a sacrifice so their teammates could escape but the his mentor, Toborama Senju, made the decision to be the sacrifice. The second time was during the third Shinobi World War. Konoha was on its hands and knees in defeat and Hiruzen was losing his loyal Shinobi left and right because of the then superior might of Iwa. And the Black Sun trailed the Hokage all that time, and it was only because of the efforts of Minato, winning the war and securing victory for Konoha, did the burning sensation of the Black Sun disappear, but now he was feeling it again, and when he felt the Black Sun, just like how Tsunade always won her bets, something unforeseen and destructive would follow, he just couldn't shake the feeling of the Black Sun. Bawako knowing that her loving husband had yet to say or look at her, knew exactly what he was feeling, and she knew that something was coming something that not even a Hokage could perceive. But she also knew, that the black sun was only a sign of terrible events happening but what would come after it were positives that could shape lives, it was only the black moon that she was afraid of. But still Hiruzen, he could feel hatred in the air and in the water that he drunk, on his skin, was this the hatred of the Kiyubi or something else? Would Minato defend his family from this hatred or would he fall trying to protect them? Either way Hiruzen knew that a father's will to protect their family was among the strongest forces in the world, but it was the mother that was truly scary and if Tsunade was the mother, it's as suicide as punching a bear in the nose and not expecting to be shredded apart. The thought of a protective and most likely lethal, Tsunade, sent shivers down Hiruzen's spine, he could scare her with her temper since she was a child and he was still afraid of her now. And he knew that he was going to be the farthest away from Tsunade during the birth and will quite possibly snap Minato in two during the birth. But for Minato he was expected to be there since he was the father, Hiruzen pitied the blonde man a little. But still there were perks to being at the birth, such as holding the defenseless child in your arms, completely dependent on their parents until they were ready to stand on their own two feet and would handle the world themselves, though there would come a day where the child would lose its innocence, mainly if it became a shinobi. The potential the child would exhibit could make even Danzo froth at the mouth form just thinking about it. If it was a monster like its own great grandfather then Danzo would kill to have that kind of power under his belt. Hiruzen was not fool enough to believe the excuses Danzo would make to cover his trail and any other underhanded tactics that he would use to his advantage. Homura and Kaharu would even support him if the baby exerted any potential of its parents and ancestors. Even now Hiruzen, with mastery of all five nature transformations would admit that he was still inferior to the prowess of the Shodem Hokage. Although he was sure he could still trump the Naidame Hokage. The Sandame now had the Senju compound in his view where he would discuss with Tsunade and Minato the circumstances of the Senju heir's birth. So now they were sitting in a room perfect for the occasion, in front of him was Tsunade, who was seven months pregnant, and Minato who looked a little nervous, probably worrying over bad news that wouldn't come. Tsunade had also adopted a worried face, most likely, just the same as Minato, 
was worrying over the encroaching birth of her future heir. Tsunade, as you know full well what will happen in less than two months. Said Hiruzen stressing the fact of the birth, the elders and the clan heads have emphasized the importance of this delivery. They want the new Senju heir to be healthy and strong and, when you are undergoing labor, that everything is perfect and, and there are no complications, some say it's for the future strength of the village while others are wishing for your happiness, but I'm afraid of I have to agree with them, after what happened with Kashina, your child was exposed to the chakra of the Kiyubi no Yoko, there may already be complications because of that. Danzo has advocated several chosen Anbu members, Anbu from Root, to be your midwives while also a squad will act as your protection during the birth. However I know his scheme, so instead I informed the council that I had already chosen midwives and a select few personal guards to act as protection, Anbu members under my direct command and are immensely loyal to me and Minato. Clarified Hiruzen over a meeting between the clan heads and the elders, he almost laughed when he saw Danzo's face at having lost his prize. Besides Danzo almost seemed like a person who would rip babies away from their mothers. Thank you sensei. Said Tsunade gratefully, at least she would not have Danzo's lackeys watching her every move, although the squad of Anbu and the chosen midwives were non-negotiable. She would have liked to have Shizun help deliver her baby but her schedule had been damning this entire time and she would be unable to help with the delivery, although Tsunade was a little disappointed at that, she knew that Shizun wasn't always at her beck and call. For extra safety precautions, I have chosen a location, a little outside the village but not too far away where you can give birth in relative peace and safety. With Danzo leaking information of the baby it has all the clan heads wary of the other villages. Even now, the Senju clan's power and influence as well as their legacy have not been forgotten by today, many clans would like nothing more than to revitalize the Senju clan within their own village, even Onoki would love nothing more than to have the most powerful clan in the world under his thumb. Continued Hiruzen. Bawako will be one of your midwives, she has experience and knowledge on baby delivery, her assistance will be of utmost help, and an Anbu medic by the name of Taji will be assisting her. We already have the Anbu unit on standby and the location has already been prepped for the delivery, we even sealed the location with a powerful barrier should anyone defeat the Anbu outside. Assured Bawako, easing some of Tsunade's tensions. This seems like overkill, that many precautions for an unborn child, said Tsunade bewildered at what she was hearing. Unfortunately, while I was able to negotiate a compromise with the protection guard and the midwives, the elders insisted on a barrier to be set during the birth, said Serutobi which made Tsunade sigh a little. Well I don't really have a choice do I, said Tsunade asking a rhetorical question, she then felt a felt a warm pressure on her hand and looked to the left to see Minato giving her a spirit lifting smile which calmed her more, at least the father would be there to see it through. Kakashi won't breath a word of this to anyone, since I know he's listening right now. Right Kakashi? Said Minato calling out to Kakashi. Said Anbu member appeared out of nowhere and said, Yes, Minato sensei, before disappearing again without a trace. Well it seems everything has been sorted so, all we can do now is wait. Said Minato. With a happy smile and Tsunade smiled with him too, she was going to be something which she always dreamed of being and the package that would be delivered would not be too far away. So have you thought of names yet? Questioned Bawako as she was curious to know the name of the new Senju heir coming into the world. If it's a girl, we'll call her Sabomi, it seems fitting for her in Tsunade's words. And if it's a boy, we'll call him, Naruto, the name of the main character in Jiraiya Sensei's first novel, that isn't smut. Said Minato speaking for both himself and Tsunade. When Minato had discovered that Tsunade had bet on the gender of the child, he was of course exasperated from the thing, as the baby was undoubtedly a boy, given Tsunade's gambling luck and any bet in particular, so it was a boy, ruining the surprise for Minato. And Tsunade was adamant that the baby would be a girl, so much as she had already gone and decided upon a name, while Minato had chosen Naruto from Jiraiya's novel, one of his favorites and would hope that his own son would be like the character in the book. Wonderful names they are. Said Hiruzen happy for both parents. But still it was going to be a boy, since Tsunade had bet on a girl, he would have to tell Jiraiya and anyone else in the village to bet on a boy, since people were betting one which sex the Senju heir would be. So Hiruzen might as well cash in all his money on a boy, since he had just won the bet. It's best if you prepare yourselves, for when the time comes, expect anything to happen regarding this birth. 
said Bawako with her and Hiruzen leaving the Senju clan compound leaving Tsunade and Minato alone. I still can't believe that the baby is almost here, said Minato with a smile, and for Tsunade it was the same thing, she was eagerly counting down the days until its arrival, it would be surreal for her, not being pregnant since she had grown used to it, she would sometimes wake up from her naps because the little one within kept kicking her, and with each passing day the kicks would become stronger and stronger, it was just like her child to be strong, like her. However, she was also scared. Because of Danzo leaking word to the other villages it means her child will always be a target for other shinobi of the villages. They would either kidnap the child or kill it so it wouldn't become a threat to them in the future, but so long as Minato and herself were alive, it would make their enemies pause in their attempts, as both were highly regarded as the strongest of their fields. But still, her life will not become easier once the baby was born. Two months later Bawako and Tsunade were heading to the location where the baby would be born. It was a long walk and an annoying one for Bawako as Tsunade was slow because her belly was now huge and the blonde would complain about her making her shoulders stiff. Bawako was slightly surprised that Tsunade didn't keel over and fall to the ground from all the weight she was carrying. To Bawako's knowledge Minato and the squad of Anbu were already at the location, waiting for them and Bawako was no pushover when it came to being a kunoichi, she could more than handle protecting Tsunade from any threat that would harm them on the way to the location. Hiruzen had stayed behind at the Hokage Tower, tending to Minato's duties because of the blonde man preparing for the birth. Although the Sandame did grumble about paperwork he was quickly silenced by a glare from his wife. But still, Hiruzen told Bawako that the Black Sun was still trailing the retired Hokage, for whatever reason the Black Sun was following after Hiruzen it meant that something was going to happen, but still Bawako stressed that nothing would happen and everything would go right as Rain and Tsunade's child will enter the world without complaint. How much longer are we going to walk? My feet are sore. Questioned Tsunade as she rubbed her sore shoulders. Because of the pregnancy Tsunade's had swelled with milk so to feed the baby when it was born, so her already large were even bigger, something Jiraiya commented on saying that if Tsunade's got any bigger she wouldn't be able to move let alone stand, unfortunately at the time Tsunade had heard him and he spent the next two mods in intensive care eating through a drip and having Minato constantly saying, told you not to say anything about her. But throughout the pregnancy Tsunade had a happy glow around her, she smiled more and she was kinder to those around her, Bawako knew this glow all too well, as she had that certain glow shen she was pregnant. A couple of hours at the pace we're traveling at, answered Bawako with a stalwart face as she was mildly annoyed with her husband's former student. How come she had to be the one escorting Tsunade, the woman was as cranky as a shark with a toothache. Although Bawako did understand a little of what Tsunade was feeling, as she was very cranky when she was pregnant with her two boys and her husband had to take her abuse such as the mood swings and food cravings. But can't Minato just, I don't know, reverse summon us with Hiraishin and we can be there quicker? Moaned Suande in annoyance, but with those words did Bawako stop in her stride with her eyes overshadowed by her hair and a dark aura to surround her. Why didn't you think of that sooner? yelled Bawako to Tsunade where the brown-haired woman's became bloody red and glowing while her teeth became fangs. Tsunade recoiled a little from the yelling in exasperation. No it really wasn't her fault that she failed to think of that. Oh come on, we have a long walk. Despite the walk, Snod was still excited, well except for the labor pains that came with childbirth, she would be able to continue the Senju clan just as her ancestors wanted her to, even the village had been wanting a Senju heir for some time. The council and the clan heads wanted her to bear strong children so to continue the mighty clan's legacy, although she had been rather stubborn and refused nearly every man that wished to win her affection. It was just after the death of Dan did she refuse, but still, she couldn't kill a baby before it was born, as a medic and a mother it just wasn't part of her nature. Although still scandalous she would never get rid of the child nor would she abandon it, the only way she could abandon her child was if she was forced to to protect its life, that was the only reason why. She would go any distance for her child, even if it meant death, that was part of her nature. She was even already making plans to take her child to her clan's house on a beach on the land of fire. Her grandfather and father would take her there sometimes when they had the time, before the first shinobi world war, before all that death. Even now she still remembered the great war as if it was yesterday. She would always fear for her father when he would go and fight on the battlefields against the other villages, both her grandfather and father perished during those times, 
and the Shodem Hokage and his son along with the other shinobis who fought and died for their village were given a proper burial, although her grandfather was still able to fell many of their enemy back then with little to no trouble. After her grandfather's death her granduncle, Toborama Senju was installed as the Naidame Hokage, he was able to thin out a shaky armistice between the villages so they could recover from their losses, but the world was still embroiled in the First World War. Toborama also developed Konoha's organizational system, and also established May organizations within the village such as the academy, Anbu, the Chunin exams and the military police force which he handed over to the Uchiha clan. And he died also and her teacher Hiruzen Serutobi became the Hokage and now Minato, the father of her child was also Hokage, it can be said that her child had Hokage blood flowing through their veins. She was so engrossed with her thoughts that she didn't notice a black-haired woman carrying a bundle walking in front of her. Tsunade barely stopped herself from bumping into her but was able to get her footing at the last minute. She then saw that the woman was Makoto Uchiha, the wife of Fugaku Uchiha, the head of the Uchiha clan and military police force. Oh, hello Makoto. Greeted Tsunade politely and fully seeing the bundle within the black-haired woman's arms. Tsunade could make a small head of black hair and two tiny, pudgy arms. Good day Suande sama, said respectfully and bowing a little to the Senju clan head, and to you as well Bawako sama. What brings you out here today? asked Bawako with a happy smile. Just running some errands today, and taking this little on here for a tour of the village, said Makoto looking down upon the small babe in her arms. Tsunade and Bawako also looked down to see Makoto's three-month-old baby open his eyes revealing coal orbs but also a hint of innocence in them. Oh did you have a girl? questioned Tsunade as she poked the baby's cheek and adored the feeling of it. No, it's a boy, his name is Sasuke, answered Makoto still staring down at her youngest son. Ow, the name of my husband's father, said Bawako a little surprised at that fact. Yeah. We gave him that name in hopes that he would become a great ninja like his namesake," replied Makoto explaining the origin of the baby's name. Well, maybe when I have my little girl the two of you can be the best of friends," said Tsunade smiling gleefully. Knowing her luck, it's a boy already," thought Makoto and Bawako with a sweat drop. And they also wondered that if Tsunade wanted a girl she should have bet on a boy instead, but it was too late now. Well, I do hope all goes well with the birth voiced Makoto extending her good wishes onto Tsunade. Thank you, goodbye cutie, said Tsunade as she rubbed the tuft of black hair Sasuke had. And with that all three women left to go their own ways, Makoto went straight for the Uchiha compound while Saunde and Bawako were working their way towards the safe location where the busty, blonde could give birth. By the way, if you have labor pains, keep your voice down and make sure the baby doesn't come out, said Bawako annoyed at the thought. Um okay. At the Konoha Cemetery, Kakashi Hitaki, only surviving student of the Yandaimi Hokage, Minato Namikaze, was currently standing before the tombstone of his teammate, Rin Nohara. Even to today, Kakashi carried with him a cloud of depression at the losses of his teammate Rin and Obito Uchiha, they had died during the Third Shinobi World trying to protect their village from the invading forces of the other villages. Obito died when bolds came crashing down upon him and Rin. Kakashi would have died there if it wasn't for Obito pushing him out of the way to save his friend. And the Uchiha even gave him a parting gift, the Sharingan, the powerful and renowned Keki Jenke of the Uchiha clan. Obito gave it to him as a way to better protect Rin and his comrades and friends, making Kakashi the first person outside of the clan to wield the Keki Jenke. However, despite the power the Sharingan granted him, Kakashi still was unable to protect Rin where he killed her with his own jutsu chidori piercing her heart and effectively killing her. That time had left Kakashi traumatized for a long period, and he would often wake up during the night in a cold sweat and would continue to wash the hand that killed Rin, trying to rid himself of the imaginary blood on his hand. Kakashi had tried to suppress those emotions that would hinder him as a ninja. Minato, his teacher, had tried to help Kakashi rid himself of the pain by inducting him into the Anbu. It worked for a time but still the emotions were there, so Minato instead had Kakashi protect Tsunade, who was pregnant with his first child, for the remaining time for the pregnancy. And Minato was able to see a change in Kakashi, the aura the masked ninja gave was slightly lighter, less dark. Maybe it was the right decision to have Kakashi protect Tsunade. So now, here Kakashi was standing before Rin's grave, 
happier than he has ever been in a while, though no less disconnected. Sorry that I haven't seen you in a while, it's not like I had forgotten about you, Minato sensei's son, is going to be born soon, although Tsunade, the mother bet on a girl, so it's a boy. If you're wondering, yes, I can speak of this freely this, since everyone in the village knows, a new generation who won't be born to the sins of war but relative peace and harmony. If only we're that lucky, if only we were born later. Minato sensei is excited, I've never really seen him smile that much except around Kashina. Tsunade is also excited. I wish I could tell you more, but I have to go tell Obito, he'd want to know too. Said Kakashi as he slowly walked out of the cemetery towards the memorial stone where Obito's name was carved into, a hero of Konoha. But unbeknownst to Kakashi there was a dark presence trailing his shadow. The presence was a black cloak man who was walking up to the tombstone rin where the he stared at it for a couple of seconds. He then grasped the flowers in the pots by the headstone and discarded them almost like it was an insult to the person lying in the grave. Kashina meanwhile was walking down the street, it was near the due date for Tsunade birth and she was still guilty over what happened months ago, luckily most of the information surrounding the incident was kept under lock and key, although Minato and the elders were less than pleased at what happened. She almost killed a person, and it was Mito that taught her that Jinchuriki have to be filled with love to temper the hatred of their respective tailed beast. She walked down an alley on her way to her apartment where she would spend the rest of the day since her shinobi license was currently suspended, as punishment for almost killing Tsunade, she's lucky that she was still a shinobi to begin with. However she then felt a sharp jolt against the back of her neck and her eyelids became heavy and she faded into unconsciousness where the world became dark around her. My god it hurts! Screamed Tsunade at the top of her lungs as she was in labor. She had gone into labor a little over two hours ago and the pain was already unbearable for her, it almost felt like she was being split in half. Push Tsunade, push! said Bawako who remained clam throughout the wild thing. Her assistant Taji was currently helping out in any way she could. Minato meanwhile was currently backed into a corner he had at first been at Tsunade's side, holding her hand through the labor process but as soon as the blonde haired woman used her superhuman strength on him in the form of crushing his hand and nearly breaking his arm did he back away for his own safety. You, son of a bitch! You did this to me? screamed Tsunade again as she was hit by another contraction, her comment made Minato shrink in fear as there was this underlying darkness to her comment. Just keep pushing! shouted Bawako in reply. Hurry up and get out of me! roared Tsunade as she felt another contraction incoming. Come on Tsunade, just one more push, I can see the head, this is why women are stronger than men, if this was a man, they'd be dead already, said Bawako. But it felt like Tsunade's baby almost refused to come out, it felt content staying in the nice warm place it was residing in the for the last nine months. Minato once I'm done with you, no one will be able to tell if if you're a man anymore, bellowed Tsunade threatening Minato who went pale and almost fainted at the thought. He knew that as was the right decision to stay where he was and not get involved, for his own life and safety. She screamed once more in pain, it felt like forever that she felt anything like this, or wounds on the battlefields were a massage to what she was going through. She gave one last push, and in an instant the pain was gone and her screaming was replaced by another's. She and Minato could hear the shrill cry, piercing the quiet and the wailing was crystal clear and loud as a bell, there was little doubt about it. Their child was here with them. Bawako was currently checking the baby's health, which really wasn't needed as the baby's cries was proof enough that as was an incredibly healthy baby. Tsunade sat herself up from her position and looked over to Bawako as she was currently cleaning the newborn and in the corner of her eye she saw Minato coming over to her. He took her hand in his and held it tightly. You did it. He whispered ever so softly and Tsunade could see tears running down his eyes. I'm a father now. We did it said Tsunade replying to Minato's earlier comment, they then saw Bawako coming over with a blue blanket covering the small bundle within and both parents could see two tiny arms, just two tiny arms. They also noticed that the baby had stopped its wailing and crying and opted for a more quiet pitch. Minato, Tsunade, say hello to your son. Naruto, said Bawako as she handed over the little boy O.T. his mother with his father peeking over her shoulder slightly. You lost the bet whispered Minato, but Tsunade didn't listen to him, she was too focused on the perfect being in her arms, it didn't matter if she lost the bet, her son was here with her, safe and sound. 
she let loose a few tears in happiness as at the mere presence of her baby. She inspected every little detail about him, he was so small compared to her and Minato, so innocent and frail. The little one in her arms would be completely dependent on her and Minato. But now all she could do for the moment was drink in his appearance. He had a round face, common for babies but it seemed when it came to face shape he took after her. He had a tuft of golden hair upon his head that made him even cuter and it was slightly spiky, possibly another trait he inherited from his father. He also had her eye shape and her cute nose. But the strangest thing was that and probably the most prominent feature about him were three whisker-like marks on his cheeks, giving him a vulpine appearance. Where did these whisker marks come from? Questioned Tsunade, but she wasn't angry about them, it just made her son all that much cuter. Possibly a side effect of being exposed to the Kyubi's chakra, stated Minato believing that was the logical answer. And at that moment little Naruto decided to squirm a little and finally opened his eyes, and his parents gasped at the sheer beauty they beheld, they were a sapphire blue, Minato's eyes, for Tsunade it felt like she was staring into the ocean. The first thing the newborn saw was the face of his mother, staring down at him, and the first thing he did was giggle at the woman and his mother along with his father found themselves smiling too at the touching. He's magnificent, said Tsunade as she kept staring at her giggling son. Yeah, and when he's older, he'll be quite the womanizer, with thousands of women chasing after him, said Minato predicting the possible future of his son. None of those skanks will be worth my little Naruchan, and if they want him, they'll have to fight each other for him, said Tsunade tightening her fist where veins appeared, probably a physical symbol of how protective she'll be in the future. In response to what she said her son made a slight gurgling sound which made Minato chuckle a little. At that time Bawako returned with a squad known as the Hokage Guard Platoon. Tsunade, sorry to say this, but with your health in mind, we need to give you a sedative to recover from the stress of the birth, said Bawako to which Tsunade nodded and handed Naruto over to Bawako who made a slight fuss over being separated from his mother while Taji gave Tsunade a sedative to which the blonde woman fell to sleep rather quickly, this was only for her best interest as the stress from the birth had taken its toll on her body and she needed to rest from it. The three Hokage guards gathered around Tsunade and stated to Minato that they were going to take Tsunade to the hospital to recover and they were going to use Hiraishin to do that. Minato trusted them, as they were shinobi handpicked to protect the Hokage and his family and Minato taught them how to use the Hiraishin though they could only do so when all three of them formed a triangle. The three unnamed men gathered around Tsunade's resting form and then, they were gone. Minato seemed to breath a sigh of relief knowing that Tsunade was safe and he also knew that more tests were to be run on Naruto to make sure he was perfectly healthy. It was now a fact, Minato was a father now, his son Naruto was perfectly healthy and he couldn't wait to be a part of his life. He decided from early on that he would be a good father, not too strict or protective and giving Naruto the freedom he needed as he could sense that the small blonde would grow up into a highly self-confident man. And if Naruto ever grew arrogant because of his lineage, name or his power, then Minato was sure to eradicate that arrogance by taking him on a training trip where he could beat the arrogance out of him. Minato's thoughts were abruptly halted when he heard a scream and saw Bawako and Taji fall to the ground lifeless and cries of fear amanti from Naruto. Bawako, Taji, shouted Minato hoping that the two women were still alive. Yandaimi Hokage, Minato, said a dark voice that radiated hatred. He was a man wearing a black cloak, obscuring most of his body except for his hands, he was currently wearing a white mask with flame-like patterns on it, and he held Naruto with a hand over his body. Tell me, the identity of the Jinchuriki is or your son will die at the age of only five minutes. This man, how did he get past the Anbu squad and the barrier, whose face lies behind the mask? Thought Minato as he narrowed high eyes in rage while also trying to remain calm in this situation. Tell me, who the Jinchuriki is? I wonder if you care at all if your son dies. Continued the man as a kanai suddenly appeared in his hand and pointed it towards Naruto who continued to cry. Seeing his son in danger, Minato attempted to calm down the situation. Wait, calm down, we can settle this peacefully, said Minato in a last ditch attempt to save his son without the neigh of violence. You should really speak for yourself, Yandaimi, I'm as calm as can be said the man as he threw Naruto into the air and jumped up and attempted to stab the child with a killing blow, while Naruto wailed on, 
however Minato with his amazing speed caught Naruto in midair and landed on the wall. Well, I must hand it to the, Kiroi Senko, you truly live up to your moniker. Complimented the masked man as he landed on the ground. However, what about the next one? Said the man as he made a single hand seal where paper bombs attached to Naruto's blanket lit up like a fuse. Minato with quick thinking and reactions threw the blanket off Naruto and used the Hiroshin to teleport himself to one of his safe houses which respectively blew up because of the bombs. Minato meanwhile was able to escape the blast at the last second by leaping out of the door and onto the soft grass and also inspected the damage done to his safe house. It's okay you're saw, however he stopped his comment as he noticed that he wasn't holding Naruto but a wooden puppet in his arms, one in the shape of a baby. Minato gritting his teeth threw the baby puppet away where it broke against a tree where its parts and cogs broke apart from the impact. He also noticed a large splinter in his leg which he pulled out. Was it Genjutsu? No I could clearly sense Naruto's small chakra, he must have used the Kawarimi no Jutsu, replacement technique, on Naruto at the last minute, right before I jumped or maybe before he set off the bombs, whoever he is, he's fast and strong as he was able to keep one step ahead of me. But I do know a part of his plan, he's after Kashina. And he's after Naruto. Thought Minato as he flicked the splinter and teleported with Hiroshin. Elsewhere Kashina groggily opened her eyes, and was starting to gain an awareness of her surroundings, she could make out this sound, it sounded like screaming, screaming from a baby. Her eyes snapped open and she could see everything perfectly. But the thing she was scared of most, was a masked man in front of her and he was currently holding a golden haired baby. She tried to move but she found her arms were bound with fuinjutsu against many rocks around her. Don't bother, those seals are connected to your chakra, you won't be able to break them yourself. Said the man as he ignored the screaming of the child in his arms. Kashina widened her eyes in horror as she recognized that shade of yellow and it didn't take long for her to realize that was Minato's and Tsunade's baby. Just, what do you want, and what do you want with baby, he's done nothing to you said Kashina trying to discern the mon's motives and why he wanted Minato's son. I came to rip the Kiyubi from your stomach and use its power to destroy Konoha, said the man bluntly. He then looked down at the little, blonde bundle in his arms, shrieking for its mother, and as for this little one. A Senju is rather valuable, he will become a fine student and weapon for me in the future. What, how can you just questioned Kashina utterly repulsed at turning an harmless infant into nothing more than an emotionless weapon to be used and discarded. Minato's teleportation technique allows him to move instantly between designated markers at a speed that others can't track. He incorporated one his jutsu formula into your seal, also EH could protect you, but I've managed to not only distance him from you but also him and Naruto, who he's yet to mark. Spoke the man revealing the mechanics between the Hiroishin. When you lashed out against Tsunade, it greatly but subtly weakened the seal holding the Kyubi at bay. Do you not know how long I've waited for this moment? And from the dark hole in his mask did it reveal a single Sharingan eye which pierced Kashina's subconscious to where the Kyubi was sealed. The fox was currently pinned to a great floating rock by many stakes through its body and tails and chains wrapped around its form, restricting its movement even more. You are, thought the Kyubi in recognition at the Mons Chakra and in a second its two slitted eyes became Sharingan but the Tomo and the ring disappeared from view so to not allow others to realize it was being manipulated. Come forth, Kiyubi no Yoko, said the man as a spectral figure of the fox's head appeared from the seal on Kashina's belly where the woman was surrounded in a shroud of the fox's chakra. The spectral figure roared as if it was the fox itself and then flew into the sky where it started transforming into flesh blood and bone of the nine-tailed fox where finally its nine sweeping tails appeared signaling that the strongest biju was set free from its cage and it roared in triumph and being let loose. Kashina after having her respective tailed beast ripped from her body, fell atop the rock where the last remnants of the biju's chakra pulsed out of her body. Good. Now the three of us can head to Konoha, said the man still cradling the newborn Naruto in his arms who was frightened of the roaring of the Kiyubi and on instinct began crying even more for his parents. The downed form of Kashina, who after going through the extraction process, wearily lifted her body as if it a great weight was upon her shoulders. Hold it. I won't let you have. Minato's son, said Kashina with determination in her eyes, even though the child was also Tsunade's he was also Minato's son so she would protect the offspring of the man she loved most. 
Her words make the masked man stop in his stride and turn to look at her with a possibly surprised expression behind that mask of his. Truly, the Uzumaki clan are amazing shinobi, even after wrenching a tailed beast from your body didn't outright kill you. He then mentally commanded the Kiyubi to ready itself to attack Kashina. It's only fitting that as its former Jinchuriki, that the beast itself should kill you. In a swift moment the Kiyubi reared its massive paw and slammed it against the rock Kashina was lying and in most of the surrounding rocks were crushed by its strength and a small shockwave ensued. However in a swift flash did Minato save Kashina in time from being crushed and landed on a tree, carrying Kashina bridal style, he could rescue her because she was still marked with the Hiroshin. Minato was currently wearing his headband and Hokage coat and flak jacket, he returned to one of his safe houses to prepare himself to battle the masked man and didn't have enough time to warn Serutobi of the impending threat of the Kiyubi. Well, a small flash of hope, even now he lives up to his nickname, too bad that it's already too late, said the man as he saw Minato land on a tree with Kashina in his arms. Minato. He has your son, said Kashina tiredly with sweat pouring down her forehead. It's okay, I'll rescue him said Minato reassuringly trying to remain calm even though he was a mess on the inside. Minato. Stop him and the Kiyubi, they're heading for the village. To destroy it. And he'll make your son into a weapon. Spoke Kashina, telling her Hokage of what the man plans to do with the Kiyubi and Naruto. And in his nature, Minato glanced behind his back, glaring at the Kiyubi and the masked man, before jumping away with Hiroishin to one of his safe houses. So he flew off again, well, never mind. Let's go Naruto, we have a village to destroy after all. Said the man walking away with the baby in his arms. When he arrived he allowed to Kashina to rest from the traumatic experience and he quickly flew to the village, s to defend it from the unseen enemy. In the village it was a peaceful night, with shooting stars flying through the sky and the lights in the sky illuminating the darkness. Everyone in the village was happy and content at the serenity flowing through the streets and air. Kakashi Hitaki and Might Guy were currently walking through one of the village's marketplaces where an assortment of all types of trade goods and food could be found, people were happily drinking away their troubles and or their happy times. The mood in the village was happy overall, it's like nothing could ruin the moment for anyone, husbands were enjoying their time with their wives and friends were creating ever more bonds with each other. Why don't we do, rock, paper, scissors again tonight? Suggested Kakashi as the last thing he wanted to do was to undertake another of Guy's challenges, rock, paper, scissors was better than walking around the village just on their hands was far too troublesome, elsewhere some Nara men were currently sneezing. Not that again, think of something more exciting, I want a more hot-blooded contest, how can you call yourself my rival? Said Guy intent on having Kakashi accept his challenge to determine who was stronger. We have an early start tomorrow and I have a mission also. So let's pass for the night, said Kakashi trying to escape from his self-appointed rival. Don't use a mission as an excuse, I have all this pent-up energy inside me, now is the time for diligent training. Honest to goodness discipline and hard work lead to success in future missions. He then turned around when he noticed Kakashi had stopped walking. Are you even listening to me? Say, guy. Do you sense something? Off, spoke Kakashi as he contemplated this feeling he was having like there's an awful chill in the air. It's your attitude that's causing it. We're only young once, shouted Guy exasperated at Kakashi. At the Uchiha compound, which was mostly empty for unknown reason where two children sitting on a wooden step to a house. Things were mostly quiet, which was strange, as not even crickets could be heard, and the moon's light was dull, not its shining radiance it usually had. A small boy no less than four years old, was currently holding a small baby only three months old. What? Is this feeling? Said the boy aloud as around that moment the baby he was holding began crying too over the awful feeling in the air. There, there. Said the boy trying to calm the baby down so to stop crying. Just what is this feeling, and why now since mom and dad are gone, thought the boy worriedly over the feeling. Even with the attention he was giving the infant he was content with crying. Don't worry Sasuke. Your big brother will protect you no matter what, said the boy to his infant brother trying to calm the baby and himself at the strange feeling in the air. Here is an Serutobi, who was currently doing paperwork in his office suddenly had this cold feeling run down his spine, he had only ever felt this feeling once, before when his father died, and it wasn't the black sun, but the black moon, 
a sign that he could feel something terrible was about to happen and nothing good would come from it. It can't be, thought Hiruzen at the feeling of the black moon, he then looked out his window at the blazing full moon in the sky and the twinkling stars accompanying it. At that moment, the masked man who had taken the baby Naruto to a safe location landed in the village softly and without a sound, he had effortlessly snuck into the village and the next phase of his plan would now happen. He had waited forever just for this moment, all that planning and the careful steps that came with it. Kusihios no Jutu, summoning technique, yelled the man as he slammed his hand against the ground and seals appeared from his palm. A few seconds passed and nothing happened nothing but silence. And suddenly a plume of massive smoke appeared which created wind currents that were blowing people of their feet and making them tumble to the ground, everyone in the village were wondering just what was happening, however, every one of them could feel this dark malevolent force wash over them like a tidal wave. They recovered from the backlash of the strong wind currents and were moaning in annoyance at what forced them to the ground. What happened? Was it an accident? But, only until now did they notice a silhouette in the shadows, the silhouette was as large as the Hokage mountain and the only distinguishable feature it had were two glowing red eyes and a snarling of a beast. That's. N no way. And from the plume of smoke roared the Kiyubi in all its might and power with its gargantuan tails whipping about behind it. Its roar filled everyone in fear to the shinobi, civilians and even he children. A phenomena like this has never happened in the leaf village before and everyone knew, it would be the longest day in the history of the leaf village had begun. Everyone began running for their lives knowing that they were ants compared to a mountain as the fox could easily crush them just by stepping on them, people were toppling over others falling and tripping to get away from the nine-tailed biju. They scooping up children in their arms so to protect them from the massive fox, not knowing that it would do little to stop the rampaging beast. Attack, Kiyubi, said the masked man. The fox howled loudly in response and with its claws that could shred mountains as began laying waste to the village hidden in the leaves. It tails were smashing up the village with ease and people were being thrown about by its attacks. Devastation was wrought and people were losing their lives to the beast as if they were lambs to the slaughter. And fire, that was all that could be seen, fire in the sky, inside the mountains and turning the sky auburn. The fire was spreading like a cancer around the village, its flames engulfing buildings and causing them to topple over like dominoes with rubble landing on villagers crippling and killing them while soon being swallowed by the flames themselves. The Kiyubi let loose a mighty shockwave from its roar which created a field of destruction and death in its wake and the fire followed after it. People were trying to escape but their small legs were not fast enough to escape the wrath of the fox destroying their village. People of all ages were powerless against the beast. Just what could stop a force of nature as strong as the Kiyubi no Yoko? Was this even a natural disaster? An Anbu member appeared in the office of the Sandame Hokage, with urgency and fear laced in his voice. It seemed that what was happening outside had struck his heart just as it had struck the village. Sandame Sama, the Kiyubi. The Kiyubi has suddenly appeared in the village. Hiruzen was currently prepping himself for battle by equipping his shinobi armor and weapons, he too heard the roar, and now he knew why the black moon was here, however, he never expected the Kiyubi to just appear in the village as it did. I'm aware of that, I will suppress it while you and the others evacuate and protect the civilians ordered the Sandame as he finished prepping for battle while the Anbu member disappeared so to gather his comrades to aid in the evacuation of the civilians who couldn't fight. Did something happen to Kashina? How could such a thing happen? thought the Sandame trying to deduce what exactly happened to Kashina. Damn you Kiyubi! This is the moment I can release all my pent-up power, yelled Guy as he readied himself to face the nine-tailed demon fox. Don't be hasty Guy, and don't be stupid, that's the Kiyubi. You don't stand a chance, said Kakakshi trying to reason with Guy. We should retreat and regroup with the Sandame, and counter attack the Kiyubi with synchronized attacks. Come one, I'll be you opponent, yelled Guy as he struck a pose in the shape of a bird, which might have made the Kiyubi sweat drop at the young man. However, a hand stopped him from encroaching further. Gather immediately in the guardroom and await further orders from the Sandame. Here is Ansama said Guy pondering the Sandame orders. You heard him Guy, let's go, said Kakashi as they went to the guardroom so to prepare themselves for the Hokage's orders. Meanwhile the Nine Tails was being bombarded by explosive bombs from all sides by the pestering shinobi trying to hurt and stall it. But it merely flicked away the shinobi as if they were flies, and the paper bombs were only doing as minimal damage, 
which was as useful as hitting it with a rubber band. No matter the assault on the fox it merely brushed away any and all damage to it, even powerful jutsu were having no effect on it. Everyone carry out the orders, commanded Hiruzen as he summoned his faithful monkey companion, Enma who transformed into his staff form so Hiruzen could use him as a weapon. Around that moment Minato had returned to the village and landed on his stone face of the Hokage monument, he had just returned from putting Kashina to rest, although he was fearful of her. He also knew that he would need her help to possibly defeat the Kiyubi. But there was one person he couldn't lose this night, Tsunade. He knew the chances of him dying were high, and if so he couldn't allow Tsunade to die along with him, he couldn't leave his son an orphan and defenseless, his enemies by pounce on the opportunity of the Senju heir's parents dying. Not even the Sandame might not be able to protect Naruto from the forces that threatened Konoha. As Hokage, I will protect my village and my family, right now, with every fiber of my being. This is what I need to do. I won't allow that man and the fox to do as he pleases with my village and my son. Thought Minato with a new resolve to face his enemies without fear or hesitation. The Kiyubi sensing that Minato's presence has arrived turned to stare at the Hokage atop his stone face. Rearing its HEA and ignoring all other annoyances it had a staring competition with Minato who remained clam despite the obvious danger. So you noticed me already have you? Stated Minato still remaining on the Hokage monument. In response the Kiyubi started gathering red and blue chakra and started forming it into a purple black sphere and aimed it at the Yandaimi where the fox fired the ball straight at the Hokage mountain. Minato in response blazed through hand seals to counter the Bijudama. If one thing was meant to remain standing in Konoha it was the proud faces of the Hokages who have watched over it for generations. Just as the ball was about to hit the mountain it appeared to have struck something solid and at the same time Fuenjutsu markings started appearing and encircled around the ball and it looked like it was being swallowed by a great mob before any trace of its existence vanished. A second later a large explosion was visible and the people knew it was the resulting damage of the Bijudama. It's the Yandaimi, he's here to save us yelled the shinobi happy at seeing their current hokage stand tall and proud against against the demon fox. I need to report on what's happened to the sandame, and then I have to rescue Naruto. Thought Minato but at the last second a hand appeared ready to grab him Minato countered it by stabbing his Hiriishin kanai into the masked monk's head. But the strangest thing happened, instead of blood or at least a wound, the kanai slipped right through the masked man's head, as if it wasn't there. Minato's arm was latched onto by the masked man's hand. You will face me. And it's over. Minato then saw a swirling vortex distortion appeared in the man's head and Minato felt like he was being yanked into a black hole. Reacting fast, Minato flashed away with the Hiraishin before he was sucked into the dimensional vortex. So, he got away. Talk about fast. Next time I'll warp you the moment I touch you, said the masked man. Minato landed roughly on the ground with scuff marks all over his form, he had narrowly escaped the mon's jutsu if it wasn't for his own jutsu. He had to return to the village to protect it from the Kiyubi, Hiruzen could only do so much and even with their combined forces they wouldn't be able to hold back the Kiyubi for long, and even with all the clans working together it may not be enough to defeat the Kiyubi. My attack slipped right through him, but he materialized instantly and tried to drag me away from the village into his dimension or something. Just what was that jutsu? Thought Minato breaking down the enemy's jutsu and the knowledge of how it worked. He then saw the same swirling distortion appear in front of him and the body of the masked man popped out of it, black cloak and everything. You didn't think that you could escape from me, said the masked man, taunting the yandaimi. Whatever kind of jutsu it is, it's definitely space-time ninjutsu, is that how he was able to separate Naruto from me so quickly and vanished shortly after. Thought Minato as he picked himself up off the ground and grasped one of his kanai in his hands. He defeated the Anbu under Hiruzen's direct command, who slipped EPD through the most powerful barrier in the village and knew that the Kiyubi's seal was weakened from Kashina attacking Tsunade. He also undid the Kiyubi's seal and tamed it as a pet and went in and out of the barrier around the village without pausing or being caught. I know of only one shinobi that has the power and capabilities to do such a thing thought Minato discerning the shinobi in front of him. Are you Madara Uchiha? questioned Minato trying to understand if this truly was the legendary shinobi before him. The man in response let down his hood showcasing his Uchiha inherited black hair. No, that's impossible, he's dead. Oh, I don't know about that, maybe I am Madara, 
Maybe I'm not, said the man tilting his head a little. On second thought, it doesn't matter at this point. Why are you targeting the village? queried Minato, intent on learning his enemy's true motives as to why he attacked the village and why he kidnapped Naruto. You could say I did it on a whim, or that I planned it, or maybe just for fun, or to start a war, or to be in peace, replied the masked man as chain fell form the sleeve of his cloak. Whoever he is, he's not just some ordinary man, he's incredible, to be able to control the Kiyubi and he wields space-time ninjutsu that surpasses both mine and the Nidimes and he has a dangerous ideology, I have to kill him now or he'll be a greater danger than the fox. Thought Minato intent on ending the man where he stood, if I teleport back to the village, he'll follow me and the battlefield will become even more chaotic. If he really is Madara, he won't be able to keep the Kiyubi under his control for long, I just have to have faith in Hiruzen and let him handle the Kiyubi. Now that I have freed the Kiyubi there's no hope for any of you, said the man as he charged at Minato with the Yandaimi copying the same action where the blonde haired man attempted to stab the masked man but like before his attack slipped through him and before long Mianto was wrapped in chains binding him. Minato with quick reflexes used the Hiraishin to teleport to a kanai that was around the area. His flesh, he becomes intangible to negate my attacks and he then makes himself materialize so to counterattack. Namely I can only aim for him when we both strike blows, but his risk lies during during the moment of attack and considering the time on the Kiyubi's summoning jutsu, he doesn't relish a long battle either. The one who attacks an instant faster than the other, will win this match, thought Minato as he turned around to attack the masked man ready to end the match in a literal instant. Let's make this more interesting, said the masked man as he created a swirling distortion from the hole in his eye and out popped Minato's newborn son Naruto crying and wailing as if he knew what was going on around him, seeing his son Minato stopped his charge and stood in fear at what the masked man was doing. Here's what you can do, Yandaimi Hokage Minato, you can go back to your village, defeat my pet and become a savior, however, Naruto would come with me and the next time you will see him will be on the battlefield. Minato narrowed his eyes in hatred of the man, save his village and lose Naruto, the man was preying upon his fatherly instincts while also undermining his Hokage duty. But if you stay and fight me, you may be able to save your son but the village will be destroyed by the Kiyubi. The choice is yours. Spoke the man holding Naruto who continued to cry as babies usually did. Minato was torn between the two choices. He loved his village, but he loved his son more, it was his duty as Hokage to protect the village and put the people's well-being before his own, but as a father, could he be able to live with heartbreak of losing his only child, could he be able to face Tsunade and say that their son was taken, gone, he didn't know, he couldn't decide. He remembered his duty, as both a father and the Hokage, he had made his choice. I'm sorry, Naruto thought Minato with an unflinching resolve in his eyes the likes of which no one had ever seen before. Minato charged at the man again and both threw their respective weapons in the air, Minato threw his kanai at the masked man while the Uchiha threw Naruto obviously aware of Minato's intent, the blond man was going to stop him, but that meant that Naruto would die, that was the third option. The kanai Minato threw phased through the mon's head, while Naruto, who the masked man threw with less power, was also phasing through the Uchiha. Minato charged a Rasengan in his right hand while the man's own right hand was inching towards Minato's shoulder. Time slowed down for the both of them, Minato's Rasengan wouldn't hit the Uchiha in time. Both combatants were about to hit each other, each of their respective attacks inching closer to their enemy. Around that time baby Naruto and the Kanai had exited the Mon's body. However it was too late for Minato as the man hand was about to touch him. I have you thought the man but before his eyes Minato disappeared right above him where he threw his kanai, while the blonde grabbed baby Naruto from air and simultaneously struck the man with the Rasengan in his back. Rasengan, said Minato as the blue sphere of spiraling chakra grinding into the man causing him to cough up blood behind his mask. That was Hiraishin. Nino Dan, flying thundergon, second step said Minato as the attack pulsed and all three parties sunk into the ground via a shockwave destroying it and leveling the ground around them causing rock spires surrounded the area. Minato with quick thinking placed a Hiraishin formula on the man so he wouldn't be able to escape from him. The masked man jumped out of the created from the Rasengan's shockwave and landed on a rock spire. His left arm was nothing but mush and oozing liquid with small trails of blood on his hand, 
it appeared that his hand was barely clinging to his left arm. Minato also stood from the dust cloud cradling baby Naruto in his arms defensively, and on the inside he was beyond overjoyed that his son was in his arms again. He, you got me, so this is the word, elusive, I should never have left my guard down. Complimented the masked Uchiha. However his words were cut short as Minato teleported to his position and stabbed him in the stomach with one of his Hiriishin kanai which caused his mushy left hand to fall off his arm. Minato then slammed his hand against the Uchiha where a seal array appeared. A contract seal? Gasped the masked man as he knew exactly what it was. You're trying to separate the Kiyubi from me. No, he's no longer your weapon to be used and controlled. Your plan has failed, said Minato. At the time that Minato was battling the perpetrator behind the whole attack, the Sandame Hokage was rallying the forces of the village to protect their home and defeat the Kiyubi. All the shinobi clans were fighting to protect their home while the relatively new clans were also adamant on protecting the home they had just found. The village was their house and the Kiyubi was an intruder in their house and they would be damned if they let the intruder destroy what was theirs. However one clan was absent from the battle, but still Hiruzen pushed it to the back of his mind as he had other, more worrisome trouble he had to deal with. Hiruzen had noted that nothing they were doing had any effect on the massive fox. It merely brushed away all damage damage as if dusting itself off. They would need to use more large scale jutsu and distractions so to keep the Kiyubi occupied until his successor Minato arrived, as the blonde appeared and then mysteriously disappeared, which made Hiruzen pause. At this rate, the village will be, said a shinobi who was giving into despair over the Kiyubi's power. Don't give up so quickly, said the Sandame. We can't shy away, no matter how powerful the force. We have a village to protect. Let's go. Ow's the time to gather our forces and drive this thing out of the village. Yelled Hiruzen, inspiring those who were listening to him and boosting morale to an unprecedented height. Courage was emblazoning the hearts of those who were there. The will to protect their village was great and the will of fire was greater. And with that, the shinobi forces of Konoha rushed forward intent on facing the Kiyubi without fear and hesitation. Their loved ones were on the line without them they would die and they would die sooner before they let that happen. While the shinobi were battling the biju the civilians and children were being evacuated. Itachi Uchiha, heir to the Uchiha clan was running with his baby brother in his arms, heading for the safe houses designed for the villagers in case of emergency was scared out of his wits, the experience was shocking, even now he could see the bodies strewn about, some missing limbs and gushing blood, others impaled on building and trees, a four-year-old boy should never experience such a thing, but he had to remain strong. That's what his father would want, but also to be strong for his baby brother, Sasuke. The infant was dependent on him and only him at the moment, he cold only hoped that he would live to see the next day. We won't let him jeopardize our village any longer, said Serutobi as he summoned Enma, ready to battle the fox, and just like him, the monkey king was also wondering how the seal had broken and what happened to Kashina. As a close confidant of Hiruzen, he was privy to such information. So there he stood, the Sandame Hokage valiantly facing the beast only a few could have the courage of facing alone. Hiruzen starting off the attack unsealed a massive Fuma shuriken twice the size of his body and threw it at the Kyubi who was unafraid of the incoming attack. Hiruzen went through hand seals for one of his own invented jutsu that involved not only ninja tools but his teacher's own jutsu. Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shuriken Shadow Clone Technique. Said Hiruzen as the single gargantuan shuriken became thousands of shuriken of inescapable numbers and they were flying towards the Kiyubi at increasing speeds. The Kiyubi brought up its long arms and protected itself against the oncoming shuriken but did little to damage it as it only suffered scrapes which it quickly healed from, when it brought down its arms, again it saw another wave of massive shuriken flying towards it only in even greater numbers. In response the fox roared at the oncoming shuriken which created a shockwave which redirected and parried the oncoming shuriken making them fly away from their original direction and in the process destroying some billings and tearing down some trees but thankfully no one was hurt from the ninja tools. However Hiruzen was partially annoyed at how the fox was merely toying with their attacks. The former Hokage knew that something more powerful would harm the fox. Let's go, Enma. Said Hiruzen while said monkey companion commented on how he hadn't seen combat in a while. So Enma in his staff form changed his size and his length, so the better combat the Kiyubi is they would need something big, really big, to defeat the tailed beast. 
Hiruzen jumped off the building he was standing on and swung Enma's humongous staff form which was as large as the Kyuubi's head. The staff smashed itself into the Kyuubi's face but did little than aggravated, so Hiruzen went on the offensive even more and kept pummeling the Kyuubi with the diamond hard staff. And after various poundings it took it seemed that the fox was momentarily stunned by the attacks as it started to look sluggish from the beatings it took from the Sandame Hokage. And not intent on letting their leader face the fox alone the shinobi of the village assisted their Hokage as much as possible by hitting it with powerful jutsu and weapons so to stun the fox even more. Hiruzen using Enma as a springboard and blazed through hand seals to combat the fox some more. Doden. Idaina Raku Gekihen. Earth Release. Great Rock Upheaval, said Serutobi as he formed the necessary seals and a mighty, crumbling column of rock and stone rocketed from the ground and hit the Kiyubi at an angle causing the fox to tumble backwards from the backlash of the technique. Don't let up the attacks, yelled the Sandame as he continued planning a way to defeat the Kiyubi while in the middle of a battlefield. Sir Choza Akamichi has arrived to offer support, yelled a shinobi to the Sandame as the old Hokage nodded. Hiruzen jumped over the crumbling buildings and fire set a rendezvous with the Akamichi clan head. Choza, you know what to do, said the Sandame as the Akamichi head nodded and formed a specific technique seal. Cho Baika no Jutsu, super multi size technique, yelled Choza as his entire form enlarged to tremendous heights where he was now as tall as the Kyubi. Said giant then jumped in the air in front of the Kyubi and began to wrestle with the demon fox but even with his massive strength and increased size he was having trouble keeping the fox's large form off him and stopping it from shredding him into pieces. With a mighty roar and with all his strength Choza hefted the Kiyubi off the ground and threw it across the village as if it was a beach ball but it recovered quickly as the attack only momentarily stunned it. Choza attempted to follow up his offense by trying to punch the Kiyubi in the face. But the tailed beast responded by twirling around and hitting the giant with its nine tails causing the Akamichi head to scrape across the ground and land in a heap on the village floor where he returned to his normal size shortly after, and the Kiyubi seemed to roar in victory at what it had done. Keep attacking, save our loved ones no matter the sacrifice, yelled the Sandame as he and Enma kept attacking the Kiyubi with all his might. Sir, the reinforcements from the Inazuka clan have arrived, led by Sume Inazuka yelled another shinobi. Hiruzen hearing the call, made his way over to the newly arrived forces of the Inazuka. Launch a synchronized attack with your dogs and you clan members, ordered Hiruzen giving out orders. Let's get this party started, yelled Sume as wild and exuberant as always. As she and her ninkan along with most members of her clan performed their special combination attacks one of their specialties. Gatsuga, Fang passing Fang yelled the Inazuka clan members as they combined all their respective attacks into a single attack of claw and fang. They attacked the Kiyubi head on, with ferocious speed and strength and their drilling attack was barely pushing the Kiyubi back as it was unflinching towards the attack, so the Inazuka clan put more chakra into their attack, spinning at an even faster rate which finally forced the Kiyubi back but not very far as it recovered fro mthe attack and continued destroying the hidden leaf village. Nothing we do has any effect, Sir we have a message from Shikaku-sama, he's ready to go along with the operation, he's waiting for your signal. Everyone into positions, and launch the operation, commanded Hiruzen, now Shikaku. Said clan head nodded his head at the aged Hokage and he and his clan used one of his clan's jutsu, Kagemane no jutsu, shadow imitation technique, to bind the Kiyubi in place, restricting its movement and halting its attack while also being vulnerable to any and all attacks. Now Choza, yelled Shikaku as the red-headed giant came charging in to deliver a powerful blow to the fox. And so the giant shinobi rammed himself into the equally giant fox with a shoulder bash which was able to stun the fox long enough for the plan to come into fruition. Inoichi, yelled Shoto his former teammate and said shinobi was using the Shindenshin no Jutsu, mind-body transmission technique, to communicate with all the shinobi around them to being their counter-attack. Now we'll launch an offensive, thought, said Inoichi as he communicated with the shinobi on the battlefield. Get ready to attack him all at once. And with that said every shinobi on the front lines were soaring through hand seals to perform their most powerful jutsu to use against the kiyubi, they would put everything on the line for that to happen. And everywhere in the village, 
Jutsu of all kind and ninja tools were being thrown about at the Kiyubi who was still stunned from Chose's attack the tailed beast couldn't do anything other than to take the assault and even it was surprised at the combined efforts of the village it was currently destroying. The attacks were strong enough that it was stunned completely allowing Hiruzen to use Enma who grew in size and length, to jab the fox in the stomach and forcefully eject it from the village. I've chased it from the village, don't let up on your attacks, fight till your last breath, rallied Sarutobi with a fierce drive to protect the village that the Shodem and the Nidame entrusted to him. Minato. Where are you? Thought Hiruzen as only Minato now could turn the tide of the battle to their favor, he may be the only shinobi in the world who could defeat the Kiyubi. I must hand it to the Yandaimi Hokage, being able to able to wound me and wrest control of the Kiyubi away from me was no small feat in itself complimented the masked Uchiha as he was standing on a branch overlooking the Yandaimi Hokage, who was holding his newborn son, Naruto closely to his chest. However, the Kiyubi will be mine again, the fox and this world will bow to my will. Many doors are still left open for me, and there are so many ways to go about doing it. The man then started disappearing in a spiraling vortex, sucking up his body, and leaving without a trace. That tone in his voice, He's not lying, thought Minato as he kept staring at the spot the masked man was just at, he had discovered one thing from their battle, there was something, more precious to that masked Uchiha than just the Kiyubi, and that precious thing he was currently holding in his arms. Back on the battlefield, many shinobi were still being slaughtered by the fox, having nearly run out of energy to fight, but the will of fire was still burning within them and their determination was still unwavering. One shinobi was currently dragging a young child from the battlefield, this child currently had his brown hair in a high ponytail and a scar running across his nose. Let me go. My mom and dad are still fighting, were his last words before he was dragged away. Elsewhere, many young shinobi of both Chunin and Janin were being confined to a protective barrier so to not allow them to participate in the battle against the Kiyubi on the orders of the Sandame Hokage. Now listen, I don't want any of you young shinobi to face the Kiyubi you are to stay away from the battlefields said a man with distinctive ringed, red eyes who was currently barring the way of the young shinobi. And just what exactly do you mean by that? said a girl with the same red eyes and with unkempt, black hair. This is not a battle between villages, this is a domestic problem, there is no reason for any of you to risk your lives, replied the man, offering no other explanation. That's a loud of bullshit and you know it, said the same girl with an angry look on her face. Calm down, Kuranai advised another shinobi who just happened to be one of the Sandame's two children, Asuma Serutobi. We are shinobi. We are never guaranteed a long life, but my daughter, if nothing else survive long enough to give me a grandchild, and pass the will of fire onto them, please make that an oath to your father. For I will put all my faith in you, said the man revealing himself to be the girl, Kuranai's father and with those words Kuranai shed a single tear before seeing her father run off into battle. Landing atop the Sandame's stone face was Minato still cradling Naruto in his arms, the scuffle he had with the masked Uchiha was an intense one, but the man he had faced was devious, using his own fatherly instincts against him and his duty as Hokage, but he was able to rescue his son and stop him from becoming a weapon but he also had a village to save. He knew the implications of a new Senju being born, the most powerful clan in the world gifted with immense amounts of life force physical energy and stamina along with strong chakra and also being a direct descendant of the Uzumaki clan, who also had immense life force like the Senju, possibly stemming from the fact they were blood relatives. His son would also be blessed with an amazingly long lifespan because of said life force, although he had already lost some of his lifespan because of being exposed to the Kiyubi's volatile chakra before he was born. And he would likely be masterful in all forms of shinobi jutsu from ninjutsu taijutsu genjutsu and fuinjutsu because of his uzumaki heritage and would at least have understanding in jutsu he wasn't experienced with. That was what made the Senju clan famous, their mastery of all jutsu and skills. Every nation would love nothing more than to have that under their belts, that's why Naruto was so important to the masked man, his son had the capacity to rival the shodem hakahe, Hashirama Senju maybe even surpass the, shinobi no kami, god of shinobi. So Minato had to find a way to protect Naruto and keep the Kiyubi out of the masked man's grasp. Naruto would need a power to protect himself when he was older, right now, he was defenseless, an easy target for any of those who wish him harm.
Minato and Tsunade would not be around forever to protect him, he needed a power that could be controlled and directed, a power whose presence would only benefit the small baby. Minato already knew of such a power, for he was staring right at it. The Kyubi on the battlefield, was preparing a Bijudama, ready to annihilate the pestering shinobi around it. Hiruzen, fell to his knees in exhaustion, he wasn't as young as he used to be and hours of fighting the Kyubi had taken a toll on his body. Kacheyose no Jutsu, yelled a voice and everyone saw a massive toad smoking a pipe plummet from the sky and land directly on the giant fox, pinning it to the ground, however it wasn't enough to cancel out the Kiyubi's Bijudama which was still charging and expanding. It's the Yandaimi Hokage, said a shinobi who was observing Minato standing atop the chief of the toads with a small bundle in his arms. Hiruzen squinted his eyes a little to try and make out what Minato was currently holding, only did he see a head of golden hair did he realize what Minato was holding. Minato in his mind kept repeating the words spoken to him by the masked Uchiha and how the world shall be his to toy with. Minato had to enact his plan now, there was little time and with hthe remaining chakra he had he didn't have time to waste. Forgive me, Tsunade, pleaded Minato in his mind to the mother of his child. Gamabunta, restain the Kiyubi for a while longer, commanded Minato as he held Naruto tighter to his chest. Look kid, I may be big, but I can't pull miracles out of my ass, said Gamabunta in response and his annoyance at what Minato was asking. In order to transport something this big, I'll need just as much chakra, said Minato as the Kiyubi finished its technique and ingested the ball of chakra ready to fire it, and Hiruzen looked ready to combat the attack but before his eyes the Kiyubi disappeared along with Minato leaving only Gamabunta sitting on the ground. Minato. Did he fly off with the Kiyubi? questioned Hiruzen as he surveyed the area for the demon fox. He then saw a bright explosion go off in the distance probably where Minato was so without word or warning the Sandame ran toward their position so to assist the Yandaimi, his successor, in whatever he was planning. At the safe house where Minato teleported the Kiyubi, along with Naruto and himself, the Kiyubi had flattened everything in front of itself with its powerful Bijudama and destroying the safe house in the process. Minato along with Kashina and Naruto landed on a small distance away from the Kiyubi. I have to put up a barrier, said Minato who was panting at having expended much of his chakra transporting the Kiyubi away from the village. My chakra is almost drained from the extraction, but I can, said Kashina as golden chains flew from her back and started lacing around the Kiyubi and forming a barrier at the same time, preventing anyone and anything from entering or exiting. However the exertion left Kashina weakened and she was freely coughing, making Minato worry for her. But he had his own duties to perform, Kashina was doing her part so he must do his own. Minato. Said Kashina, with trails of blood leaking from the corners of her mouth. Reseal the Kiyubi into me. The trauma of the sealing will kill me, and the fox would die with me also, it's the only way to save the village and your family, besides. Extraction of the tailed beast means certain death for all Jinchuriki. I'm no exception as even with my life force that I inherited from my clan, I'm already dying so I might as well go down sooner rather than later and take the fox with me. Minato made no facial expression nor did he say anything to the redhead in front of him. Thank you for everything you've done for me, said Kashina with a smile, smiling knowing that she would be doing something positive in her remaining life. I'm happy that we have memories together and today is your son's birthday, maybe if I didn't say no, when you proposed to me, then maybe we could have been this happy family and our future would be bright, if there's one regret I have, is that I regret hurting Tsunade and you, and my one wish. Is that all three of you are happy? said Kashina relaying her feelings, but Minato was as void as space, what he heard his former love say really struck a chord with him, maybe Naruto could have been Kashina's son and they would be happy together. Maybe they could have lived happily just as they were before this event happened. There were so many maybes that as was making Minato's heart wrench inside his chest. You won't be killing the Kiyubi today, you won't be sacrificing yourself. Because the Kiyubi won't be dying today, said Minato in a low voice filled with shame and a grief. That sentence made Kashina jolt and she was currently wondering what her Hokage was referring to. I'll seal mine and your chakra into Naruto as part of the Hake no Fuen Shiki. 8 trigrams sealing style, then I shall seal the Kiyubi into me with a seal only a non Jinchuriki such as myself can use. The Shiki Fujin, dead demon consuming seal, if you seal the Kiyubi and it dies, 
it will revive itself later and it won't be bound to a Jinchuriki, that alone will upset the balance of power between the tailed beasts but with the Shiki Fujin I conceal half of its power within me, forever, while the remaining half. Minato then thought about a time when Jiraiya told him the prophecy of the great elder Toad. About a destined child who will change the world. Will be sealed into Naruto. Spoke Minato making Kashina gasp at what he said, if he was truthful, ever since he rescued Naruto, that was his sole plan. He knew that man, Madara, wanted Naruto more than the Kiyubi, to protect his son in the village he would seal the Kiyubi into Naruto, to protect him and also, his son was the only person he could trust, who could handle the power of the Kiyubi and because of Naruto's Uzumaki lineage he was also a perfect candidate for being the Kiyubi Jinchuriki. I know what you want to say, but Jiraiya sensei spoke of a coming disaster, he spoke about how a great change would come, either thrusting the world into destruction or guiding it into salvation. I confirmed two things tonight, that the man I fought is the harbinger of that change, and the spoken savior that would stop him is my son. I think, no I believe that Naruto is the child the prophecy speaks of. The child that would pave the way to the future through his will, I just believe that. Naruto is the one the prophecy is speaking about. Rebutted Minato before he could allow Kashina to speak. But why? Whispered Kashina as she stared down at the innocent child. Around that time Hiruzen had finally arrived but he wasn't alone, along with him, was Tsunade, who had woken up from the sedatives when she heard the violent noises around the hidden leaf village. Luckily sedative only worked for a while and she was up on her feet. When she discovered the village was under attack she raced around all of it, looking for the person she cared about most, her son. Her mind was merely a haze and she had never felt such a fear before in her life, she couldn't lose her son, he was everything to her. She couldn't possibly imagine her life without him now. She later found Hiruzen who told her that Naruto was safe with Minato, but she wasn't entirely convinced by that statement so she followed him, to where Minato had taken the Kiyubi. When she saw her baby she wasn't relieved because right next to him was the Kiyubi who was bound by chains. Motherly instinct and protective nature coming over her, her bashed against the barrier that was standing between her and her son. However no matter how hard she punched, the barrier stood strong against her attacks, it didn't even budge nor did it create a dent. Tsunade, stop, said Hiruzen trying to calm down the new mother. How can I when my baby is in danger? retorted Tsunade as she kept hitting the barrier hoping it would break. I have to get to Naru chan This barrier can restrain Biju, you'll never be able to get through unless Kashina allows it. Spoke who said the wrong thing as Tsunade was screaming at Kashina to let her in and the blonde mother now had tears streaming down her face, fear was racking her form and every second that passed it grew. Hiruzen then saw Minato perform hand seals for one of the most powerful jutsu in the world, one that the Uzumaki had slated as Kinjutsu. Minato then slammed his palms together. Shiki Fujin. And immediately behind Minato came the spectral figure of the death god, the Shinigami. No one but Minato was able to see the literal face of death as it was invisible to all others. I'll put my faith in this child. He's my son after all. Don't tell me those seals are for. Said Hiruzen to which Tsunade stopped beating the barrier with her fists. Reining herself in she knew that she could only watch and hope that her son would be alright. Kashina, after I've finished with the Shiki Fujin I'll seal your remaining chakra into Naruto. This will be your mission, when Naruto attempts to control the fox's power you'll be there to help him, said Minato as he prepared himself to seal the Kiyubi. Your son, breathed Kashina, trying to wrap her mind around everything. He's your son, why would you put such a burden on him? Can he carry the weight of being a Jinchuriki on his own? Questioned Kashina, she remembered the time when she was taken from Uzushio to be the Jinchuriki, she knew the burdens better than anyone, she knew the raw power they were carrying. And why the Shiki Fujin? He needs you more than ever to be the Hokage and a father, why would you force him to grow up never hearing his father's words of wisdom or more importantly, he won't hear you say, I love you. All he'll know is the words people speak about you and an unmoving, emotionless stone face on some rock. Can a stone face say, I love you, I just want you to be happy, I want you to be there for him, he may not be my son, but I don't want to wish this on anyone's child. If you use the jutsu you'll only be able to meet him for a few minutes. Would that be enough for all the years he grew up, fatherless? Just why? Why would you sacrifice the people you love most just to secure the balance of the tailed beasts, or to save a village, a nation? Why are you sacrificing all that? 
just to seal a beast in your son? shouted and questioned Kashina over Minato's motives. To forsake one's nation, and one's village, is the same as forsaking one's child. You of all people should understand, your homeland was destroyed. You know the pain of a growing up without a home, the harsh life that awaits those without a country. Besides, my family and my son's clan, we are all ninja. And if I were to survive this, I probably wouldn't survive Tsunade's wrath. Even if it's a short amount of time, I will be able to tell the things that only I can tell him, but the one thing I'll be doing in that time, is telling him the most important thing I have to say, and doing exactly what I should be doing. Because, that's a father's role. I'm not doing this just for the village, I'm doing this for Naruto, when I die, it will be his role to protect the village. I will gladly die for him, and if I was presented with the same options, I'd give my life, a thousand times over, because I'm a father. Minato's going to seal the Kiyubi into Naruto. Said Hiruzen understanding what was happening and informing Tsunade of what was happening, but she didn't turn to face him, she could only stare and watch events unravel themselves, just as the Shinigami was also watching what was transpiring eagerly waiting to devour the chakra it was to be offered. The Shinigami then thrusted his arm into Minato's soul and its ethereal looped and twirled around and where it grabbed the Kiyubi on its hind leg. Damn you! Fourth Hokage! thought the Kiyubi in rage as it felt its chakra being pulled out from its body. Seal! yelled Minato as the Shinigami's cold hand yanked out the yin chakra of the Kiyubi and entered Minato's stomach where the seal formula was visibly seen. My body's gone numb, I could never dream of such a massive chakra. However, because they separated the yin chakra from the yang chakra, making the remaining Kiyubi a pure yang entity it became smaller in size where some of Kashina's chains which were restraining it fell off and any other chain wrapped around its body became loose, allowing the fox to move about freely. Damn you, fourth Hokage, thought the Yang Kyubi as I felt weaker after being separated from its yin chakra. It's the Shiki Fujin after all, said Hiruzen making Tsunade gasp, she of course knew about the seal because of her grandmother, Mito teaching her some of the clan's seals. All right, next is the Hake Fuin. Eight symbol seal, said Minato summoning a ceremonial throne with candles around it, where he gently placed the now sleeping Naruto on it. A ritual altar? So he intends to seal me within that child? Thought the Kiyubi, understanding the situation it was in, however it was the mightiest of the biju, it won't allow itself to be sealed again so easily. Kashina, coughed up some more blood form the overexertion of restraining the Kiyubi and Minato for a split second ran over to aid her but this had unwanted consequences in giving the Kiyubi a chance to remain free and unsealed where it hefted its claw and attempt to stab Naruto before the newborn Senju could become a major threat to it. Naru-chan, screamed Tsunade as she saw the giant fox about to kill her only child. Time slowed down for everyone as the claw came coming down upon Naruto, and all the witnesses could see, was blood flying. However, it wasn't Naruto's blood, Minato and Kashina, with all their strength and will pushed themselves to their limit and threw themselves in the way of the fox's attack where they were able to stop the fox's claw from striking Naruto with just a hair's breadth. Blood from the beast's claw then leaked onto Naruto's chest both Kashina's and his father's blood was splayed oh no his little chest. This, is a father's duty after all. Said Minato as he stood there on the verge of death, he was unafraid of throwing himself before the Kiyubi, out of fatherly instinct and because he was already dead to begin with but Kashina why? Because, I guess, this is a way of saying sorry, and to repay a debt also. Forgiveness, for I almost killed this little one in the first place and almost killed his mother, and to repay a debt because, I can protect, Mito-sama's legacy, besides, I was dying anyway, and he's your son after all, I made a promise to protect him, even if I was jealous of his mother, I'd still protect him, because he's your son. Explained Kashina, her reasoning behind protecting Naruto. Kashina. Thank you. Kachiyose no jutsu, said Minato as he drew some blood on the palm of his hand, summoning the scroll toad, Jeritora. Aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
said Jeritora before he slammed his palms together so to return to his home and come back later to give the key to Tsunade, since the situation was still dangerous at the moment. Then, all my work here is done. Muttered Minato tiredly as the Shinigami took out the Tonto from its mouth ready to harvest the souls and chakra of the Yin Kiyubi in Minato. I guess I can. My time has run out, all that's left, is the Hake Fuin, I'll seal some of our chakra into him, so we can help him in the future. Naruto, I'll give you some advice, that your great grandmother gave me, yes, we are vessels, jailers of the Kiyubi, but, we first must find love and fill the vessel with it, find someone you can love with all your being and heart their love with give you strength, they will help you endure hardships that nobody could do alone, and find someone like myself and your mother, they will be able to rein you in should you get too hyperactive. Also make lots of friends, so many that you can't remember all their names, they'll help you when you need it most and you can count on your friends, your friends shall be your power. Also beware of Jiraiya, he'll try to turn you into a pervert. Said Kashina conveying her final words and teachings to Naruto, words that will be useful to him later on. Naruto from now on. You're going to face a lot of pain and hardship as well as suffering. Said Minato giving Naruto some of his own wisdom. But always be true to yourself. Find a goal and have a dream. Never stop chasing after that dream until you've achieved it. Train hard and never give up, endure no matter what. Keep your promises and follow through on them. Never lose sight of the good in people, no matter how far they fall and forgive those who have wronged you. Everyone has equal value to the birds flying in the sky to the mountains they sit upon. You'll never be perfect but that doesn't stop you from trying. Never seek power for personal gain but gain power to protect the ones you cherish. Don't be afraid and admit your fears, that's the first step in overcoming them. Never let fate or anyone else decide your life for you, the past doesn't dictate who you are, but it can shape who you will become. And when it comes to girls, Naruto. Men can never understand them. Also Naruto above all else. Remember your clan and their ideals. Believe in the will of fire and. I love you more than anything in the world. No treasure in this world is greater than you are to me. I have regrets in my life. But my greatest one, is that I'll never see you grow up to become the great man I know you will be, and if you get lost on the path, you will find an answer. Because I believe in you. Hake Fuin. And in a bright light, the Kiyubi was gone and Minato and Kashina dropped to the ground and a seal formula was visible on Naruto's stomach. And said baby, began crying possibly sensing his father had passed and died, and he was crying over the loss of his father. The barrier that barred the way between Tsunade and Hiruzen dropped and by that time other shinobi had joined them. When the barrier ceased Tsunade made no effort of stopping until she reached her baby. When she finally made it to her child, she nestled the baby close to her almost as if it was going to leave her side and be ripped away from her. And like how her son was crying tears she was crying along with, but her tears were made of relief. However, she was also enraged and sorrowful at the same time. Enraged at Minato making Naruto a Jinchuriki and making him into a basic weapon for the village, but she was sorrowful that Naruto had lost his father, on the day he was born no less. Yandaimi-sama! Yelled a shinobi checking Minato, but given the words and his soulless body, it was of no use, Minato was gone, residing in the belly of the Shinigami. Kashina-sama, she's alive! yelled another shinobi who was checking on Kashina. Hiruzen wasted no time in reaching her position. Sandame-sama! It! It! Yu Uchiha! said Kashina before she closed her eyes and died. The End! Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.